The story of hectopascals starts in a fairly large school in a city in South Korea, where in one of the classes, one of the most dismal students is seen among the other students, and he is the main character named Park Hanjun. Suddenly, another big student came into the class and arrogantly said that the executive had just entered, and immediately all of his friends greeted this man named Choi. A woman then approached Choi and asked about his recent product sales, and Choi arrogantly replied that this month's record sales were 48 million won, or approximately $36,000 USD, much to the woman's surprise. One of Choi's colleagues praised him and thought that they would do a party on Friday. However, before that, Choi actually approached Han Jun and asked, Why didn't you greet me? Then, he slammed Han Jun's head on the table very hard. Choi kept banging Han Jun's head on the table while saying, Didn't I tell you to buy all the items I posted? Why didn't you listen to me? It seems that here, Choi has ordered Han Jun and the other students to buy the items he posted on the online market, explaining why Choi was able to get such a big sales record. But this time, Han Jun didn't obey him. Immediately, Han Jun glared at Choi, and seeing that, Choi beat Han Jun again while mocking his face, which was starting to bleed. Choi arrogantly said, even though Hanjun reported this to the teacher, they would not help him. Why did you become like this? It's because you've been beaten and defeated by Kim Chiansu. You don't even have any money left, how utterly pathetic. Are you just going to stay silent like this? Asked Choi to Hanjun. Choi beats Hanjun again, while Hanjun remembers his past with Kim Chiansu and the reason why his life turned this way. It was about two years ago. School gangs began to spread across the country, and one of the most notorious and violent gangs was the Nexus. Han Jun fought against its leader, Kim Chian Su, and with a blank stare, he thought he had won the war after single-handedly beating up a lot of people. But unexpectedly, it turned out that the bastard Nexus was suing Han Jun, whereupon the false situation and manipulation of evidence caused everything that belonged to Han Jun to disappear as he lost the lawsuit. To pay off the compensation money at that time, his father has to sell the gym to which he has always devoted his life there. From then on, Han Jun vowed through tears that he would never fight again. If you don't have money, no matter what you do, you will always end up losing even if you initially win. That's what Han Jun always emphasized to himself. The scene changed to Han Jun, who was walking in an alley after school. He then passed some delinquents from other schools. Instantly, those people recognize him as Han Jun, who used to be at war with the Nexus. They whispered that Han Jun was like a god of war, and when he heard that, one of them approached Han Jun and tried to intimidate him. Have you seen this ring? Can you see it? asked the bald man. It was Nexus's membership ring, and moments later, this bald guy beat up Han Jun and questioned whether Han Jun is really the legendary Han Jun from back then or not. But because at that time Han Jun didn't fight back, he assumed that all the rumors about Han Jun were just rumors. The bald guy was about to kick Han Jun while ridiculing his father who had to live in hell because of Han Jun's actions. Immediately, his kick was blocked by Han Jun, who heard what the bald guy just said. Han Jun then stared at the bald guy with a very sharp, intimidating gaze, and immediately the bald guy was silent for a moment and panicked a bit. But the bald guy immediately took a piece of wood and beat Han Jun really hard, saying, how dare a piece of crap like you look at me like that? After being satisfied with beating Han Jun, the bald man and his group left, saying that the current Han Jun is trash. Suddenly, they stopped because they saw someone approaching Han Jun. This man then said to Han Jun, What are you doing? Don't you have the money to take them to court? The man also dropped a lot of money and said, Is this enough? With this amount of money, I think you have enough money to hire a legal team to lead them to court. Anyway, how long can you take care of bastards like them? Three minutes or five minutes? Asked the blonde man. Seeing all that, Han Jun asked who the man is, and the man replied that he could be said to be someone who had a problem with Chiansu Kim and wanted to kill him. Hearing this, Han Jun stood up, and the man said, It seems we were too busy talking that we didn't realize some flies were curious about us. As the man had said, the previous bald guy then approached Han Jun and said, If you have this much money, we don't need to beat you earlier, you know. Han Jun, who for the past two years had promised not to fight anymore, 
immediately hit him with his elbow very hard, and instantly the bald guy fell down from the attack. Seeing that, his two comrades were very surprised and started to panic after seeing the bald man gets defeated in just one attack. Han Jun then turned around and confidently said that he would finish this fight in four seconds. So that when the two men looked panicked, Han Jun gave several hard punches, which hit one of the man's face, while the other hard punch hit the man's stomach. In one second, Han Jun managed to throw four punches at once to both men and took them all down very easily. I've taken care of the pests, and I want you to explain who you really are, Han Jun said to the blonde-haired man. On such a beautiful night, in a room in a very tall building, Han Jun and that man sat together. The man then introduced himself to Han Jun. He is the self-made tycoon in Korea, Oh Junwoo, someone who can do anything with banknotes because of his wealth. Junwoo asked, Do you know how Kim Chian Su's life is now? Just by looking at magazines or articles, it seems that Kian Su has now become a model student, setting an example for his classmates. Besides that, he has also become an extraordinary pro gamer who shines in Korea. Even though Kian Su used to be a gang leader, and his victims until now are living like a pauper, Kian Su himself has become a star in Korea, and that's what I can't accept, said Jun Woo. For Jun Woo himself, he could have easily eradicated Kian Su's existence with his money, but that wasn't what he wanted. What I want is to destroy Cheon Su the same way he destroyed his enemies, which is in a dirty, humiliating, and disgusting way, Jun Wu said with a calm expression, but a look of burning vengeance on his face. Because of this, Jun Wu made an offer to Han Jun. In exchange for all his efforts, Jun Wu will finance and pay for Han Jun's entire life. He's even willing to help Han Jun bought his father's gym back and will restore to Han Jun to his former glory again. Lend me your fist because that's why I came to you, said Jun Wu. But Han Jun looked down and asked, Why do you hate Kim Cheon Su so much? Calm Lu, Jun Wu replied, Is the reason important? The scene changes. Han Jun is seen heading to his class and thinks that he might gradually find out why Jun Wu hates Cheon Su. Han Jun entered the class and thought, the most important thing right now is that Jun Wu has money while he has fists. Han Jun then approached Choi while thinking that money is everything. Respect, relationships, quality of life, and money make it all easy. Han Jun clenched his fists very tightly and concentrated all his strength to beat Choi in front of him. Immediately, everyone was very surprised to see that Han Jun's punch made several of Choi's teeth fall out of place. A little flashback regarding Choi's story. He used to have nothing to fear in this world because there was nothing stronger than him until he finally met Park Han Jun. Before his might, Choi's all senses trembled. At that time, he knew for sure that Han Jun was invincible. Even the strength of an entire army won't be enough to beat him. That was until Choi met him, Kim Chian Su. Kian Su used his money to sue Park Han Jun. Because of this, Choi realized that money is everything. After that, he opened an online store and sold it to his classmates. And that's how he earned money, and was able to put Park Han Jun under his foot, and then became the apex predator of the class once again. Back to the present, Han Jun then threw a hard punch at Choi's body. Not wanting to be a punching bag, he countered Han Jun's punch, but of course the punch was easily avoided. Then Han Jun hit Choi's face with his knee very hard, and then beat him repeatedly. It seemed that Han Jun was taking out all his anger at Choi at this time. After that, Han Jun stood in front of Choi with such a terrible aura that Choi panicked and asked his friend who was in the corner for help. Then Han Jun kicked Choi so hard and he thought, if I continued to get beaten, I could really die. Choi immediately ran out of the classroom in a panic. He ran while thinking I can't die here, then thought, it's been two years that he hasn't used his fists. He must be quite weak. However, Han Jun keeps chasing after him with a very terrible aura, seeing that Choi thought I only need someone who is more powerful than him. Then he realized there's someone like that in this school, and he's Seung Park. That kid will do anything for money. He then goes to see Seung Park and makes an offer to him. If you can beat him, I will give you one million won. Hearing that, Seung immediately confronted Han Jun and said, 
I'm sorry, but the entrance exam for sports science majors is expensive and I need the money. But Han Jun immediately showed a large amount of money and told Seung to step aside. With a smile, Seung Park received the money and said, Please just kill him. Seeing that, Choi immediately panicked. What are you bastard doing? But Han Jun beat him out and smashed the window. Choi was then thrown right in front of the principal. He was very surprised. The scene then moved to the principal's office with the principal scolding Han Jun. Are you a thug? Doing this kind of things to your friends? Listen up. I won't let any gangsters hear. I won't let you off easily because of this matter. He then continued. Before doing this, you need to think again. After all, your father could be in trouble because of your actions. Hearing the principal's words, Choi smiled. But Han Jun beat him really hard in front of the principal. The principal was angry, but someone came in and said, Park Han Jun, stop that immediately. And Han Jun stopped his anger at Choi. Seeing that person, the principal asked, Who are you? The man introduced himself as Kim Byung Wan, a lawyer at KR Law Office, which is the strongest law firm in Korea. Why did you go to our school? Asked the principal in surprise, but the scene shifted to night in an apartment. Han Jun said, what did you do after talking to the lawyer? The principal even booked his body to me. Choi was also immediately expelled from school. This is too easy, said Junwoo. That's because you are often treated as a bird with Choi. It's just ordinary karma. But Han Jun then asked, What about the principal? Junwoo opened his cell phone and said, Easy to make him obey. We have a leash for a dog like him. I just scared him a little and he started shaking. And we'll deal with the principal about him later. He can still be of use. When we send Choi to the juvenile detention center, the principal will know his position now and will be on our side. The principal will kill Choi. If he also goes to jail for it, I don't want to pay taxes for teachers like them. What I have to say now, maybe I'm counting on you, Park Han Jun. Hearing that Han Jun just kept quiet and stared at Jun Wu. On the other hand, Choi was shown angry in his room. Damn, Park Han Jun. You think I will let you do this to me? Never! I will definitely kill you, said Choi with his anger overflowing. The scene switches to someone heading to a building. The occupants of the building then peek outside and ask who you are, and he is Choi. The man calls Jin Seong's name, saying that Choi is here. Inside the building, several people were seen torturing Park Seong, someone who had previously gotten money from Han Jun. Meanwhile, the group of people is called Runaway Boys, led by Jin Seong. Park Seung, who saw Choi, said, You did this, Choi, you coward. But Seung was hit hard behind him. So what really happened? You never came in person all this time. Jin Seong said. Choi also answered, I want to order something bigger than usual. Indeed, how big is Choi? Jin Seong said. Choi also said 10 million won. And immediately the blonde was surprised. Jin Seong do we need to discuss it any longer? I don't think we will, so who made you angry, Choi? But Jin Seong actually hit him hard, and this made Choi confused about Jin Seong's behavior. Don't you know that's too cheap for me, damn? Why are you being such a pitiful dog in front of our guest? I'm sorry, said the blonde. If you look at the price you put up this time, it's definitely not an ordinary person, right? Choi said to Park Hanjun. Jin Seong's expression immediately changed. Interesting person? You want me to take care of Park Hanjun with only 10 million? Do you think I'm stupid? You think we everyone doesn't know who he is? Choi also said 10 million is just the initial deposit. I will double it if you manage it. Jin Seong immediately smiles and accepts the deal. In a slum residence in the middle of the company, here you can see someone who entered the house and he was Jun Wu. Jun Wu seemed to start talking to himself while looking at the photos displayed in front of him. Have you been here for a long time? Sorry I had business earlier. I stopped by to buy chicken earlier. But what about chicken lately? Everything is the same. Your father's fried chicken used to be very good. I sometimes think I want to eat what he made again. And every time, whenever I think about it, I always want to eat. It's been two years since I haven't eaten this. But those two years feel like just yesterday for me. Jun Wu said with a terrible look. On the other hand, Han Jun is seen coming down from his apartment. But suddenly his cell phone rings and he gets a call from Jun Wu saying that Choi has moved. He seemed to have hired the runaway boys and his troops. I wasn't worried but called me when they come. But Han Jun who was already outside said, Don't bother because they have already come. Jin Seong and his troops were seen waiting for Han Jun on the spot. Nice to meet you. 
said Jin Xiong. Who are you guys? said Han Jun. But suddenly a car at full speed seemed to be going to crash into Han Jun, and the one driving the car was the blonde who said loudly, Kill you twenty million. Instantly Han Jun was very surprised by his position. At this time all his nerves couldn't be moved, but immediately Han Jun jumped forward to quickly avoid the car's collision. But Han Jun was blown away and hit the asphalt quite hard. People thought that he was really crazy because that would be tantamount to suicide. Instead of running away, he lunged towards the car. But Jin Xiong said that it was the most appropriate decision. But it seemed that Han Jun got up with a lot of blood on his face and then said, Right now, I'm really angry. Instantly, Jin Xiong and all his subordinates were preparing to fight Han Jun. But this Jin Xiong thinks Han Jun, even though you've been the same all this time. But there's no way he wasn't injured from the attack earlier. But Jin Xiong ordered all his subordinates to get into the car immediately. The blonde told them all to get in the car and then leave this place. Seeing that Han Jun didn't stay still, he ran after the car with his speed. The people in the car who saw that also praised Han Jun's madness, but logically there was no way someone could catch up with the car. But as soon as Han Jun got closer and made the people inside panic, this bastard could catch up with us. What is he? It looks like Han Jun jumped to reach this car, then smashed the car window with his fist. Han Jun then pulled one person with him, then jumped from the car by holding that person with him until they fall together. Just leave him, Jin Xiong said. Han Jun looks with his horrible aura. Han Jun asks the guy, where are those bastards going? I don't know. How maybe I know where they are going? But Han Jun beats him really hard. Answer right, bastard. Damn, you thought I would tell you to say the man persistently. Do you want me to give you a hint, fine? It's up to you, Han Jun said, ready with his fist, and Han Jun landed a very hard punch. At the headquarters of Jin Xiong and his men, here you can see Jin Xiong and his men having a drink party, and you can see Choi at this place. Choi immediately got annoyed and said, Jin Sung, what exactly are you doing? Why are you guys so happy? You can't even catch Park Han Jun is right even. I have given you guys the initial deposit but still can't finish this job. Then what if Park Hanjun now attacks? Choi. So that's how you think about us. Are you starting to distrust us? Then why are you angry? So, hey, have you ever heard of a knife to kill a chicken? A knife to kill a cow? But do you remember you ordered us to kill a tiger? Is there a knife to kill a tiger? There's no way we can kill a tiger with a knife. You can't kill him like that. At least that's what I was thinking. So how did people hunt tigers in the past? That's easy. We just need a bunch of punks and dogs. A tiger with a high temperament and aloof. For one or two months he will torment until he wants to die. That's how I will kill Park Hanjun. That's how the tiger will die in the most horrible way. But something hit the door very hard. Immediately everyone was shocked. Isn't that an iron door? The door is getting dented by a single impact. Quickly check it, said Jin Song to the blonde. I hope this is just an ordinary madman. The blonde also checks at the door, who was outside, and it was Park Hanjun who was pounding on the door while taking the person he had previously pulled from the car with him. Immediately everyone looked panicked. Damn quickly grab a weapon or something, but Jin Song keep calm and said don't be rash, there's no way Hanjun can break through the iron door, just let him be, he'll definitely go alone. And yes, as soon as Hanjun won't punch the door again, I'm sure Park Hanjun will also be afraid if he fights all of us. But suddenly the blonde cold sweat saw something. That bastard. What creature did he say the blonde was very panicked? Hanjun was seen climbing the building to get to this room. Hanjun then jumped in through the window, seeing that this blonde started to panic. It can't be that crazy bastard. It's the third floor of a building. But Han Jun then hit one person with his knee, which immediately slammed into the wall very hard. Then I saw two people who were going to kill Han Jun with their weapons, but quickly Han Jun caught one person and kicked him. The other one violently threw one person in his hand and hit his partner, and Han Jun beat them with very, very strong fists. Suddenly three people fell in an instant Han Jun. Han Jun then stood up with his muscular body and said, Go ahead, all of you seeing that the blonde and his colleagues just stared at Han Jun in silence. Instantly they thought, damn, we're finished. No wonder it happened too easily. But that bastard doesn't look scared at all while they can take care of Park Seung easily. The three of them who lost just now were due to being ambushed right. 
there must be a reason they were able to survive until now. If they did this properly, it's possible that they were at Park Hanjun's level. No, maybe even at a level above. Then saw Jin Song who said to finish him. Instantly all Jin Xiong's underlings attacked Hanjun simultaneously. But Hanjun was able to dodge it easily, then caught the man's neck fast and hard and hit him on the floor with great force. Seeing that the blonde was about to launch his baseball bat attack at Han Jun's head, I hit Han Jun's head really hard. Good, I hit the target, though the blonde was quite happy. But the blonde's stick looked shattered, and Han Jun was looking at him very, very sharply. Han Jun beat him until the blonde fell out of the window and lay on the ground. Outside, a motorbike was seen approaching him. The figure then opened his helmet, and it turned out that he was a woman. She is scary said this woman while the blonde thinks, will I die? Will my life end like this? Is this heaven? Is Park Hanjun upstairs? asked the lady. Yes, Miss Angel, he is upstairs. Can I have your number? The blonde ended up getting hit with a helmet by the lady. The woman then called someone and reported that Hanjun wanted to destroy someone's house. What should I do? And the woman who called earlier was Junwu. The woman then said there were two bags that had just come out recently, and I was confused about which one to buy. I kept thinking that I couldn't remember what location this was. Jun Wu looked very annoyed, but still sent some money to him. After that, the woman told the location where Han Jun went berserk, then moved to Han Jun who was facing Jin Xiong while Choi looked battered on the spot. Then Jin Xiong said to Han Jun, I'm sorry we lost. Why did you spare me the last? Is there anything you need from me? Money, strength, troops, I will help you. But immediately Han Jun lifted Jin Song saying, No need, I just want to beat you the worst. Han Jun then threw Jin Song and beat him repeatedly on the floor. But suddenly a man came in and held Han Jun's hand. Please stop destroying my house. If you want to fight, do it outside. Why are you doing it here? It's already hard for me to live here alone without parents. Why thugs like you come to here then took over my house. And now some madman wants to destroy my house. Why are you doing this to me? Then saw Jun Wu, who came into this room and asked, How can you destroy people's houses like this? You are scary. Who are you? Are you the one who told him to destroy my house? I'm CEO Jun Wu of the social group. I'm really sorry. And if you need money for this repair, I'll pay five times the price. The man asked if he could give me 10 million won, and Jun Wu gave him 50 million won without a second thought. Instantly the man smiled, seeing that, Meanwhile, on the other hand, Jin Xiong thought, How can Han Jun be that strong? This is a fight I can't win. I have to run away, Jin Xiong said by running towards the window. Then I saw Jin Song, who without hesitation jumped from the top of this building, but immediately saw Han Jun holding Jin Xiong's clothes. With a terrible expression, Han Jun said, I'm still not finished with you. Jin Song was seen thinking, I will die if he brings me up again. Jin Xiong then took a knife from his pocket and was about to slash Han Jun's hand, but Han Jun had let go first. Jin Xiong fell from the top of the building with a panicked expression and hit the asphalt very hard. While Han Jun saw Jin Xiong and the blonde who was sprawled below from above, but it seemed that he was still able to stand up and immediately left with a body covered in wounds. His survival intention was great. Yes, Jun Wu said, but one of Jin Xiong's colleagues laughed loudly. You stupid people have dealt with the wrong person. Hearing that Jin Wu and Han Jun were confused, do you know whose child you have just dealt with? Do you think he is just an ordinary person like us? His father is the chairman of PJ, the shipping behemoth. You know dealing with sailors is the scariest, right? They're rich enough to make you disappear from this world. But Jin Wu smiled and said it was that bad, huh? On the other hand, in an apartment, Jing Xion is seen going to meet his father and is shown Jin Xiong's father named Huang Her Yong. Seeing Jin Xiong's serious condition, his father asked, What's wrong with you? Who did this to you? This Jin Xiong said, Father, can you take care of two people for me? But his father said that they would not be able to come back if they did this. But Jin Xiong said that he would regret this for the rest of your life, as long as those two people are not dead. What's your real problem, son? I got beat up by some bastard, Jin Xiong said. You were already a man when you ran away from home, but I can't believe you asked for help in your current state. Raise your head when you ask to help someone. If you show your weakness and insincerity, no one will help you. 
Think about what you really want. Ask me one more time when you're ready to risk everything. But Jin Xiong said, Dad, I want to kill that bastard no matter what the cost. Suddenly Jing Xion's dad smiled and then called someone saying, Chairman Kim, I think I need two drums. Let's teach that bastard a lesson. Then we saw several cars filled with Jin Xiong's father's subordinates. They headed to where Han Jun was. Then they arrived at a place or building that was not yet finished. And here they saw Jin Xiong, his father, and dozens of his subordinates entering this building, and some carrying drums. Then someone appeared in front of them and said, Why are there so many insects involved in children's fights now? Hearing that Jin Xiong's father said, Do you really want to die while laughing? But that person was Jin Wu, who showed his face and said, Come on, how could someone want to die in this world? Do you think there are people who are scared because of your CEO Huang Heryong's boasts? Seeing Jin Wu, Jin Xiong's father was silent for a moment, but immediately his expression changed to panic. Are you Chairman O Jun Wu? Jin Xiong's father then thought frantically, What's this? Why is he here? But suddenly Heryong's cell phone rang. Director, I'm a little busy now. I'll call you later because there's a big problem. The man said on that call, all of our two-year agreements with OJ Group were all canceled. I don't know the reason, but Chairman O oh Jun Wu himself personally canceled it. Hearing that Hair Young immediately prostrated and begged, Chairman, please spare me just this once. Seeing that his men asked, CEO, what are you doing? Shouldn't we beat them up? Hair Young fearfully and panic said, shut up. Don't you see the situation now? Jun Wu grinned and the first problem was that he wanted Hair Yong to get rid of everyone there besides his son. Hair Yong was still on his knees before Jun Wu, still begging to cancel the shipment this time, or else the company would be in big trouble. I actually don't want to do this, but I also need to maintain the image of my company. A company with a gangster boss, where could I work with a company like that, said Jun Wu. Immediately, Hair Yong said, I will send my son to study abroad, and I will make sure he will never back to Korea again. Hearing that Jin Song said, Father here, I was the one who got beat up. Why was I just studying abroad? But immediately Hair Yong became angry and beat his own son very hard and told him to be quiet. While laughing, Jun Wu said there was no point in sending him overseas, instead of sending him overseas. I have a better suggestion. If you do what I'm suggesting, maybe I can retract my order. Hair Yong said he would definitely do it. All right, before I used 50 million won. Because of your son, it's not a lot for me, but it's a lot for other people. I want your son to work alone and pay my money back. Hearing that Hair Yong said, Sorry, but chairman, how can such a kid pay 50 million won? You're a sailor, right? Put your son on the boat. Isn't deep sea fishing now expensive? And the scene moves to the middle of the sea, where you can see a ship. Then you see Jin Xiong fishing with a sad face. Moving into a building, here Han Jun said to Jun Wu that he looks like a villain. Yes, after all, what we are doing is not charity work or something like that, right? Apart from that, don't get caught up in problems that need money from now on, and don't get hurt too, Jun Wu said. I'm fine, said Han Jun, but suddenly someone touched the wound on Han Jun's body and made him very alert, and it turned out to be a woman from before. It made Han Jun confused. Who was this woman? Jun Wu introduced her, and from now on she will help you to destroy Nexus. She is a celebrity, and she works as an informant. This woman is a well-known figure with 570,000 followers named Choi Seo-hyun. Regardless, I was quite impressed that I heard that Park Han-joon looks like a bandit, but he looks more handsome than I thought. So why did you call me today? Asked Seo-hyun. I called you because I want to talk about our future plans to destroy Nexus. Not our plan, it was to make Park Han-joon beat them up, Seo-hyun said. For now, Nexus is far beyond our capabilities. Han Jun alone isn't enough to beat up those bastards, so I'm planning to develop our team's fighting skills. And I think one of the right people for that is at Dongyan High School, which he is still connected with Nexus. Immediately Han Jun said Kim Dong Hyun, and Jun Wu praised him because Han Jun had sharp instincts. That's right, he is Kim Dong Hyun. When you fought Nexus back then, he was the one who still fought with you to the end the former number one student of Dong Hyun High School, Kim Dong Hyun. What happened in that war after he injured his knee, he can't even walk properly, you know. But we need Kim Dong Hyun, hearing that Han Jun just relaxed quietly. 
Your expression slowly turned weird. But business is business right. At a time like this, you should be relaxing with your friend. But don't forget Kim Dong-yoon currently belongs to Nexus. Instantly, Han Jun's gaze became very sharp. Then moving on to a school, where you can see a meeting being held. It is explained that Chairman Choi will be sent to a juvenile detention center, and that it will be a problem because they will put him in prison. And because of that, it seems like it will be difficult to raise money going forward. That bastard knows how to make money but has no experience in politics. Then it was also explained that the person who sent Chairman Choi to the juvenile prison was Park Han Jun. As soon as the aura of this room changed, their leader who heard that said with a sinister expression, one of the guys there, the number one guy in Dong Hyun's high school student, Min Gyeong Chiol, he commented that Park Han Jun should have decided to live quietly and not mess around anymore. A promise is a promise, he can't let it be. But suddenly someone came in panic. There was big news that Hanjun will transfer schools here. Immediately everyone was shocked to hear that. Then Hanjun was seen introducing himself to his class. Greetings from Dong Hyun High School. I'm here to destroy you. Hearing that immediately all gazes went to Hanjun, but their teacher instead smiled while saying that even the transfer students at our school are annoying. The teacher then put Hanjun in the very back seat. Finally, I met you in person, said the student sitting beside Hanjun. K this guy is the twelfth strongest guy in Dong Hyun High School. Jo Umin, Min Gyeong Chil told me not to mess with you. People his size can be afraid of you, but I want to fight you instead, said this man. Don't get me wrong, I'm a transfer student last year. I don't really know you, but I've heard a lot about you. I just want to prove that the rumors are true. How about we just duel directly and ignore all of them present? But Han Jun just ignored him, making Jo Umin annoyed and wanted to slap Han Jun. Han Jun immediately hit him with a very strong elbow, making Jo Umin throw far away and hit the wall hard. Suddenly, all the students who saw it were very surprised. Han Jun looked very terrible. Han Jun then fell asleep and said, Don't disturb me. Moving somewhere, saw Seo Hyun who said, To be honest, I'm not sure if we should recruit Kim Dong Hyun. There are a lot of strong and normal men out there. Why recruit him? Either because his leg hurts and looks pitiful, or because he's a friend of Park Han Jun? But Junwoo said the one word that came to mind when Kim Dong-hyun's name was mentioned, and that was persistence. Even though his body was small, he fought Nexus only with strong tenacity. But one thing is certain, they were also destroyed because they were too stubborn. So why do we have to recruit people who have been injured? Asked Seo Hyun. Junwoo also answered, I believe this, when someone has been broken his heart before, and will be more sensitive than before, the words of the wise once said Seo Hyun. Then the other hand, Han Jun was seen walking in the classroom hall, and everyone was silent and gave way. But suddenly, Han Jun saw someone in front of him. It was a red-haired man. The man looked like Kim Dong Hyun, but there was someone kicking him really hard. It made even the red-haired man crash and drop his belongings and food. It's annoying why did you go to the supermarket? It took more than five minutes. I lost the bet because of you. What are you going to do? This guy also banged his head on the wall saying, What are you going to do, you bastard? He's slow enough if you beat him up, then he will be even slower, said another student. When he ran, his legs might not be useful. How could he go to the supermarket in five minutes, added another student. Nothing is impossible, he just needs to be more afraid of me than losing his legs. And he continued to beat Kim Dong-hyun very hard. This red-haired man really was Kim Dong-hyun, and seeing that Han Jun just kept silent. On the other hand, Seo Hyun said, I now understand why you are trying to recruit Kim Dong-hyun, but I feel that Park Han Jun is not an easy person to work with. Isn't it better if it's solved with money? It's easy if Kim Dong-hyun is someone who can be bribed with money. Do you know why Kim Dong-hyun fought with Nexus at that time? It's because Park Han Jun fought too, that's all. Others might think this is weird. He fought with his injured leg for others. But the Kim Dong-hyun I met was the one who would fight alongside his friends, assuming if his friend got beat up it meant he got beat up too. That's the nature of Kim Dong-hyun. Kim Dong-hyun was smoking after being beaten earlier, but suddenly Han Jun appeared in front of him with his muscular body. Nice to see you again, Kim Dong-hyun. Kim Dong-hyun, who saw that, then said, I heard you came here to destroy this school. Do you think you can do it, Nexus? They have become stronger than before. 
The power and money they have not something we can disturb or sue. We've lost. That's the end. But Han Jun said, No, this time we will win. Hearing that Kim dong Yun stood up and said, Before that, I will not fight if I feel I will lose, and because of that I will be lame. Hearing that Han Jun said, You wait and see, but apparently Min Gyeong Chil saw this encounter from the window and said, I wonder what he's going to do. But all he's doing is cooperating with that cripple. What a fool. Min Gyeong Chil then told his men to prepare to beat up Han Jun. In a hospital, here is Dong Hyun is seeing the doctor, and the doctor said, It's good, Dong Hyun, you are receiving therapy regularly, but it will be more difficult. The longer you delay the surgery, the less chance you will recover. Go to a bigger hospital. I know it's a tough decision, but it's better than you not being able to walk anymore. Outside the hospital, Dong Hyun was standing in the pouring rain, but suddenly someone came and said, What did the doctor say? Have you recovered? Why are you here? Dong Hyun said, and it turns out he is the number one person in the hospital. Dong Hyun's school is named Min Gyeong Cheol. We're friends, right? I'm a little sad. I'm just a person who is in the same room and checks the condition of your feet. I saw you having an important talk with Park Han Jun, and I just want to know if everything is okay. I hope he's okay because I'm going to kill him for the second time. But Dong Hyun said, Then why don't you come alone if you are so strong? Instantly, he kicked Dong Hyun's leg hard and it made Dong Hyun crash against the asphalt quite hard. Don't you think that everything Han Jun has done till now was useless? Don't you remember Han Jun also knelt like you just now and your feet are the proof? Don't you ever get tired of that unquestionable loyalty? But Dong Hyun said that first. Until you betrayed me and Park Han Jun then entered Nexus, why are you talking about that? If it's like that, I'll become the bad wolf. You are indeed a person who maintains loyalty always cool to his friends than a bastard like me who prefers betrayal. Just do as you please, Kim dong Yun. I think this time you won't be able to take care of your friends anymore, hearing that dong Yun just looked down with annoyance. Back to school, here you can see Han Jun who is sitting casually in class. But then on the radio announcement there was Min Gyeong Cheol speaking. As you all know, Han Jun Park is the one who started the war with Nexus two years ago when you transferred to the school you clearly said to wipe out this school, right? Are you waiting for me to beat you up again like that time? I know you're strong. That's why I've never seen you lose before. But Han Jun Park, maybe this time will be different. I'm not the type of person who is strong with my own strength. So from now on, the hunt for Park Han Jun begins. When all the students headed for Han Jun's class, Two people were thrown from outside the classroom with a huge crash. What's wrong with them? The other students started to get confused, and someone was knocked out again and hit another delinquent outside the classroom. You can see Han Jun, who is very burly, stepping on the neck of one of the students in his class. Damn what the class is doing. But it seems that all the students in this class have been unconscious, mad they were all defeated by Park Han Jun. Then saw Han Jun, who said, I will show who here is being hunted. All of a sudden, all the students came forward to attack Han Jun simultaneously, but Han Jun kicked the vanguard hard, and then a heavy punch was thrown at this delinquent. Han Jun once again beat up other delinquents sadistically, while Dong Yun was still silent in his class. Suddenly, Dong Yun's gaze became very, very sharp. Han Jun was seen facing all the students of this school very brutally. Then Han Jun smashed one of the students' faces with one fist. Then he then turned around and kicked this other student very hard. Seeing that all the other students started panicking, bastard monster, he is not only reckless, he really wants to slaughter us all. Don't be afraid to catch him, but we can also win if we catch him. But one person gets hit hard by Han Jun, while the others try to catch Han Jun at the same time. Han Jun was seen being caught by the students who restrained Han Jun simultaneously then beat Han Jun repeatedly at the same time. However, Han Jun kicked the person in front of him really hard, then backed away and hit the person holding him against the wall hard. Then, Han Jun beat the students who held him very hard. How can you let him beat around like that? But Han Jun continued to hit very hard repeatedly towards the thugs who were blocking him. Han Jun felled many delinquents very quickly, and then quickly beat them all one by one very strong and brutally and it was seen that everyone in the hall was finished off by Han Jun very brutally. They were all sprawled, but Han Jun then faced again with a group of students in front of him who have prepared. Park Han Jun is already tired. 
This is a good chance because we haven't even started yet while the other students are seen running around. Park Hanjun's energy was almost exhausted. It was Dong Yun who thought that idiot. It's all over. Why are you doing this again? But suddenly someone came in and said, Park Hanjun will surely be disappointed. Is it okay for you to just sit here like nothing anything happens when your friends are fighting? You're Kim Dong Yun, right? Hearing that Kim Dong Yun just said, Who are you? Seo Hyun replied. You could say I'm one of Park Hanjun's co workers. Hearing that Dong Yun just said, I can't fight. And Seo Hyun said that I'm not here to tell you to fight. I just want to tell you about Park Hanjun. From what I know, he knew that he was going to fight all the Dong Hyun high school kids when he entered this school. And we told him to run away if something like that happened. But he decided to fight anyway. Seo Hyun then said, you know the reason she said she wanted to prove that this fight she can definitely win, hearing that Dong Hyun was silent for a moment. He then remembered Min Gyeong Cheol's words, who said the reason you are like this now is because you depend too much on your dregs of loyalty. I don't know whether you will remain loyal this time or not. Then you can see Seo Hyun who said, Are you sure you won't regret it? Immediately Dong Hyun's aura turned quite badass. But you can see Han Jun who continues to fight very brutally, but Han Jun looks very tired after defeating so many thugs, and it can be seen that everyone in this hall also had all been defeated by Park Han Jun. They were all sprawled, but suddenly Min Gyeong Chiol appeared and came down from the stairs. As expected of Park Han Jun, no matter how many you have defeated, that is enough. From now on they will all become like monsters. Here are shown the strongest delinquents in this school. From the first Min Gyeong Cheol to the strongest to the seventh, everyone gathered together to defeat Park Han Jun, seeing that Han Jun returned to his serious mode and prepared to fight. Immediately six, the strongest delinquents came forward simultaneously lunging, seeing that Han Jun prepared with his strongest fist, but Han Jun was really taken aback because the strongest number two was hit by a broom from the side. All of a sudden, everyone stopped looking at that Han Jun. You're really annoying doing cool things alone, and he's the Dong Yun who came to help Park Han Jun. Then the picture shows a photo showing Dong Yun and Han Jun's friendship on a suitcase containing Han Jun's money. Forget about our previous plans, Min Gyeong Cheol said. We'll take care of it together with Park Han Jun. Then saw some of the strongest delinquents and others who came forward to attack Dong Yun simultaneously. Seeing that, Dong Yun was ready with two broomsticks in his hands. Damn limp kid pretending to be strong, said the number three delinquent angrily, and was about to beat Dong Yun. But Dong Yun blocked his attack with a stick, and then hit him very hard with a stick. Then there was the strongest bald thug number four, who lunged and held Dong Yun. But Dong Yun kneed him really hard, and then hit all the thugs in front of him in a row with his broomstick. While on the other hand, Han Jun also beat his opponent in succession. Han Jun and Dong Yun locked up these delinquents, and beat them up one by one. How could one be exhausted and the other crippled? How could they be that strong? Han Jun and Dong Yun fought like a deadly duo that couldn't be beaten. They then leaned against each other and Dong Yun said, Park Han Jun, I'm sorry I often blame you while living my life right now, but I know it's not because of you, I just want to blame others. Heard that Han Jun smiled, but suddenly Min Gyeong Cheol jumped at them with his muscular body and said, What kind of nonsense is that? If you really want to die, I will grant it. But Dong Hyun said, Park Han Jun, he is mine. Han Jun and Dong Hyun then avoided Min Gyeong Cheol's very strong attack, hit the floor. They then ran towards the door together, seeing that Min Gyeong Cheol chased them while saying, You stupid child, just run. But Han Jun caught him and threw him so hard toward the door that Min Gyeong Cheol was thrown very far into the room. After that, Dong Hyun closed the door by tying it tightly, waiting a moment longer. It will be over soon. Seeing that Min Gyeong Cheol said, Kim Dong Yun, you did another stupid thing. Min Gyeong Cheol lunged at Dong Yun with his fist to the west. Who did you say was pathetic? But Dong Yun blocked Min Gyeong Cheol's blow with his stick and immediately tore his hand from hitting the stick. Dong Yun then slammed his bat on Gyeong Cheol really hard, but Gyeong Cheol lunged at Dong Yun, held his body strong, then lifted him up like the undertaker in the arena and threw Dong Yun really hard to the window then punched Dong Hyun with his fist. But Dong Hyun was able to avoid it quickly. After that, Gyeong Chil said, Dong Hyun, what are you going to do now? You are going to fight me with your bare hands. Hearing that Dong Hyun opened his shirt, then tied his shirt to his fist and said, Who said, 
seeing that Gyeongchil said, Using your shirt, you're such a cute bastard. But Dong Hyun throws his shirt in Gyeongchil's face, quickly covers his face with the shirt, then pulls it as hard as he can and hits it on the floor really hard. It wasn't finished there. Dong Hyun then beat Gyeongchil repeatedly. But without realizing it, Gyeongchil appeared hitting Dong Hyun's leg really hard as soon as Dong Hyun looked really hurt. Gyeongchil then said, You and I are not the same as before. After that, Gyeongchil seemed to get up, and Dong Hyun, who looked very sick, appeared and said, Kim Dong Hyun, what happened today will be very detrimental to you. After that, Gyeongchil stood up and left Dong Hyun, who was in pain. However, Dong Hyun was seen getting up and saying, Bullshit, where are you going, gorilla bastard? Gyeongchil was suddenly surprised. Gyeongchil then looked annoyed and said, You're a bastard even after being taught like that. But Dong Yun said, It's not over, Gyeongchil beat. Dong Yun said, What else can you do? But it looked like Dong Yun could still hold on and said it wasn't over yet, but a hard punch hit Dong Yun very quickly. This made Dong Yun get knocked far enough to hit the wall. Dong Yun was sprawled on the floor. Here you see Dong Yun who still has a very strong will to fight, while Gyeongchil said the damn bastard left Dong Yun, and you can see Dong Yun who can still get up. Where are you going? This bastard still hasn't ended, said Dong Yun who got up with a body covered in wounds. Seeing that, Gyeongchil looked very annoyed, and then hit Dong Yun with his fist and said just die there, asshole. But Dong Yun scratched Gyeongchil's face with glass that was flying in the air, seeing that Gyeongchil was immediately shocked. Did I get cut? and see that Dong Hyun's hands were filled with the mirror. Then once again, Dong Hyun scratched Gyeong Cheol's face with the glass in his hand, but Gyeong Cheol didn't stay silent, and again launched his attack on Dong Hyun, but his punch was still avoided by Dong Hyun. But Dong Hyun was holding Gyeong Cheol's shirt and said, What kind of person do you know I can't lose? If I lose now, I can't deserve to show my face in front of Park Han Jun again. Dong Hyun then hit Gyeong Cheol's face with his head really hard. Gyeong Chiol suddenly loses his balance and thinks, damn this bastard. But once again, Dong Yun hits Gyeong Chiol really hard, and once again Gyeong Chiol gets hit hard from Dong Hyun. Then there was Dong Hyun's very annoyed face and the last punch that directed all his energy into his fist and beat Gyeong Chiol very hard. Immediately, Gyeong Chiol was seen lying in front of Dong Hyun. After that, Dong Hyun with a lot of wounds came out of the door and saw Han Jun fight with the other thugs, and it looked like Han Jun had defeated all the thugs who fought him. Seeing that, Dong Hyun approached and said, There's a crazy person, you really won. But Dong Hyun immediately fell and was detained by Park Han Jun. Park Han Jun then embraced Dong Hyun and took him away from here. Here you can see Han Jun smiling at Dong Hyun, seeing that Dong Hyun said, Are you smiling stupidly? They then went through the hall which was filled with delinquents who had been sprawled by Park Han Jun. Then it shows someone who says, what the hell, that person is the chairman of the board of Dong Yan Hai. This man seems to have a lot of subordinates, and he says Min Gyeong Chol, that incompetent bastard you said his name is Park Han Jun. Just to catch that one bastard they ruined the school like this, go and catch that bastard Park Han Jun and just break three bones. But suddenly someone said to that guy, don't do that, you should let the kids mind their own business. Seen someone who appeared wearing glasses, and adults did it separately and that person was Jun Wu's lawyer. These two men had the meeting and the man in white said law firm KR, so C. Park Han Jun had a lot of money. Even so, just because they have a lot of money they can do things like this. But suddenly the lawyer dropped three suitcases filled with money and said, I'm not here for small talk, so I brought it not to disappoint you, seeing that this man immediately smiled. Manager Lee says, Looks like you know how to negotiate. Let me tell you now, I won't take it if it's not yellow and show the contents of this suitcase. That is documents. And there is a yellow file too, but the lawyer says it's tomorrow's headlines Dong Yan High School. Agreed whereabouts of the school gang and getting students with good fighting skills to join its criminal organization. Everything from how you stole money from the foundation, to how you bought land illegally, tax evasion. Please let me know if there's anything I haven't mentioned. Listen. That's all Manager Lee said. Didn't you think that you could die for doing that? So did Mr. This lawyer have nine lives or something, but the lawyer said yes. If you kill me, it's all over. If our law firm organization is against who? Who will win the charge of murder seems to be quite troublesome for you, hearing that manager Lee looked annoyed. All right, what do you want? Not much, just give up this school. At the hospital, here is Seo Hyun said to Park Han Jun. 
Are you really human or robot? How are you still okay after facing all the students from Dongyan? But Han Jun said I'm not fine, but saw the doctor coming out of the operating room. This doctor then said, It's amazing because he was able to endure the pain all this time when he came here. He was not in good condition. So, for more detailed results, we needed time to observe him. But the operation went well. I hope he has a great chance of recovery, hearing that Han Jun looks smiling with emotion. On the other hand, it shows Junwoo who is in a bar. Thank you for being motivated in this successful young man interview will help many students. I also hope so, said the white-haired man. After that, the white-haired man said, I feel something is wrong. The team lunged. I've never changed my schedule for an interview from a lesser-known magazine before. Was today's interview arranged by you chairman Oh Junwoo? This white-haired man was the leader of Nexus, Kim cheon Su. I never thought someone like Chairman Oh would come to see me. What an honor. With that way of speaking, did you forget who I am? Of course not. But now it's not the same as it used to be. Past is past. We're just the oldest and professional gamers sitting together. I'm just showing my respect to someone whose title is taller than me. That's good because you can understand the situation, but it's a bit annoying. I'm the type to always remind the past, you know. So I'm the one who destroyed Dongyan High School. Hearing that Kim Chion Su said, I don't understand what you're talking about if it's finished. I'll go home now. Nice to meet you, Chairman Kim Chion Su said, by holding out his hand. But Jin Wu instead ignored him. Kim Chion Su left the place. But Jin Wu called Kim Chion Su at our next meeting. Your face will no longer be that flat. Hearing that Kion Su only smiled. But Kion Su turned away, and immediately his facial expression became very serious. Then saw Jun Wu thinking, to be honest, I was worried because it's been two years but I saw his face. I'm not angry. Could it be because I think too much about the past? Uh, I think I'm worrying about things that aren't important. Because from his face I think he's the one who's angry. On the other hand, Chian Su is seen in the car and his partner asks, What are you doing now, Park Han Jun? Are you going to let him? Of course not. If they shoot the flare gun then we have to respond. Be prepared, this fight might be the biggest fight in South Korean history. Moving into a very luxurious apartment, then shown someone meeting some people who were gathered in this place. What's with the emergency call? I have other schedules so quickly told me, this man is the manager of the Gyeonggi branch. Then this big man is the manager of the Gangwon branch, Kim Ji Hyok. And the longish man beside him is Kung Cheong branch manager, Lee Mun Gil. Someone then said, Seoul has a good view. Why complain, this man is the manager of the Jiola branch, this is the manager of the Gyeongsang branch, Baek Dong Cheon, and lastly the manager of the Incheon branch, Nam In Su. The reason we're all here is because of Park Han Jun, right? Didn't that bastard Cheon So beat him with that money I was thinking? said Lee Mun Gil. Who is that bastard Park Han Jun that you have to send us to? Seoul, said Dyong John. Suddenly Lee Mun Gil laughs and says, Oh yeah, you didn't know after that it's natural since you only joined Nexus years ago. Lee Mun Gil then told that two years ago there was a very dangerous man named Park Han Jun. That man was the chairman of a small area in Seoul. Even though Nexus managed to seize the surrounding area, including areas outside Seoul, they had difficulty seizing Park Han Jun's territory. It was very embarrassing not only that, but the bastards from other territories saw Park Han Jun and saw a glimmer of hope or something. So they gathered to fight Nexus, so we gathered to capture Park Han Jun. He also finished without any problems. We wouldn't be gathering here, right? Something happened beyond our expectations. Even though we are outnumbered, we keep losing the battle. Not only that, but Nexus is also on the brink of collapse. Hearing all that Dong Qian said, is it possible? Yes, if you see that bastard fight, he really, really a monster, a crazy bastard. But immediately Dong Qian smiled and said, doesn't that mean you all are weak? Suddenly the situation in this place became more serious. Don't be arrogant, you look down on us, Li Mun Gil said angrily. But Kim Ji Hyok intervened and said, let it go, he's not wrong. Yes, to be honest, I thought the same thing, said Choi. But that was two years ago. I felt Nexus overreacting to something small like Park Hanjun. However, Siangu said, don't be like that. There's nothing wrong for us to be careful. Take care, right? And this might seem like a waste of time, but this could be a very important day. Did everyone who could come have already come? Sorry to call you guys all of a sudden after this. Let's have some food. You know why I called you over, right? Already moved. I feel war is the best choice. Even if it's a decision I have to make. 
I think I should have decided it together with you guys. But Taiso asked us to be careful whether war is the right course of action. I feel like you made too much commotion. One school has been seized by Park Hanjun. But immediately Taiso panicked seeing that Chiansu then said, You think I'm making a fuss? But Nam Insu said no, I don't think you're making a fuss. Let me take care of it. Will it be okay? Okay, the method I use won't be easy. He has donors, there will be a lot to prepare. But Nam Insu said, Ready after I get this scar. There's no moment where I'm not ready. It's true you have a grudge with Han Jun, right? And I can trust you, so I'll support you. What do you think, others? Yes, I support me too. Do as you please, I also support. Do your best. I also support. Okay, then Nam Insu will take care of it. And once the meeting is over, this is your end. Park Han Jun, you bastard, thought Nam Insu with a burning passion. Moving on, we can see Nam Insu and all his subordinates who have gathered in one place. Finally, the day has come when we can kill Park Hanjun. Are you serious, Park Hanjun? We can really kill him. Seen Jin Wu and Han Jun who were heading somewhere and seen them going into an abandoned house. In the middle of these companies, Jin Wu then said, Don't you want to know I know everything about you, but you don't know anything about me? For example, like, how can I have this much money? Why do I hate Kim Chian Su? Why did I try to take revenge and spend that much money? I think it's time for me to tell you. Moving on, I saw Han Jun and Jin Wu who came in and sat together at the dining table. Here Jin Wu said, First, the money I've spent so far is mine, and all this house is also mine. About two years ago I had a friend we've been friends for a long time, his friend who doesn't care even though we fight a lot. Then the next day we forget about it. Maybe more like family than friends, Jun Wu and his best friend are seen playing on the computer at home. They look like they are playing trading and saying financial statements and market sizes and partner policies business in different areas of the company's vision and the public's reaction to it, including the various possible successes and failures, so we can plan and prepare. And even if it fails, it will cover all bases and have a plan for all eventualities. The design may look old, but its function is very interesting. I'm so curious to use its performance later, that's what Jun Wu said at the time. And the main problem is, after Park Han Jun's defeat against Nexus, it was seen that Jin Wu was beaten by his friend when you lost to Nexus. All the bastards in my school, everything changed. Didn't you hear? We all have to get together. Then it was shown Jin Wu who was stepped on. Then he said, if there were people who opposed him, they would be killed. If there was an organization against him, they would destroy him. But you know about my temperament, right? This bastard. Why did you hit my friend bastard? That's how we fight. When we fight, I thought even he will just run away leaving me bullshit. Here we see Jun Wu who wanted to enter the burning building and was detained by the fire department. And it turned out that Jun Wu's friend was in the building. The next day saw Jun Wu who came to someone they beat up yesterday and said, Bastard, you killed him. You burned that place right. Don't you know there is such a thing as a boundary? What did we do wrong to you? But instantly Jun Wu was beaten up by this jerk. From here we know that Jin Wu's friend was dead, then moved to see Jun Wu who was surrounded by these bastards. We were just smoking there. This bastard was unlucky, huh? But it looked like Jin Wu was angry and was about to throw punches at those bastards. But the scene moved to show Jun Wu who had been badly beaten and was lying down. In this place my friend was dead after all and I couldn't do anything. Jin Wu looked alone in his room. Even he regretted it. I didn't want to hold Nexus. I never thought it's gonna end like this. I wanna die. I have to erase my tracks like I'd rather not exist in the first place. The traitor is already walking. The longer you learn, the more you have to calculate indeed. What's the point now I'm going to die anyway? I'll take care of this and donate this only. But suddenly saw Jin Wu, who was shocked, and saw that Jun Wu's balance increased rapidly. There was still a lot of this that could be put in my savings. Pleasure, regret, embarrassment. Instead of all those feelings, all my thoughts were on how happy it would be if he knew all his hard work paid off. And it turned into anger at me, and that is the reason I'm still alive now. Jin Wu said very annoyed. While Kian Su will die, I don't care how much money I spend, this is all my friend's money too. Heard everything Han Jun said. Why are you telling me all this? Jin Wu also replied to reminder. I want to tell you reason not to give up on destroying the Nexus. Moving saw Jin Wu who was in the car, and then called someone I was carried away with my story, so he saw the soft side of the president means, 
But why am I telling your story this easily? It seems you are starting to become close friends with him, huh? It turns out that Jun Wu was calling Seo Hyun. He then said, Do you still remember the plan? Next is Inseon. They are troublesome people. So be careful. They will be difficult opponents. Hearing that Jun Wu said, I also agree about that. Even when in the middle of the road like this, they are really troublesome. Here you can see Jin Wu's car, which was surrounded by troops from Nam Insu. Then one of Nam Insu's subordinates dropped some paint to block the way from Jun Wu's car. Jin Wu's driver was seen, who was blocked by paint that fell in front of the windshield. The president held on tight, and it was seen that Jun Wu's driver was drifting fast. The scene backs to Inchin Gang, who are chasing the car from Jun Wu. Hearing the commotion, Seo Yun, who is on the phone, looks panicked and says, Oh, Jin Wu, what happened? Jun Wu is seen who has fainted in the car, and after that, this gang group surrounds the car to catch Oh Jun Wu. Then there is Nam Insu taking the cell phone from Jun Wu and saying, Oh, girl, are you this bastard's girlfriend? You could be this rich bastard's girlfriend. You must be very beautiful. Besides that, you also know about Park Hanjin, right? Pass my message to him. We were waiting for him at the distribution center of the JQ Distribution Center in East Incheon, and we saw Jun Wu, who had been caught by this gangster group. If you told him that Nam Insu from Incheon was waiting for him, he would understand. And then Jun Wu had been taken somewhere. Hearing all the words from Nam Insu after that, Seo Hyun said, Those bastards must be crazy. I'm beautiful, but I'm not that jerk's boyfriend. The scene changes, showing Park Han Jun, who is walking in an alley. Park Han Jun then remembers the words of Jin Wu, who said that anger is the reason for me to stay alive. I used all this money to defeat Kim Chian Su, so it's not a problem to spend it all because all the money it belongs to my friend. Hearing that Park Han Jun replied, and you told me all this, because yes, simply to raise your spirits makes you unable to give up to destroy Nexus. Park Han Jun, who thought he was telling me his reasoning so I didn't intend to give up halfway, but suddenly Park Han Jun was called by Seo Hyun, who followed Park Han Jun on her motorbike. Seo Hyun then said to Park Han Jun, Come up quickly. Jun Wu was kidnapped by Incheon gangsters, hearing that Han Jun looked surprised while muttering the name of Incheon. Elsewhere, it seems Jun Wu who has realized and he thinks, Where am I? And there he guarded by many people, seeing that Jun Wu thinks, Are they bastards from Incheon? Then looks at the fat one who approaches Jun Wu and says, The jerk is aware. Should I put him to sleep again? Hearing that Jun Wu thinks this fat bastard is Incheon's number two bully, Baek Ban Jung. Then behind him is Incheon's number one Nam Insu, and Nam Insu said, Let him be just bait for Park Han Jun. We'll hold him for a bit, and then let him go later. But Jun Wu, who saw that he was laughing out loud, Jun Wu then said, So you guys are idiots who really don't think before you act, huh? You really just kidnapped the owner of the company. I have to admit I never thought this would happen. If I could I want to recruit you? That's a good plan. But don't you think there's a huge gap in this incident? You damn Inchin are the weakest of the weak. It just two years ago you all knelt begging in front of Park Han Jun. Pitiful. Then, with a very sharp smile, Jun Wu said, All of you thought you could fight or face Park Han Jun. Heard that the fat looked annoyed but was stopped by Nam Insu, then said to the fatty, I'll take care of this person. Nam Insu then came closer and said, You've just woken up but you're already talking a lot. It seems you know about some Inchin stuff, but if you act like you know something, at least you really do knowing it. Two years ago, he knelt alone. Inchin didn't kneel to Park while saying the previous chairman would be sad if he heard that. Aren't you guys brothers? And according to what I know, the previous chairman knelt to protect you. Hearing that immediately looked like the fat one was going to beat Junwu, then ready with his fist while saying, Say one more word and I will kill you. Hearing that Jun Wu scoffed while saying, One more word. I just said three words. Hearing that it looked like the fat guy was going to beat Jin Wu and said, You bastard. But suddenly a subordinate from Nam Inso came and said, We got information that Park Han Jin was on his way here. Heard that immediately Nam Insu looked smiling. Hearing all that saw Jun Wu who said to the fat man, Ban Jung, don't waste your energy to beat me. You better use it to deal with Park Han Jun. It seemed to come on time, but it was seen that the fat guy beat Jun Wu and sent him flying far enough. After beating Jun Wu, the fat one went to meet Park Han Jun. Nam In Su then said to Jun Wu, No matter what I say, you will definitely argue right. So I will say this. 
The chairman of Inchin previously knelt in front of Park Hunjin, so look carefully I will show you that Inchin has changed. The scene shifted, showing Seo Hyun and Park Hanjun being chased by several people on motorbikes, also seeing that Seo Hyun said, Damn, they sent all the motorbikes in Incheon to chase me. But immediately Seo Hyun looked very surprised, because it turned out that the fat guy was blocking their way together with some of his colleagues, saw the fat Seo Hyun then said, What was that giant pig while hiding behind Park Hanjun and said, Mr. Hanjun, take care of him. But the fat man immediately turned away, saying, Keep quiet and follow me. We do want to kill you now, but we are not cowards, and the rule in Incheon is one to one. After that, Park Hanjun and also Seo Hyun were seen who kept following this fat guy, but it was seen Seo Hyun who said, You are very big. This is the first time I see someone as big as you. Can humans be this fat? Are you wrong? Do you wear clothes that size like that special machine or what? Or is this really the size for your body? Hearing all the questions, the fat man turned around and said, Shut up and follow me, asshole. But Seo Hyun continued, I wonder what else to do. Then one last question, Seo Hyun then said, What happened two years ago was decided by Incheon, if at that time Incheon decided not to fight each other, but focused on beating up Park Hanjun right. But why didn't you finish him right away after seeing his face? Fat, who turns away with a terrible face or expression while saying, Are you baiting me now? I didn't say that I won't hit women, did you? Do you want me to hit? Hearing that Park Hanjin immediately came forward saying, Not her, but I. Hearing that looked the fatty who got even more annoyed and said, I always hold back, damn you bastard. I couldn't take it anymore. Then saw the fat one about to beat Park Hanjun while saying before going to Nam Insu, I'll teach you a lesson. The scene tells of a super baby born with a body size that is beyond reason. After puberty, he becomes 217 centimeters, weighs 243 kilograms, and is known as Blimp the Man Wrecker. But it looked like the fat guy had been kicked by Park Hanjun's extremely hard, and for the first time in my life I felt like I was flying. You can see the fat man who was crashed hitting the wall very hard, seeing it looked that the colleagues of the fat man were very surprised. Did he succeed in being dropped? And immediately they all got ready while saying, if the chairman gives the order, we will finish him. And Park Hanjun was seen being surrounded by gangster groups from Incheon. Saw that Seo Hyun then said, What an Incheon one on one. Saw Park Hanjun who came. Jin Woo then said, Park Hanjun, let me go. My feet started to hurt, but suddenly a big man appeared while saying to his subordinates, You all stop this bastard, let me take care of it. Then it was seen Park Hanjun who had confronted Nam Insu, and Nam Insu said, haven't seen you Park Hanjun for a long time. Looking at Nam Insu, Park Hanjun seemed to remember the figure of the previous leader of Incheon, who was very similar to Nam Insu, then said, You're Nam Mansu's younger brother, right? Hearing that, Nam Insu looked like he was getting ready in his fighting position and said, If you dare to say that, say it now because today is the day I've been itching to beat him up from the first. Then you can see Nam Insu beating Park Hanjun while saying, if you don't want to go first, then I will go first. Seeing the attack from Nam Insu, Park Hanjun thought that he was fast, and this could not be avoided, and sure enough it was seen that Hanjun was hit by Nam Insu quite hard. After that Nam Insu said, Incheon's defeat two years ago I will pay it today. However Park Hanjun was seen throwing his punch at Nam Insu, but was successfully avoided, seeing that Hanjun launched his kick again, and was again avoided by Nam Insu. Very quickly, Nam Insu beat Hanjun with extraordinary strength. After Nam Insu seemed to retreat and was seen being chased by Mr. Hanjun, who like a monster threw his fist but was again avoided by Nam Insu. But Park Hanjun's clan was hit by Nam Insu, and Nam Insu said, You're slow, and you see Park Hanjun who was blown away by Nam Insu's punches. After that, Nam Insu came closer and said, Park Hanjun, it's hard when you're like this. I can't be angry. Get up because the real fight just started said Nam Insu with a terrible expression. After that, the scene told after Inchin knelt in front of Park Hanjun, I was so embarrassed that I couldn't rest and kept hitting the punching bag. Inchin, which is seen as the strongest boxing in the whole country, even without a fight being humiliated by Park Hanjun, I'm a boxer they call a genius. Boxing isn't fun anymore, and because of that I stopped boxing because what I do is fight not boxing. After that, it was seen that Nam Insu was going to a place alone, seeing that the boss of this place said, 
Who is that kid? Go, hearing what their boss said. This big body seemed that this place was not a place for you to be able to play around. But it looks like this big man who was beaten by Nam Insu with a very hard punch could make him crash into the face of their boss. After that, Nam Insu said for the punching bag, you talk a lot too, huh? Seeing the colleagues who were beaten instantly, all of them took out their weapons. Nam Insu said, come on you all. Since then, Nam ISU has destroyed 27 schools in two years, 13 gyms destroyed, and four organizations disbanded, became stronger through countless battles just for the sake of avenging Park Hanjun. The scene again shows Park Hanjun who gets hit by many attacks from Nam Insu. But are you kidding me? Now that you are this weak, Inchin is suffering because of you. How dare you do this to me? You can see Park Hanjun who keeps getting punched by Nam Insu, seeing this fight. Seo Hyun then said to Jin Wu, What's wrong with Park Hanjun? Will he lose? But Jun Wu answered first, let's see him. It was said that Jun Wu had actually researched Park Hanjun before recruiting him. One thing that surprised me was that Park Hanjun was the son of a gym owner. The fact that he didn't even learn any martial arts and was only practicing physical training was due to pure strength and power he could match against the Nexus. The problem was that Nam Insu was also aware of that, and he was always able to dodge Park Hanjun's punches. Then Nam Insu countered the blow by hitting Park Hanjun's face with a pretty hard punch. The wound made when you use a boxing glove with a wound made from an empty hand is much different. But if it's the empty fist of a boxer, it's enough to tear human flesh. Nam Insu took advantage then for the rest he only needed to accumulate the impact of Park Hanjun's attack. Then it was seen that Park Hanjun was going to hit Nam Insu with his hard punch. But the punch was very easily blocked with one hand and he hit Park Hanjun back and made him blown away far enough. After that, Nam Insu came forward with his fist while saying, Try to cheer me up. But I saw Park Hanjun who dodged the attack from Nam Insu and held Nam Insu's lower leg, seeing that Nam Insu locked Park Hanjun's head and said, What are you doing? You think you can win if you make me fall on the ground just because I'm a boxer? Is that just your plan? But I saw Park Hanjun stomping his foot on the ground very hard, and immediately managed to push Nam Insu with incredible strength. Seeing that, Nam Insu was very surprised. While thinking, what crazy power is this? He can lift my upper body weight with just his strength. But I see Nam Insu smiling while thinking that like this I will be cornered if I do boxing. Indeed my basic is boxing, but I am a street fighter and Nam Insu was seen hitting Han Jun with his knee. After that Nam Insu lifted Park Han Jun and threw him into the air. That made Park Han Jun hit the wall quite hard. Seeing this fight, all of Nam Insu's subordinates praised him and thought that Inchun's pride would come back. Hearing that, Nam Insu seriously said, Don't be too happy. This is only the first round. And Nam Insu thought, I know you won't fall just because it's Park Hanjun, but that bleeding in your eye will surely cloud your vision. Slowly, you will definitely lose your balance and let your guard down. After that, it looks like Nam Insu is coming forward and is about to beat Park Hanjun with his fists. This fight is certain that I will win it. But you can see Park Hanjun who managed to avoid a punch from Nam Insu, seeing that Nam Insu looked quite surprised. Likewise with Jun Wu and Seo Hyun, who were quite surprised to see that suddenly Jun Wu's expression turned terrible. And Jun Wu said, This is what I'm waiting for. You can see Park Hanjun beating Nam Insu really hard. Then it was shown Park Hanjun who managed to beat Nam Insu really hard, seeing that he immediately saw Nam Insu who was very surprised while thinking, What the hell was he dodging my attack earlier? If he really can read my movements, then I'm finished. Then I see Park Hanjun who hit Nam Insu again, and Nam Insu thinks, Or could it just be a coincidence? Am I wrong? And then Park Hanjun was seen hitting Nam Insu on the head again from above. The scene then follows Nam Insu who is often referred to as the greatest of the greatest. But Park Hanjun is also a monster of monsters. Jun Wu, who was watching from a distance, said, even though Nam Insu had the upper hand in terms of speed with his opponent, but in reality it was still not enough to take down Hanjun, who was a monster. Hearing that Seo Hyun said, then why hasn't he been able to beat him before? Because it's not easy to beat him. I myself studied a little his body movements, said Jun Wu. Nam Insu often changes modes from infector to outboxer. Therefore, he is always superior in terms of distance and speed. Then you can see Nam Insu avoiding a hard kick from Han Jun while dodging. 
Here Nam Insu is thinking, every time I launch an attack he always knows where my attack is going. But it looks like Nam Insu is getting hit hard from Han Jun. I'm trying to attack his weak point, lest he can read all the attacks. Is this the difference between talent and effort? Then Nam Insu was seen advancing while avoiding Park Han Jun's hard punches. Then with a very scary expression Nam Insu said, I'm still not finished. And there were lots of scratches and blood coming out of Park Han Jun's body. After that, it was seen that Nam Insu was throwing consecutive punches, very fast punches towards Han Jun's face. But Jun Wu, who saw the attack, said, This was over, and Han Jun was seen returning Nam Insu's advantage with one very hard punch right on the Nam Insu's face. While hitting Nam Insu, Park Han Jun said, You're too slow. Then another hard punch hit Nam Insu's chin really hard. When Nam Insu was hit, the previous leader, Nam Mansu, said, I will do whatever it takes to protect our members, even if it means sacrificing pride. When you can't take care of what you should be taking care of, then they will suffer. But one day, when he saw Mansu prostrate before Han Jun, saw that suddenly Nam Insu appeared and said, What is this all you can do? Your passion is our passion too. We are very proud to be able to fight with you, you know, stand up, you idiot, Nam Insu said. But since Mansu doesn't want to fight, then let me just fight, said Nam Insu by advancing to beat Park Han Jun. However, after one attack from Park Han Jun left a scar that lasted forever in Nam Insu's left eye. Back to the present. Nam Insu was beaten up by Park Han Jun and was bleeding profusely. Saw it looked like someone was holding the fat man's shoulder while saying, Are you just going to stay here watching him get beaten up? Then there was Nam Insu who looked panicked looking at Han Jun while thinking, is this what the chairman of Inchin saw at that time? This is not pressure that can be released by ordinary humans. He's really terrible. I feel like I want to run away from here, thought Nam Insu with a scared face. But on the other hand, he also thought if he ran away, it would undermine the pride of his members. Then one can see the fatty and his cohorts advancing together to beat up Park Han Jun to defend Nam Insu. Here the fatty said, I'll help kill him. I'll show you how strong Inchan is. Seeing that Nam Insu looked panicked while thinking, No, no, don't come here. And immediately Nam Insu shouted, telling all his subordinates to stop. Immediately all of Nam Insu's subordinates fell silent and stopped carrying out attacks. And suddenly Nam Insu was seen kneeling in front of Park Hanjin while saying, I lost. Nam Insu always thinks back on the incident back then. I was also embarrassed at that time knowing the weak side of the man I considered Inchin's hope. But now I think I know this must be the embarrassment that my brother felt at that time. Something that no one can understand. Under this knee there is a very heavy burden. I didn't care about my sister's knee, and instead blamed Park Hanjun. So it feels like this, huh? Seeing Nam Insu kneeling down at Park Hanjun, the fat guy screamed and said, Get up Nam Insu, what are you doing now? as well as all of Nam Insu's subordinates who said after everything we did, you are just like him too, stood up, saw this commotion suddenly appeared Jun Wu and said, think again carefully you idiots, don't you know that Nam Insu did it all because he thought of you, and don't you realize that Park Han Jun is getting serious, do you think can win from him? Jun Wu then approached Nam Insu and said the real battle is the one who protects more is the one who wins, I have to admit that, Hearing all that it seemed that the fat man and also his colleagues were just silent, Nam Insu raised your head. After that it was seen Jun Wu who hit Nam Insu on the head. Seeing that Nam Insu raised his head saying, What did you do that for? It was for you to kidnap me, damn bastard. Jun Wu then stood up and said, I'm a bit relieved now, even though I know you can endure it. Then the reason why you kidnapped me is because Nexus gave you hope. No. Hearing that it seemed Nam Insu, who was just silent, Jun Wu then continued, Of course, because these people from your Inchen, each of them have their own family problems. To solve all those problems, Inchen borrowed money from Nexus. All that money I have paid. Hearing that looked Nam Insu and all of his subordinates who looked surprised. However, outside of the distribution, it was seen that Seo Hyun, Park Han Jun, and Jun Wu were going to leave this place. Before they left, Nam Insu was seen saying to Jin Wu what the money you gave was for, hearing that Jun Wu turned and said, So you don't disturb me again? You really think I gave my money for no reason? The message should have entered your cell phone. By the way, I already paid for it. I know everything you guys did, even to the point of being their dog, 
and doing whatever the money you gave to Nexus to pay all your debts. I know you earned it with your own sweat from being a courier. Even porters, you did everything you can. You must have had a hard time. Hearing that looked like Na Minsu was quite touched, Jin Wu then said again, I just didn't see you guys working hard, so I wanted to help you a little. Jin Wu then turned away but heard all that Na Minsu and all of his subordinates bowed their heads as they said, Thank you, I can't be more grateful than this, said Na Minsu. After that, Na Minsu raised his head while saying to Jin Wu, We owe you. After that, Jin Wu, Park Hanjun, and Seo Hyun were seen leaving this place. After they left, Na Minsu turned and said to all his subordinates, Friends, I'm sorry already lost. Sorry for embarrassing you guys. Hearing that fat guy and all of Na Minsu's subordinates looked moved. Na Minsu always said, I won't embarrass you anymore from now on. Inchin will leave Nexus, and let's live without embarrassing. On the other side of Jin Wu's apartment, here is Jin Wu who said, So we can already take care of Inchin. This is good, but why are you like that today? Jin Wu said to Seo Hyun, who was looking down and apparently seen on Seo Hyun's cell phone, it looked like Jun Wu sent it. Money of 40 million won. Seeing that immediately, Seo Hyun looked very happy and said, Long life to you, President. May Incheon kidnap Oh Jun Wu every day. Hearing that instantly, Jin Wu looked annoyed and said, Oh Jun Wu is in front of you, so watch your mouth. After that, Seo Hyun looked at Park Han Jun and said, Oh yes, by the way, Park Han Jun, you have a wide back too. If you try a little decoration, it will definitely be cooler. Do you want to shop for clothes with me? Ask Seo Hyun to Han Jun. After that, the scene moved to a mall. You can see Park Han Jun who bought an outfit that looks very scary, seeing that Seo Hyun said, It's funny that the mafia wears things like this, but because Han Jun didn't look happy about it, Seo Hyun also offered to try on clothes other. However, when Park Han Jun bought another dress, Seo Hyun was seen looking amazed at Park Han Jun's appearance. Seeing that, Seo Hyun looked embarrassed while saying that it was more suitable. I'll buy some more, so I'll just wear it from today. But I see some people who were watching Seo Hyun from a distance. These two people then whispered in English and said, Look at that woman. Isn't she Choi Seo Hyun with 520k followers? She is really very beautiful. One of the two thought for a moment to approach him and asked his friend not to worry because he thought he was handsome. Even though Seo Hyun was walking with Jun Wu and Han Jun, the man ignored them. The blonde-haired man seemed brave to approach Seo Hyun and spoke Korean and offered him to go somewhere nice, hearing that Seo Hyun seemed annoyed, making the blonde-haired man think that Seo Hyun was the type who got angry easily and would really please him later. But unexpectedly, it was seen that Seo Hyun slapped this man hard enough for the man to get angry and then said, How dare you touch me with your hands, you jerk! Seo Hyun replied that I heard everything before you came here because I understand English. Get rid of the trash. Hearing that, the blonde looked annoyed and was about to beat Seo Hyun while saying, You bastard. But suddenly Seo Hyun's bodyguard appeared, namely Park Han Jun, who immediately beat the blonde very hard. The blonde immediately slammed into the glass and made his head embedded there. Seeing that his black partner came forward and was about to hit Park Han Jun from behind, however, it was seen that Han Jun was holding the punch using his elbow, and Park Han Jun's hard elbow instantly made the man's fingers crooked. You can see Park Han Jun beating this man really hard, and after hitting him several times to make the man cry while apologizing. But Park Han Jun was about to beat him and said, I don't understand English, heard that it was seen that Seo Hyun was eating popcorn while saying, But I spoke in Korean just now. Good job, Park Han Jun, heard there was a commotion here. The manager of this shop also appeared to break up the fight. The manager then panicked a bit and said, You can't do this kind of thing in our store. Please stop or I will call the police. Hearing that Seo Hyun said that this is nothing and apologized for disturbing but saw the damage in this store. This manager said, But I guess sorry won't be enough because I think the store will need some compensation. Hearing that Seo Hyun and Park Han Jun immediately glanced at Jin Woo. Seeing that, Jin Woo was immediately annoyed and asked that he be given patience. After that, the scene moves to the forum bar, or in the play zone area of the Nexus. Here you can see someone playing cards while saying, What did you say Inchin left Nexus? He is the head of a branch from Gyeonggi named Choi Taisu. Jin Wu reported Dong Hyun's healing process to Han Jun, 
Thank goodness then said Park Han Jun who was in place. After that it was seen that Jin Woo hit the table while saying, Okay, now that Kim Hyun is almost finished recovering, we have to start back to work. But then showed Jin Woo who said as I expected, Inchin made the first move. I still can't believe he can repay Inchin's debt. We are also making moves, so don't worry about Park Han Jun. I'm working on it. Immediately after the call was finished, Brand was looking at the woman in front of him and said, Sorry, it took quite a long time. Then should we open the last card? After that, we saw the woman who opened the last card looking goosebumps, and it was time to open the card. Suddenly, this woman immediately grabbed his head and said, Damn it. After the defeat, Taesu said to the woman, This is the third time you are bankrupt if the money you borrow is up to 120 million. That's the limit. Taesu then smiled and said, Fun game, and let us show how we finish our business. Then look at the woman who will be pulled by the two bodyguards. Saw it looked like a woman who was crying and said, I will do that while crying. I will do as you ordered. Hearing that immediately Taesu turned with a sharp smile and said, Aren't you close friends? Hearing that this woman said yes, I will do it. After that Taesu showed a piece of paper and said, I hope you don't regret your choice. And it turns out that Taesu showed a photo of Seo Hyun. It looks like the woman who is losing gambling is a close friend of Seo Hyun. The scene shows Kim Dong Hyun who looks like he is sweating wet. But suddenly a woman appears who comes and says to Kim Dong Hyun, Dong Hyun, are you doing this again? It's not good. If you overdo it during this recovery period, I will do two more sets. Already quickly stop, said the nurse. After that, Jin Woo came to see Kim Dong Hyun. I heard your operation went well. How is your recovery? asked Jin Woo, hearing that Dong Hyun looked down and said, Thank you, I will definitely return your money. You don't need to think about it, you don't need to fight with Nexus if you're depressed, just do as you please. Hearing that Kim Dong Hyun's gaze became sharp, and he said thank you. Then I'll clarify something, said Kim Dong Hyun. Jun Woo, who heard that looked confused, my relationship with Nexus will only be finished if I win against them. It is my decision to fight with them, Kim Hyun said, hearing that Jun Woo smiled. You are a man of your word, right? So hurry up and finish your recovery. Isn't gambling a bit damn? I thought you are a person who knows how having fun turns out. Then our next opponent will be the one who lent money to Inchin, the head of Playzone Taisu branch. This must be the first time you hear his name, right? He is the biggest pillar in the center nexus. His business is money lending business. He is the first person we have to kill, hearing that it seems Park Hanjun just silently silent. But after that, the scene moves somewhere and a sound is heard. Before that, there is someone we have to meet first. Showed Jin Wu, Park Hanjun, who was meeting someone in this place. Here was Jun Wu, who said, Thank you for cooperating. After that, he was shown the person who was being met by Park Han Jun, and also Jin Wu. This man then said, you really, really will protect me. Right, don't worry about that, just tell us your story. This man also said, Choi Taesu, that bastard is really a devil. He also told me, every day people often call me good looking, and I'm glad to hear that because my dream has always been to be loved by the public and trends at school. People call them influencers and SNS stars. But reality isn't that beautiful. Whatever I do, my followers don't go up. At that time I think what's the problem, should I give up? That's what I thought at the time. But one day I was invited by a group of someone who has thousands of followers. I thought it was a golden opportunity. If I can be with people like them, and finally I can increase my followers quickly, so I take the opportunity to be with that group of people. And I see that person saying, I told you you don't have talent, I will prove it. It started fast. Left bro met the Insta stories that I've been dreaming of. I admit it really thrilled my followers. Yes, my followers immediately skyrocketed up to 2.1M followers at that time. I thought I could do anything, but it didn't last long. In line with time, the person who approached me at that time began to show his true personality. At that time, I asked him, isn't this a gamble? Do you want to try too? I got 6 million one yesterday, said the man. Taesu then said, besides I didn't expect from Inchin gangsters anyway, then that Jun Wu turned out to have guts like him. I'm just a boring asshole. Hey go, I guess I really misjudged you, and don't you dare come to our club again. That's how I get kicked out of the club at that time. I was confused about what really happened shortly after that I lost 2M followers and whatever I post. I've done everything to try to return everything to how it was before. At that time I was thinking hard I need to increase my followers again. I thought, wait, 
Is the relationship this important? After that, it looks like he's back at the club. I try back with them to reboost my followers, and that's when I started gambling. After the lecturer moved, it seemed the man said, You are good at lying too. Huh? How much do you have, huh? I'm really looking for recognition from everyone, but on the other hand, I'm also afraid of sinking like at that time, but that's where I started to like to gamble and lost everything at that time. I thought, damn, it's money that I took from my father's account. If I can't return it, I'll be in big trouble. But at that time, that person approached me and I saw someone came closer and said, looks like you've been having a lot of problems lately. That person is a star among the stars. Yes, he is Choi Taesu. It looks like that guy lent me some money and stupid, I, I accept the money. I have to pay him five million won every month. I borrow money worth my living expenses for 10 years. But what drives me crazy is the person who lent me the money. Choi Taesu, he's the one who framed me. I know I'm stupid, I shouldn't gamble. But what frustrates me even more is I'm getting crazier when I remember how stupid and pathetic I am. Hearing all Choi Taesu, he stands up and says it's not your fault, it's the bastards that's the trash, and looks like this man cried after remembering all that and he seemed surprised to hear Jin Wu's words. After that, Jin Wu said, Just wait a bit. We'll take care of it. But after the scene moved, you saw a man who broke open the play zone door and said, Nexus, let's play again. Then the scene told that previously Jin Wu said to the man, Now go to the play zone with Park Hanjin and gamble there, hearing that the man looked surprised and thought Jin Wu was crazy. However, after Jin Wu told all his plans, the man was very surprised. I also didn't ask you to do something for free, said Jin Wu. Back to the present. He also put a lot of money in front of the play zone guard. This man then told the play zone guard to bring him his chips. You can see the play zone guard smiling while thinking of a stubborn person. Please sit down, sir. But after telling that earlier, this man who overheard Jin Wu's plan said, Wait a minute, I like your offer, but I don't understand why Judica has anything to do with destroying Nexus. We will take all of Nexus's money through gambling, said Jin Wu Sin. Then again saw the man who going to do some gambling in the plaza with the guard. But what I heard from you is that the way things work there, the dealer always wins. Which means the dealer has a trick heard all that before. Dare say shit. I should have known that. But if they all use a trick. Why did you tell me we will take advantage of the trick they used? Jin Wu said. Then you see this man who is all in all his chips in this gambling. You know not that gambling has one rule that everyone knows, and that rule is, if he is caught using his tricks. But suddenly there was a sound when the play zone guard was about to use his trick, heard the sound of this guard bleeding. Can you shut up? We are having a game here. Yes, if he gets caught, he will lose all his money. Here looks Park Hanjin who jumps towards the play guard. That zone and boom looks to be crushed kicking the head off the play zone guard, if you don't want to get involved in all this, but ain't. This is the only best way. All the games in, we'll kill. Even the play zone branch Shin, then show this play zone guard, who was hit hard by Park Hanjin, instantly, the man was lying right under Park Hanjin. And it was seen that it was true that this dealer used a trick that was currently discovered, because he was beaten by Park Hanjin, seeing that this man also said you know the rules. Right, if you playing with tricks, then others can take all the money. So now it's my money. But it looks like the guards showed up a lot, and they said, what are you doing trying to ruin other people's business? Here is the role of Park Hanjun, who will take care of them. You can see the guards or the play zone bodyguards advancing to attack Park Hanjun and the man simultaneously. But with extraordinary speed, one by one, they were beaten by Park Hanjun. If the casino refused to play and it was seen that Park Hanjun said start the game, that too will be taken care of by Park Hanjun. Then the dealer appeared to say, I will spin the ball, but suddenly hit his hand really hard. The impact caused a trick from the dealer to be caught again, who saw that pulled his hand away and said, play a trick again, huh? Seeing that, it looks brave too. Very panicked and said, please forgive me, but boom Tambak Park who beat him very hard, maybe a little cruel, but we are playing fair and honest, and besides, we weren't the ones doing those cheap tricks. Right after the sill told the main office of the play zone Nexus branch, one of the bodyguards was seen who was reporting to Choi Taisu. Hearing that said to the woman in front of him in a day or two, the 24th and 5th branches went bankrupt. You guys deserve to be praised. Now finally we can meet Miss Choi Seohyu, and we see Seohyun who is meeting Choi Taisu. 
I, I have my own way to win this game. After that, the woman who was beside Seo Hyun kept apologizing to Seo Hyun because she was forced to meet Seo Hyun. After that, Choi Taesu appeared, who said, I'm sorry for this inconvenience because already here I have things to talk about. I want to make you an offer. Hearing that Seo Hyun's gaze seemed to become sharp, leaked. Oh Jun Woo's plan to me and the money that he gave it to you, I'll give it three times as much. I'll tell you everything when I heard that. Choi Taesu looked very surprised. Choi Taesu, who heard all that, said with a laugh that he didn't expect that this would be easy. I really like your character, but if you intend to lie to me, you better not do it. If you take my money and lie to us, we'll surely kill you. This man was the left hand of the Nexus Playzone branch named Charles, and the right hand of the Nexus Playzone branch Rodriguez. But Seo Hyun, who heard that, said, Don't worry, I didn't lie to you. After the money and deal were received, Seo Hyun did a countdown from 10 to 1, and suddenly Park Han Joon attacked the main office of Nexus Playzone branch, hearing that all were shocked instantly without exception Taesu, who was very surprised. And sure enough, the Playzone guard was seen who was knocked over and made the door open. Seeing that, Choi Taesu immediately woke up with a very panicked face, and sure enough Park Han Joon appeared to attack this Playzone branch. Seeing that, Choi Taesu seemed quite surprised and saw that the guard was Park Hanjun, and behind Park Hajun, the previous man appeared who looked down and said, Nexus, let's start the game. Seeing Park Hanjun who was here, all the guards stood up to face Park Hanjun. Immediately they all advanced simultaneously, finish him off quickly, but Hanjun knocked them all out in one fell swoop, seeing that it was already Choi Taesu who was very surprised. Choi Taesu then thought what I was doing here, but one of the guards was seen blown away and about to hit Choi Taesu. Choi Taesu was thinking, what should I do to deal with this crazy monster? But suddenly Park Hanjin appeared, who was in front of Choi Taesu. It was impossible for this operation to succeed. And then Park Hanjun was seen beating Choi Taesu with a very hard punch. The punch knocked Choi Taesu far enough. After that, Choi Taesu called the two bodyguards left and right hand from the play zone. Hearing the call, the two guards said, even kill him if it's allowed. Just do as you please, said Choi Taesu. That made the two bodyguards smile. They both opened their clothes and said, okay then. Then it appeared that the two bodyguards were behind Park Hanjun. Seeing that Choi Taesu thought it was good, now I can run away. I have to go from here as fast as possible while he was busy, thought Choi Taesu with a very sweaty face. Choi Taesu always thought Charlie Rodriguez. They looked tough on the outside but it was just to scare the bastards in here. They were just muscle freaks from the start, and sure enough, it seemed, it was Park Hanjin who defeated them both in one fell swoop. Again, Choi Taesu was seen running while thinking, calm down, I can come this far, not because I'm good at making moves, but I'm good at using money and people's power, like I have been able to step on strong people all this time. But Park Hanjin, that bastard, can't be underestimated like that and you can see Choi Taesu who has left the play zone. The two bodyguards who have been battered after being taught by Park Hanjun, and then Seo Hyun looks stylish. So Choi Taesu had run away from this place. Park Hanjun just stared out with a very sharp gaze, but after that he returned to show Jun Wu who said Choi Taesu managed to run. He even ran like a mouse. Jun Wu then said, first of all you worked hard, and when the time comes I will give more information. So wait. He won't be long to hear all that Park Hanjunjut turned and said, Okay, I understand there will be people who very stubborn, but no matter what happens, I will definitely get rid of you, said Jin Wu. Even if you run like a mouse, how can you escape? Choi Taesu looked annoyed and was talking to someone wearing glasses who said, It's embarrassing, but it's a wise decision. Hearing that Choi Taesu said the truth against monsters won't be enough. Just like that, I have to use an easier way. Is everything done? Who do you think I am? Then it was shown Park Han Joon, who was being followed by a woman who was holding a knife. After that, when it was seen that the woman was attacking Park Han Joon, but of course she could be easily parried. Seeing this woman, Park Han Joon thought this sloppy was not like Nexus. And this woman was seen who said, Do you have eyes in the back of your head? But suddenly saw someone who was preparing to hit Park Han Joon with his stick from behind. The man immediately hit Han Joon saying, 50 million wonku. But Park Hanjun was seen parrying the attack using his hand. It turned out that the attack almost hit this woman. 
Fortunately, there was Park Hanjun's hand holding it. But after that, when Park Hanjun was seen stabbing the man's face using this iron baseball bat, the man immediately fell and fell from the impact. After that, Park Hanjun said to this woman, I need an explanation. You can see the woman showing Park Hanjun's photo on her cell phone. This woman then thanks, Sorry, but there is your bounty on the gambling site. The bounty on this gambling site must be the work of Choi Taesu. After that, I saw several more people coming. I found it. Park Hanjun. This is the time to change our lives. We will still get money if we even get hit by him, said the crowd of people who were chasing Park Hanjun, looking at those people. Park Hanjun thought most of them were just ordinary people. You can see Choi Taesu and Ko saying that even the experiment never ends, they are very active. Actually, I was worried that maybe it wouldn't be this crowded. It turns out that many people are crazy about money. But I'm now worrying about your bankruptcy because all your expenses are unnatural, says, among many things I've experienced. Do you know why I make money gamblers? Don't gamble because it will change you. To hear people who help you, if there is a leader of our company, just say, you give him two billion money. If he kills someone, what is he going to kill that guy? You got to look at that guy's face then, but losing money on gambling is different. Two billion for those bastards can make them not think about their lives. They've all lost their minds just for the sake of luxury, and I'm the one who listened to them. Again, Park Hanjin was seen who was quite surprised to see a boy who was also chasing him. Park Hanjin didn't beat the boy and instead avoided the boy's attack. If we can open the door, if like this... But suddenly a person appeared from the top of the car holding the knife, but without the village of Park. Han Jun had jumped at him using the temperature of the object stone, and Pum made the man get back into the car in garden unit. After that it was shown Jin Wu who called, Park Han Jun. Are you okay? I just heard your situation now. I will send someone he will come soon. But Park Han Jun who was fighting instead said to Jun Wu, No need than that look for Choi Taesu's location now also understood. After that, Park Hanjin turned off his cell phone and saw Jun Wu's expression changed, said to the person next to him, Manager, gather people. You can see the ongoing battle between Park Hanjun and the bounty hunters because there are too many of them. Park Hanjun didn't want to waste time and ran away from this place. Indeed, what does it matter? Who is he? We just need to finish him off, said the man who was chasing him. Catch him. He said someone who was slashing but could be avoided by Park Hanjun. After that, he saw Park Hanjun who was going to enter a room. Park Hanjun passed by someone who was silent, saw Park Hanjun after Park Hanjun through this man also called, and he said Park Hanjun came in after that immediately. The door to the room that Park Hanjun entered was closed. Then a voice sounded, Where are you going in a hurry? Stop running and playing with us. It turns out that there are so many thugs waiting for Park Hanjun's arrival at this place to see these thugs holding guns. Park Hanjun even thought whether he used ordinary people to lure me here. Huh? They must be Nexus. Immediately saw Park Hanjun's expression changed and prepared as he said, To think this is the first time I'm happy to see Nexus. You can see Park Hanjun beating them all one by one with his fists, then jumping, holding the lamp and kicking them one by one, after that jumping on one of the men and going to beat him, then the clan beats the man and makes him lie on the floor instantly, very quickly. Park Hanjin manages to paralyze, there are so many thugs, seeing that their comrades are quite panicked. Damn, who is he actually? He must not be human. Look, he can still stand straight and see Park Hanjin who will start to react, but suddenly Jin Wu calls back, I find Choi's location, Taesu. Hanjin heard that. Park Hanjun immediately got ready and said I will go there now, seeing Park Hanjun who was going to come forward. Suddenly these men were very scared. Bastard. I don't want to fight him. But apparently Park Hanjun just passed them. Of course he didn't want to fight the people who were already scared. But suddenly Park Hanjun glanced at something and he said it must be only a moment. It turns out that what Park Hanjun saw was the CCTV in front of him that was monitoring him. And sure enough, Choi Taesu and his partner were also monitoring Park Han Jun from the CCTV. Yes, that's really a very angry look. This is just the beginning, I believe, that ten more times you can take him down. This is the end of the legend of Park Han Jun. Then next. Why don't you get rid of Oh Jun Wu too? Power and money are proven to be more powerful than using muscles, right? Hearing that immediately. Choi Taesu smiled and he said, You are smart, you are. I will promote. All right then, let's start.
Let's see, immediately what appears on the screen is the face of Jin Wu. What is this when it's ready? It turns out that because of this, I like you said Choi Taesu, but suddenly Choi Taesu's colleague was quite panicked. Not me did this, didn't you do it? Then who, but suddenly a voice, I found you rat bastard. That was the laugh from Jin Wu. He took over all control of the server. Our computer completely shut down, but heard Jun Wu say, it's useless, your security sucks. We can hack everything you made a big mistake, asshole. I will repay everything you did to me. If you do dirty things, I will do the same thing Jin Wu said, and immediately appeared bounty from Choi Taisu, which was written 2 billion one. Back to Jun Wu, who said, Now we change positions to see the bounty that appeared instantly. Choi Taisu was quite panicked. Back to Park Hanjun, who was beating up the Krokos who tried to block him. What's going on? Our site was hacked bounty, it changed to Taisu. Instantly, everyone ran scared. Damn, Nexus is definitely over. Choi Taisu said, Damn it, how did all this happen? But suddenly heard someone breaking down Taisu's door. Come out, damn it. Did they also change their mind? Said Choi Taisu. Jin Wu took all the money. Yes, Hyung. After that, the two of them ran while saying, Let's go leave first from this place, but you can see Choi Taisu's subordinates chasing him instead. Choi Taisu here quickly chases him. After that, you see Choi Taesu who looks panicked while thinking, I have to get out of this place immediately. I'm finished if caught by them. I just need making sights again and making them my slaves again, then I can climb to the top. But suddenly it looks like someone who was kicked by something saw. It looked like Choi Taesu who was quite panicked and saw Jin Wu who hit Choi Taesu hard enough. But suddenly a sound was heard. Who called him? And it turned out that the one who called Choi Taesu was Park Hanjun, who was already in front of him. Why did you rush? said Park Hanjun. Knowing the award that was in front of him instantly, there was no heart from being a source of pounding very quickly after that Choi Taesu very frantically pointed at Park Hanjun. Wait, if you do this, your life will be ruined. I am the most popular Choi Taesu with just one phone call I can make you hated by everyone. But suddenly Hanjun was seen jumping and kicking Choi Taesu's face with anger. Choi Taesu was immediately knocked out and hit the wall quite hard, whatever. But first, first you need to be beaten up first. After that, Park Hanjun's punch smashed the wall. But it was seen that Choi Taesu, who managed to escape, was a crazy bastard screaming very loudly for help. However, he saw Park Hanjun, who was already behind him and pulled his hair after that, hit Choi Taesu to the, the floor hard. Wait a second, I can totally destroy your life, you know. I'll make sure you will have the most miserable life if you beat me. Your father will also feel it. You will beat people and everyone around you will suffer the consequences. But suddenly, Han Jun again kicks Choi Taisu in the face really hard. In this situation, Choi Taisu thinks, damn, this hurts so much. This bastard is not affected by my threat not being hurt at all. What about money? Wait how much you get from Jun Wu. I will give more, said Choi Taisu. But again, Park Han Jun beat him very hard again. Seeing that with a very sad expression, Choi Taisu said, I will pay you three times as much but again taught by Park Hanjun. Well, four times, however, Park Hanjun continued to beat Choi Taesu, who was lying on the floor. After that, with all his might, Taesu tried to run on all fours with a bruised expression. Taesu turned and said, Use your brain. Does the brain understand human language? Think again what can be lost from you? You are not an animal, but you can see the expression of Park Hanjun, which is very terrible. Sorry. What I meant earlier was actually, Please forgive me. This hurts really bad, said Choi Taesu. Choi Taesu then lay down in front of Park Hanjun. But suddenly Park Hanjun was seen who said, Damn, I still have to hit you again even though he will let me go. Whatever Hanjun's words are going to go. However, it turns out that Choi Taesu's previous subordinates were chasing Choi Taesu because of his bounty. I found him Choi Taesu. They were all fighting over each other. He was two billion one. How are you going to pay me? Shut up, you bastard. I heard that if I don't have to pay you anymore because you have a bounty on your website, all we need to give you now is all of our pain so far. What we're looking for right now is that two billion one. Hurry up and die. Even Choi Taesu can only accept the situation while people continue to beat him. Moving on to the website, you can see that the photo of the bounty has been completed, meaning that Choi Taesu is dead. After that, he moved to someone who said, Choi Taesu needs 14 weeks to recover. We have arrested all the SNS accounts he used and everyone who helped him. Thank you for your hard work. Jin Wu said, Because you are now, Kim Chian Su will definitely go crazy.
Meanwhile at the hospital, someone was seen visiting Choi Taesu, and it turned out that the one who visited him was Kim Chiansu. Kiansu then said, You're not pretending to be sleeping right, Kiansu. You're here. Thank you for visiting me. I'm fine. I did have a lot of injuries, but this is not so bad, Taesu said. By the way, what about my money? About that, I'm really sorry, it's my fault, but suddenly Kim Chiansu was seen holding Choi Taesu's hand very hard. It immediately made Choi Taisu feel excruciating pain. Why are you apologizing? You don't just give up, do you? You have to return my money, said Kim Chiansu. Then it was shown someone who was about to be discharged from the hospital, and he said, Thank you for your help. I can recover faster. This is my job, said this nurse. Don't fight anymore. Okay, live properly from now on. It turns out he is Kim Dong-hyun, who has finished his recovery period in hospital. The scene moves to see Kim Dong-hyun who is walking after being discharged from the hospital. But suddenly, on the way he sees a group of thugs who are torturing someone. Here you can see this person who has apologized. Since yesterday you also said that said the thug, the thugs immediately opened the man's mouth and were about to hammer him. Looks like you need to be disciplined, said the thugs here. It seemed Kim Dong-hyun who only saw the torture that the thugs did to the man. After that suddenly Kim Dong-hyun was seen seeing his very muscular legs. The man started to be tortured by the thugs with a hammer. If you move a lot, your whole upper jaw can be pulled out. But suddenly Kim Dong-hyun said to them, What are you guys doing? Saw Kim Dong-hyun immediately, this man came closer and said, Why is this bastard even warming up, hey red hair? Can't you listen to me? But suddenly the man was kicked very hard by Kim Dong-hyun. Seeing that the other colleagues immediately very surprised, Hey beat him, you bastard! After that you see Kim Dong-hyun, who said his flexibility is only 80%. Then you see the two guys' comrades who came forward simultaneously and are about to attack Kim Dong-hyun. We are Nexus, you bastard. But immediately Kim Dong-hyun kicks this guy is very fast. His speed is 70% seeing his partner who is very easy to beat immediately. They are quite panicked. What's with that bastard? But suddenly Kim Dong-hyun is seen who has been above him and is about to hit him. After that, a very hard kick makes the man. It immediately collapsed and it was shown that Kim Dong-hyun beat the three of them in just one attack. Kim Dong-hyun then said, It seems like it's still long. 240 kilograms doesn't seem enough. I need to lift more weights, said Kim Dong-hyun. Seeing Kim Dong-hyun who was leaving, instantly this thug will get up and say I don't know him because he cut his hair. Damn he is Kim Dong-hyun. So the rumor is true. Yes, said this thug, Park Han-jun and Kim Dong-hyun. The legendary duo has regrouped. Flashback to two years ago where Park Hanjun and Kim Dong-hyun were known as a very good duo. A legend was made during the war against Nexus even attracted all the attention of everyone in the whole country. Now Incheon is the beginning of legend. Their name at that time exploded once. There were them who are interested. There are those who are afraid and angry and even for someone it is a hope. A white-haired person was seen climbing the stairs while climbing the stairs. There was a fight going on. This man then reached the top of the building he was climbing, and it turned out that this man was Kim Cheon Su. Shown someone being met by Kim Cheon Su said, I'm waiting for a handsome face. Do you think the rumors are true that Park Hanjun has returned? Ask the man, Yes, that's true. Kim Cheon Su said this stood up and said the reason why you came here and looking for me means Park Hanjun was still moving now, and introduced that this man's name is Baek Munyong. After that, he said he needs someone to match him. I still can't believe this, Chiansu. Do you remember what happened two years ago? I can't remember, Kim Chiansu said. After that's Beck Munyong said what? Now you're going to use me to catch Park Hanjun and throw me away. But now Park Hanjun is back again. You're looking for me. You think I'm a coward now. Ha heard that said there are some things that can't be forced. This time you just do it right, and I will grant you whatever you want. Hearing that Beck Munyong laughed and said, whether it is even if I want to become the owner of the Nexus, Beck Munyong's words suddenly made the situation become quiet, but suddenly there was an intense aura radiating from Kim Chiansu. And Kim Chiansu said, Beck Munyong, don't joke, you can handle things like that. Hearing that, Beck Munyong said, You just play games every day, but apparently that look is still there, I'm kidding. Take it easy, you're not here to ask for help, but to give orders. If the boss gives an order, then I have to carry it out right. Just wait a moment, I'll definitely finish it this time. And when I'm done, you pay for the drinks, I understand. Hearing that Kim Chiansu also let Beck Munyong go to deal with Park Hanjun.
Moving at night in a building, here we see Baek Munyong sitting while thinking Kim Chion Su will come here. Does he think I can win against Park Hanjun? Huh? Of course it's impossible. There's no way that bastard believes me right. What did this devil want? Actually get rid of me and Park Hanjun at the same time. But it turns out that a man is torturing another man. What should I do? I have bad prejudice today. Seeing that Baek Munyong said, you still do it if you don't get money from him, just kill him. About that he said he will give the finance, but I have a bad feeling. And this man called Choi Ju Yong left hand of Baek Munyong. Ju Yong then said, I doubt this bastard will give money that easy. Even brought him here. I just thought I wasn't enough. But suddenly a voice said, Why do you care so much anyway, you son of a bitch? Hey, bastard, just kill it quickly. Don't want to do it, just give it to me. I'll kill whoever it is and this man named Lee Jung Yong Baek Mun Yong's right hand too. Jung Yong then said, What are you talking about with Kim Chi Su? Are we going to kill Park Han Jun? Do I call the kids now? Hearing that Baek Mun Yong stood up and said as usual, Park Han Jun, it's a bug. But I'm quite happy to see his face after this. But he's not the type to beat through numbers. So let's do it our way, starting from the farthest one first. Then it looks like Mun Yong who had killed this prisoner, hearing Baek Mun Yong's words. Both of his right hands smiled very scary after that. It was shown by Baek Mun Yong who thought, just wait a little longer, Kim Chion Suo. After I take care of Park Han Jun, it will be your turn, Kim Chion Su. Then it was shown Seo Hyun, who was making a story with cake, while saying Kim Dong Hyun during your discharge from the hospital. We hope to work with you better to the bone. Seeing that Jin Woo said, what are you doing? Can't you see I made an Insta story, not for you though, but for Dong Hyun's discharge from the hospital? Our next target has been decided. But it looks like Seo Hyun is actually saying, we should be on vacation and the bastards want us to work instead. Give us the right to hear what your goals are saying. Isn't revenge the best thing to do on the day? Holiday. But Seo Hyun instead said, the worst CEO this year, the company is not fair. We will go on strike, but Jin Woo said, I will cut your salary. Am I just relaxing? Boss, come to hear this conversation. Kim Dong Yun said to Park Han Jun, Park Han Jun, these people, can we believe them? Heard that Park Han Jun said we have the same enemy. Isn't this enough? After that, it was seen Jun Woo who said the point is I will still cut your salary if but the one who received the call. Hello. But suddenly his expression changed. Was Inchin attacked? On the other hand, at the hospital, someone was seen who was injured and accompanied by a colleague. And it turned out that the injured person was a colleague of Nam Insu, the leader of the Inchin gang. But suddenly Jun Wu was seen who came and said to Nam Insu, What happened to see Jin Wu said? Why did you come here? There is nothing for you to worry about here. I will take care of it myself. After that Nam Inso left, but Park Han Jun and the others were silent. But suddenly a voice from Nam Insu's colleague said, Park Han Jun help you. I heard that Jin Wu said, What's up pig you pretended to sleep? It turns out sorry I know this is selfish but I don't want Nam Insu to fight anymore. Even though I told him not to go, I'm sure he will definitely go and looking for that person, hearing that Jin Wu said, of course I understand. Then this must be Nexus, right? Who this time? But suddenly Kim Dong Hyun said it must be the work of Baek Moon Yong. I can recognize his work, said Kim Dong Hyun by looking at the wound on the leg of Nam In Su's partner, because the one who crushed my knee was Baek Moon Yong. Somewhere seen Kim Chion Su who was having a meeting with someone and he said, thank you for coming. Thank you for your hard work, CEO. Everything went smoothly. That way we can start our plan starting next week. There will be lots of children. High schools from all over the country are playing our game. And because your company's two games ranked first and second, 15 million. One our profit became 80 million won. Hearing that immediately this CEO was shocked. Is it perhaps very important that we have such a thing as trust? All right, if so, Mr. Kim Chian Su. In one place you can see Kim Chion Su who said games are quite interesting. We've sent them all over the country so there won't be any more problems. Yes, that's your specialty, so I'll leave this to you. Then enough talking about money I heard about Park Han Jun. Are you going to use Baek Moon Young? And this guy's name is Kim Lion too. Kim Lion then said, if you use that bastard, it means there will be a lot of dirty work going on. What if playing this dirty we are in the jungle? Now hyena will only eat rotten meat. But even if hyena eat rotten meat, it won't change the food chain, heard Kim Chion Su said. So let's just enjoy the show, right? Hearing that, Kim Leon said that a lion would never care about dirty hyenas. Then I saw Kim Dong Hyun who was practicing really hard. Seeing that, Seo Hyun said, 
You're even sweating. Hey, let's make a video together. Hearing that Kim Dong-hyun immediately refused, no, I heard that Baek Moon-yong has returned to America. Not many know about him. So I need your help, Seo Hyun said. Tell me about him hearing that Kim Dong-hyun just kept quiet, then went back to lifting weights. But suddenly Kim Dong-hyun said, he is a genius among all the people I have ever met. In my entire life, there are only three people I can call a genius in a fight that must have been Park Hanjun, Kim Chian Su, and trash human Baek Moon-yong, two years ago when Park Hanjun and I still controlled the entire territory. No one else dared to try to occupy our area, not even Nexus. But after a few months, it was seen that comrades from Kim Dong-hyun, who said, Dong-hyun, did you hear the news that there was a new student he was from America? and beat up all the third graders on his first day, hearing that he said on the first day, wasn't he from Kang Moon Baek Moon Young High School coming to our area? And since then, things have changed completely. Baek Moon Young controls all the schools in our area. He makes the schools fight to determine the ranking system. Then he will torture the school with the lowest rank. He does it for no reason. Again, seeing someone who entered the classroom from Kim Dong Hyun, seeing that Kim Dong Hyun was quite surprised. What happened to you, Dong Hyun? That bastard, don't underestimate him. Immediately, Kim Dong's colleague was lying in front of him, but on the back of his colleague's shirt, it was written, Kim Dong Hyun was at the park at 8 p.m., seeing that immediately the expression of Kim Dong Hyun turned very angry. Kim Dong Hyun and one of his colleagues were seen waiting for the arrival of Baek Moon Young, because the clock was already past 8 p.m. His colleague said, Dong Hyun, let's just go. The coward doesn't seem to be coming. Let's just wait. Suddenly saw someone lying on the back of Kim Hyun, on the clothes of this man. It says Baek Moon Young is cunning. I can't find him. And he always beat up people in my school secretly. Slowly, he started to reduce the amount of strength as if we, in a situation, suddenly there was a sound that eight people had been defeated. Was Kim Dong Hyun actually scared because it could never catch him? And when I was at his limit here, I saw Kim Dong Hyun, who was very angry. He appeared in front of me, and I saw Kim Dong Hyun, who has entered the base of Baek Moon Young, and that's when my destiny with him started. Fate finally brought them together, the day of the fight between Kim Dong Hyun and Baek Moon Young, on an empty land in a multi story building complex that is still under construction. The two groups met, the group led by Kim Dong Hyun against the group led by Baek Moon Young. In this meeting, there will be a one-on-one -on -one duel between Kim Dong Hyun and Baek Moon Young. Baek Moon Young, who came as a challenger, started provoking Kim Dong Hyun. Are you the strongest person in that school? You better cheer me up, understand? said Baek Moon Young. Without saying much, Kim Dong Hyun immediately attacked Baek Moon Young. Kim Dong Hyun's attacking movements were very fast, and Kim Dong Hyun's attack hit Baek Moon Young's face. Baek Moon Young received a kick in the face and again said provocative words to Kim dong Hyun. With a face full of anger, Kim dong Hyun cursed Baek Moon Young. If you want to kill him, come directly to him, and why are you beating up other people? said Kim dong Hyun. Kim dong Hyun started attacking Baek Moon Young again with fists and kicks, but Kim dong Hyun's attacks were ineffective because Baek Moon Young managed to avoid all of Kim dong Hyun's attacks. Kim dong Hyun Young saw Baek Moon Young successfully dodge his attack, becoming increasingly emotional. He launched a very hard kick to attack Baek Moon Young. Baek Moon Young managed to avoid the kick. Kim Dong Hyun's kick was so hard that even the concrete pillar broke due to Kim Dong Hyun's kick. Baek Moon Young, who managed to avoid a hard kick from Kim Dong Hyun, smiled. Baek Moon Young said that he beat up the people around Kim Dong Hyun because it made the fight between the two of them more interesting and gave Kim Dong Hyun a reason to fight. Baek Moon Young's left fist shot straight into Kim Dong Hyun's stomach, and Kim Dong Hyun didn't have time to avoid it. Three of Kim Dong Hyun's ribs were cracked due to receiving a punch from Baek Moon Young. Kim Dong Hyun groaned in pain and vomited blood from his mouth as a result of receiving an attack from Baek Moon Young. Kim Dong Hyun's body was thrown back quite a distance, but Kim Dong Hyun managed to immediately jump and take a position to attack. Kim Dong Hyun immediately counterattacked Baek Moon Young by launching a right foot kick towards Baek Moon Young's face while shouting, Eat this bastard! But Kim Dong Hyun's kick was still able to avoid it. Baek Moon Young immediately attacked back. Baek Moon Young's right fist hit Kim Dong Hyun's chin, 
Dong Haiyan received a jab from Baek Moon Young. Kim Dong Haiyan, who remembered past events when he fought with Baek Moon Young, and said that if Park Han Jun was a wild animal, then Baek Moon Young was the most venomous animal in the world, namely the King Cobra. The poison of anger that Baek Moon Young spreads in each of his fists makes him poisoned with hatred and anger, and he started leading the fight. Kim Dong Hyun, who was holding back Baek Moon Young's continuous attacks, felt that if he continued like this, he would lose because he fainted and he had to stay awake. Kim Dong Hyun also managed to block Baek Moon Young's fist, and his left foot went straight to Baek Moon Young's face, but Baek Moon Young managed to avoid it. But this attack from Kim Dong Hyun was not just to kick Baek Moon Young, but rather to perform a locking technique. Baek Moon Young smiled because he saw the reaction of Kim Dong Hyun, who was still trying to attack him. Kim Dong Hyun couldn't block Baek Moon Young's left hand. Baek Moon Young attacked with his left elbow and hit Kim Dong Hyun's face very hard. Kim Dong Hyun groaned in pain. As a result of receiving an elbow attack from Baek Moon Young, Kim Dong Hyun's leg lock was released. But Kim Dong Hyun still had the determination to defeat Baek Moon Young. He pulled Baek Moon Young's hair and smashed his head against Baek Moon Young's nose. Baek Moon Young, who received a blow to his nose, became emotional and immediately kicked Kim Dong Hyun in the stomach, causing Dong Hyun's body to fly away. Baek Moon Young wiped the blood that came out of his mouth with an angry look. Kim Dong Hyun tried to get up and stand up, and he said that he underestimated Baek Moon Young too much. Thank you. Now I can start getting serious. Kim Dong Hyun was still holding his waist, which was in pain because three ribs were fractured. You're also interesting, said Baek Moon Young with a faint smile. In that case, it seems I also need to be serious, said Baek Moon Young with a straight body and a very serious face. The real fight between Kim Dong Hyun and Baek Moon Young begins. They attacked each other, and they both suffered injuries to their bodies. Their stamina was running out, and the wounds on their bodies made them both collapse. Someone from their group said with some surprise, Double KO! Hearing those words, Kim Dong Hyun started trying to get up, as did Baek Moon Young. The result was that they drew because they couldn't continue their fight. Everyone was shocked when someone who reported the police came and said someone must have reported them. The two members of the group immediately ran away. Kim Dong Hyun was still standing at the fighting location, as was Baek Moon Young. I thought it would be easy, but he's not an ordinary person. Kim Gong Yeon thought Baek Moon Young. We'll postpone our fight, said Baek Moon Young, as he took his jacket and left Kim Dong Hyun. Baek Moon Yun said in another meeting, he would be more serious and would finish him off. Their fight ended evenly and without a winner. The next day, Kim Dong Hyun was walking with Park Han Jun. Park Han Jun said he heard rumors of Kim Dong Hyun's fight with Byok Moon Young. Do you want me to take care of it? said Park Han Jun to Kim Dong Hyun. Kim Dong Hyun also said that Baek Moon Young intends to control our entire territory, and sooner or later he will attack Park Han Jun. If that happens, Kim Dong Hyun asked Park Han Jun to avoid the fight because it would be him who would kill Baek Moon Young. A serious face appeared when he said that to Park Han Jun. Meanwhile, Baek Moon Young and his friend sat on a large bridge under which a small river flowed with clear water. They discussed Baek Moon Young's battle with Kim Dong Hyun. Based on the information they got, Kim Dong Hyun was weaker than Park Han Jun, so they attacked starting with Kim Dong Hyun but it turned out to be too difficult to win. Baek Moon Young, who heard the words, held Park Han Jun's hand in an emotional tone and said, So what? They had to keep doing it. Baek Moon Young also ordered his colleague to look for a hundred strong bastards from all the schools they controlled. Even two monsters won't be able to fight a hundred people, said Baek Moon Young with a face full of anger. Sunny Day in Busan, Kim Cheon Su, who sat at the same dining table as Lee Mun Gil. Le Mun Gil was very excited to eat his food, while Kim Cheon Su just smiled and watched Lee Mun Gil eat. Lee Mun Gil also asked Kim Cheon Su not to eat his food. Kim Cheon Su refused and smiled. Lee Mun Gil said that if the food is really delicious, you will regret it later. Lee Mun Gil saw Kim Cheon Su not eating his food, so he asked him to eat. Just eat, please, said Kim Cheon Su. Lee Mun Gil said he wanted to tell something interesting information he heard. 
Lee Moon Gil informed that Beck Moon Young was now targeting Park Han Joon, and now everything was a mess. If he takes Busan too, then this will truly be a national defeat. Kim Chian Su closed his eyes and thought about Park Han Joon, and thought that Park Han Joon was really a mess maker. Lee Moon Gil also said that Baek Moon Young was as strong as Kim Dong Yeon. He also proposed to Kim Chian Su to use Baek Moon Young to get rid of the monsters. Kim Chian Su, who had been listening to everything Lee Moon Gil said, closed his eyes, then opened his eyes and asked Lee Moon Gil to stop eating and immediately get up from his seat. Moon Gil Lee also asked why. Kim Chian Su, who was standing next to the dining table, said he would take care of Park Han Joon more. Before he finished continuing his words, Kim Chian Su saw that outside the restaurant where they were eating, many people had gathered who had surrounded the place and were preparing to attack. Aren't we going to be busy today? said Kim Chian Su. Those bastards probably eat gookbob, said the man outside. The man shouted for everyone to hear him. Beat them up, he said. The people who were preparing to attack started throwing the objects they were holding towards the inside of the restaurant and caused the restaurant's windows to shatter and scatter everywhere. Some of the glass shards got into Lee Moon Gil's food bowl, which he had not finished eating. Moon Gil Lee was very angry to see his food being ruined by those people. Lee Moon Gil's subordinates were also ready to counterattack. Lee Moon Gil also told all his subordinates to keep the people quiet because he still wanted to eat. The clash between the two groups finally broke out. Kim Chian Su, who had been standing and silent, finally moved to attack the leader of the group who attacked them. The leader of the attack group tried to punch Kim Chian Su in the face, but what happened was that Kim Chian Su first punched the leader of the attack group in the stomach. The man vomited blood from his mouth and groaned in pain as a result of receiving a punch from Kim Chian Su in his stomach and his body being blown away. Park Han Jun and Beck Moon Young, said Kim Chian Su. I guess he really needs to get rid of the two of them, thought Kim Chian Su. Day turned to evening and in a meeting hall at school. Beck Moon Young has gathered all his members and they are preparing to attack Park Han Jun. Hearing that they were going to attack Park Han Jun, some said that Park Han Joon was a monster. No matter what they did, they definitely couldn't beat him. Park Han Joon, who even Nexus can't beat. They thought they couldn't possibly beat him. Hearing the members talking to themselves and talking about Park Han Joon with angry faces told them to be quiet. All members of Baek Moon Young's group are all members of Baek Moon Young's group. I am Baek Moon Young. You all know that's what Baek Moon Young said. Baek Moon Young explained that the reason he gathered them was because they would defeat Park Han Joon. They were shocked by Baek Moon Young's words and felt worried because they had to fight Park Han Joon. I know you're all afraid of him and that's really disturbing, said Baek Moon Young. Are you all stupid? shouted Baek Moon Young. Baek Moon Young told them how bad it was to live in fear like that. Being afraid of someone is the same as being their slave, pathetic. It's all because of one person named Park Han Joon. Now you can't even lift your head. Do you realize that? If you think it's ridiculous, then go along with it, said Beck Moon Young. Park Han Joon and Kim Dong Hyun are also both humans. How well they fight, shouted Beck Moon Young. One hundred of you, even stronger than himself, shouted Beck Moon Young, continuing his explanation enthusiastically. All members stood with their faces focused on listening to Beck Moon Young's instructions. Baek Moon Young explains that today they will defeat Park Han Joon today, and then you can live freely after that. And one more thing. Baek Moon Young continued his explanation. If they were all afraid to fight Park Han Joon and Nexus, the strongest organization in the entire country, also failed to beat Park Han Joon today, he will definitely surpass Nexus and be at the top. Together with you, so all of you now who are with me today, we will make new history. Those who heard Baek Moon Young's words became excited. You guys come along said Beck Moon Young. They were full of enthusiasm and the building roared with their voices. Let's kill that bastard, they shouted. Today that bastard will die, shouted another. Suddenly they were surprised. Someone came. A man breaks down a door and drags someone away. That man is Park Han Joon. He came alone. One hundred people, you think that's enough to beat him? Said Park Han Joon. The look on Park Han Joon's face was scary. 
Park Han Jun took off his jacket and stepped closer to them. Group member Bayok Moon Young, with a serious expression, prepared to attack Park Han Jun. Park Han Jun continued to walk forward towards Baek Moon Young, standing by passing through the crowd of them without fear. The members of the Baek Moon Young group gave way to Park Han Jun. Park Han Jun threw Park Han Jun's jacket beside him and continued walking. Baek Moon Young just stood still and watched Park Han Jun walk towards him. Baek Moon Young's face looked serious when Park Han Jun was standing in front of him. Park Han Jun asked if the person standing in front of him was Baek Moon Young. Baek Moon Young confirmed Park Han Jun's words and expressed his gratitude because Park Han Jun had come and he had heard a lot about him. Park Han Jun told Baek Moon Young to stop all his nonsense and start immediately because he would show him the meaning of defeat with a face full of enthusiasm and confidence while raising his hand and squeezing his fingers. With a relaxed attitude while wearing his black gloves, Beck Moon Young said it was his honor, but he hated people like him. From behind Park Han Jun, Baek Moon Young's subordinates immediately attacked Park Han Jun. They attacked with full confidence and said that Park Han Jun was very stupid for coming alone. Something hit Park Han Jun in the back. It's broken glass. Park Han Jun was shocked after learning about the object that hit his back. From the front, the attack came. Park Han Jun, who realized this, tried to block the attack with both hands. Park Han Jun's body was pushed back as a result of withstanding the attack. You want advice from me? It's better to know not to hold back, said Baek Moon Young. Park Han Jun's left arm was injured as a result of resisting an attack from Baek Moon Young, and glass shards entered the skin of his left arm. Because of the broken glass that hit me through his fist, I'm bleeding, thought Park Han Jun. Ha! If you're already shocked, you better prepare again, said Beck Moon Young, smiling at Park Han Jun. Beck Moon Young's subordinates prepared to attack, and they attacked Park Han Jun simultaneously. Park Han Jun, who realized that the enemy was attacking together, immediately attacked back and punched each of them one by one. They are weak even with the broken glass, but the problem is that they keep coming. These bastards are used to drain his stamina, thought Park Han Jun. Park Han Jun attacked them without caring that his hands were full of blood and wounds from broken glass. This glass shard hurt his hand all at once, thought Park Han Jun. Park Han Jun received an attack from Baek Moon Young. Baek Moon Young's fist lodged in Park Han Jun's stomach, causing him to be knocked back, and from behind someone hit him on the head with a bat. The person who hit him smiled because he managed to hit Park Han Jun on the head. Suddenly, Park Han Jun immediately kicked the person who hit him with the bat, and the person immediately bounced with great force. Park Han Jun also tore the t-shirt he was wearing. He tied the shirt around his arm. You coward, shouted Park Han Jun. With enthusiasm and joy, Baek Moon Young ordered his subordinates to immediately attack Park Han Jun. This unfavorable fight for Park Han Jun ended up taking a long time, but this incident created the legend of Park Han Jun, who defeated Baek Moon Young with a hundred of his men alone. Baek Moon Young, who was covered in wounds on his body and face, tried to punch Park Han Jun with his left hand, but Park Han Jun's hand was faster, so Park Han Jun's attack hit Baek Moon Young in the face. This is impossible. He fought against many of the strongest men in America. Even though my opponent had a big weight difference, he was never cornered, thought Baek Moon Young. Even though when I fought the strongest man in America, it ended up being an absolute win for him. But what about this bastard? How can he be this strong, thought Baek Moon Young. Park Han Jun's fists repeatedly hit Baek Moon Young's face. Without mercy, Park Han Jun continued to hit Baek Moon Young in the face with his fist. Baek Moon Young fell forward, and Park Han Jun immediately continued his attack by stepping on Baek Moon Young's head until his face hit the floor very hard. Park Han Jun kept stomping on Baek Moon Young's head without any pity until Baek Moon Young didn't move anymore. Park Han Jun stopped his attacks while once on Baek Moon Young's head and called Baek Moon Young's name and threatened not to mess up again from now on or you will spend the rest of your life looking at the ground. Remember what I said? or you will die, said Park Han Jun. Baek Moon Young, who was still conscious and staring at the ground, heard what Park Han Yoon said, felt himself insulted by Park Han Yoon's treatment, shouted very loudly. Day turned to night, and lights decorated the city. 
Bake Moon Young sat back under the bridge with a beautiful river in front of him. Bake Moon Young covered his face with his right hand, thinking about why he lost to Park Han Jun. Damn, where's my fault? One crazy person against a hundred people? And he still can't be defeated? No, what is that guy? Park Han Jun is a big wall that he can't get over, Beck Moon Young thought. Baek Moon Young sat sluggish when thinking about Park Han Jun. Baek Moon Young felt someone coming towards him. It turned out that it was his colleague who came. Why do you look sad? If anyone is sad, it's definitely not you, said his friend. Because you are a person who does anything to win, said someone who had just arrived wearing a white t-shirt. You are right, said Baek Moon Young. There was also someone who suddenly stood beside Baek Moon Young. The man in white was Park Moon Yong with a face full of battle wounds. I'm sorry, I was being such a coward just now, said Baek Moon Yun. After that fight, Baek Moon Yong disappeared for some time. But his disappearance does not mean that Park Han Jun after the fight also disappeared. Park Han Jun won one against a hundred people. People watched the video of the battle. They thought Baek Moon Yong and Park Han Jun's war was really crazy. One hundred people against one person. It was a complete surprise to them. Their fight greatly shocked everyone and rumors started circulating like wildfire. In the video circulating, the caption on the video says there is something very interesting. A person named Beck Moon Yong, a transfer student from America, gathered a hundred people from the school he controlled to fight against Park Han Jun. They broke the glass on the ground so they could kill Park Han Jun. Everyone at school is worried that Park Han Jun will lose against him. But Park Han Jun slaughtered them all. The high school students talked about it and watched the video of the fight. They also said that Park Han Jun is now the strongest in Korea. But there is still a nexus. Park Han Jun can't do anything to get rid of the nexus, right? Someone said to his friend. It was Nexus who was too afraid to touch Park Han Jun. Kim Chian Su sat silently on the sofa. He was still confused about his decision. The position of Nexus that other people fear so much is starting to be threatened. So Nexus is starting to try to take over our territory. Park Han Jun was seen with Kim Dong Hyun. Kim Dong Hyun is chatting with Park Han Jun while smoking. A group of people came closer to Park Han Jun and Kim Dong Hyun. A man from the group asked if the person he met was Park Han Jun. Park Han Jun beat them mercilessly. Park Han Jun exceeded their expectations. He was stronger than any bastard. Starting from Incheon, the Incheon gang leader knelt down to Park Han Jun. Next, Jonggi Do Gang Wan. He also beat everyone who is known to be a strong fighter in Korea. Those who updated watching Park Han Jun's fight videos said they were starting to like Park Han Jun. The Nexus will really be finished this time, they said. Meanwhile, at Nexus headquarters in a magnificent skyscraper, Kim Cheon Su, who was with Lee Moon Gil, was in his room while looking at the beauty of the sunset slowly setting. Lee might suggest Kim Chian Su to use his money this time. Kim Chian Su rejected it because he thought it would not be effective for their national conquest plans. He doesn't want Nexus to be remembered as an ordinary high school bully gang. They will do it in a better way, namely fear, and make Park Han Jun lose completely in this war. So is it my turn now? said Mun Gil Lee with a face full of enthusiasm and horror. No said Kim Chian Su. He will do it himself. Hearing that, Lee was shocked and shouted Kim Chian Su's name. Calm down, Chian Su, said the man who had just arrived. He is Lion Kim. You want to fight him directly, meaning you are risking all your nexus in your fight, and that is too risky, said Lion Kim. Kim Chian Su felt that Lion didn't believe in his abilities. If I don't believe it, why would I follow you, said Lion Kim. Lion Kim said that Kim Chian Su lost his patience. Because just to take over one area, you have to risk something this big. Lion Kim also reminded that they have a bigger target. As he said, we have to end this quickly, even if we have to play dirty, said Lion Kim. Kim Chian Su does not agree to playing dirty because it will change the contents of the Nexus one day. Lion Kim proposed using someone else, not from their group, to do it. Don't we already have someone suitable for this? A bastard who likes to do whatever he pleases, whether it's about fighting or something else, if this is a problem related to winning. That person definitely fits this perfectly. Nighttime in a densely populated residential area in Union combat. 
Where in this place fights between high school students often occur. This place is also a hiding place for someone who is always training to improve their abilities. This person's fist is capable of crushing a concrete wall. Kim Chion Su met this person and mocked him for thinking that just using his fists was enough to defeat Park Han Jun. The man who was practicing was Baek Moon Baek Moon was surprised to see Kim Chion Su come to see him. Kim Chion Su said he had a quicker and easier way to beat Park Han Jun with a faint smile on his face. So do you want to join me? said Kim Chion Su. Nexus, I heard rumors that you yourself are in trouble because of Park Han Jun, said Baek Moon Young. He himself failed, and it would be impossible if anyone could. Kim Chion Su fell silent and closed his eyes. Kim Chion Su explained that he had his own reasons. He's not here just to fight, and why can't we immediately talk about more important things? said Kim Chion Su. Baek Moon Young was surprised by Kim Chion Su's words. Park Han Jun, help me to get rid of it. If Baek Moon Young managed to help him get rid of Park Han Jun, he would give him that area. Baek Moon Young was silent when he heard Kim Chion Su's offer. Why do you seem to be ordering me now, even though you came here to ask for help from me? said Baek Moon Young with a slightly angry expression. If you mean that, you're not wrong, said Kim Chion Su. Let's see what Kim Chion Su from Nexus can do, said Baek Moon Young with a serious face and preparing to attack. Baek Moon Young ran towards Kim Chion Su, who was standing to attack him with his fists. Kim Chion Su smiled faintly, seeing Baek Moon Young advancing to attack him. Baek Moon Young threw a very strong left arm fist at Kim Chion Su's chest. Baek Moon Young was shocked and couldn't believe that Kim Chion Su could so easily catch his hand to block his fist attack. Don't you want to take revenge on Park Han Jun? said Kim Chion Su. Kim Chion Su explained that he already had a plan to defeat Park Han Jun. Kim Chion Su let go of his hand to let go of Baek Moon Young's hand and continued saying that there was no one more suitable than him. According to Kim Chion Su, if Baek Moon Young were to come along, he felt this would be easier to handle and asked him if he would listen to him first. Baek Moon Young remembered his defeat with Park Han Jun, where his head was stomped on the ground and threatened that he would continue to see the ground if he did not heed Park Han Jun's warning. But the feeling of resentment and shame at defeat was greater than the fear of Park Han Jun's warning. Baek Moon Yoon decided to listen to Kim Chion Su's plan. The right decision, this will definitely be fun, said Kim Chion Su with a smiling face. The rain fell very heavily. Kim Dong Hyun, who was wearing a black umbrella and wearing a gray sweater, felt he was being followed by someone. Arriving at a small alley, Kim Dong Hyun was confronted from the front and behind by a group of people in black suits, realizing he was surrounded by enemies. You crazy people, said Kim Dong Hyun, and he threw his umbrella and attacked the people who got in his way. At that time, Kim Dong Hyun thought that the Nexus still adhered to fighting with fists. He was caught off guard. Kim Dong Hyun attacked them with kicks and fists but he was caught off guard because an attack using wood hit him in the head. Kim dong Hyun immediately responded with his fists, but Kim dong Hyun was hit with a jab, but again Kim dong Hyun responded with a knee kick on his left leg that hit his opponent's chin. Suddenly from the side, someone pushed with his body and hit Kim dong Hyun's body, causing Kim dong Hyun to fly quite far. Kim dong Hyun was shocked when he realized that someone was going to attack him with a kick that went straight to his head. The kick hit him right in the head, causing blood to come out of his mouth. That hair, damn, I let my guard down, thought Kim Dong Hyun. The person who attacked Kim Dong Hyun was Baek Moon Young. Kim Dong Hyun lost and lay on the ground. Baek Moon Young took a photo and sent the photo to Park Han Jun and told him to come here quickly. Park Han Jun was shocked and angry when he saw the message from Baek Moon Young. In the meeting building, which is Baek Moon Young's headquarters, it was still raining heavily. Park Han Jun, who came regardless of the rainy weather, was seen at the entrance and entered the room where Baek Moon Young had tied and hung Kim Dong Hyun upside down. Kim Dong Hyun was tied up using an iron chain, and his mouth was covered with green duct tape. Baek Moon Young stared at Park Han Jun with hatred. The war two years ago, and my last battle began. I told you clearly not to interfere anymore, said Park Han Jun with a face full of anger.
Baek Moon Young heard that, a fear appeared on his face. Baek Moon Young carried an iron rod which he held in his hand and placed on his shoulder. I know, but there is no such thing in my life dictionary. Baek Moon Young shouted as he swung the iron rod he was holding to break Kim Dong Hyun's leg. Kim Dong Hyun screamed in pain from the attack. Park Han Joon was surprised by what Baek Moon Young did. Kim Dong Hyun groaned in pain because his leg bones were crushed as a result of receiving a blow with an iron rod by Baek Moon Young. After breaking Kim Dong Hyun's leg, Baek Moon Young ran towards Park Han Joon to attack him. Come here. I will poke your eyes out this time, said Park Han Joon. Baek Moon Young smiled broadly. Suddenly, someone put an iron chain around Park Han Joon's body without him realizing it. The chains were pulled and they circled around Park Han Joon's body to bind him with the chains. As planned, he had already been provoked, so he didn't notice the chain, said one of the NYSU team who was tasked with tying Park Han Joon with iron chains. Stop talking! Pull quickly, he will destroy the bond, said another. Others with iron rods started beating Park Han Joon, and Park Han Joon just blocked the iron rods' blows with both hands. Park Han Joon's face and body were seriously injured due to receiving a blow from an iron rod that was smashed into him. Park Han Joon felt very angry, and he grabbed the iron chain that tied them and pulled with all his might until the one that held and tied them to their bodies flew around and they flew away. You will die today, Park Han Joon, shouted Beck Moon Young. One of them attached the end of the chain that tied Park Han Joon to the hook on the iron pole. Park Han Joon, who realized this, was shocked. The chains that bind Park Han Joon's body are connected to iron poles on four sides, which prevent Park Han Joon from moving freely. I always hate friendship, loyalty, justice, and bastards who act strong, said Beck Moon Young. Park Han Joon tried to remove the chain that tied his body, but the chain was tied to the hook very tightly. Besides, if you win, it doesn't matter, said Baek Moon Young while laughing. Baek Moon Young swung his iron rod again to hit Kim Dong Hyun's leg. Kim Dong Hyun screamed in pain. Try now to save your friend with your strong attitude. Come here quickly, bastard, shouted Baek Moon Young. Park Han Joon tried to free himself from the chains that bound his body. Finish him, said Baek Moon Young. Baek Moon Young's subordinates also approached Park Han Joon to attack him. They all brought iron sticks to attack Park Han Joon. Even though Park Han Joon's body movements were limited due to the chains that bound him, Park Han Joon was still ready to fight with his fists, which hit all the enemies who attacked him. Park Han Joon kept trying to free himself from the chain by continuing to pull. Baek Moon Young's subordinate, who saw what Park Han Joon was doing, said that if Park Han Joon was a monster, he would destroy his chains. Park Han Joon took a stance to use his strength to destroy the chains that bound him. One chain is broken. They started to get scared because they saw Park Han Joon breaking the chain. The people who brought the gasoline conductor immediately rushed to pour gasoline on the floor of the room while frightened because Park Han Joon had managed to destroy one chain. Park Han Joon tried to destroy one more chain with all his might. Park Han Joon! shouted Beck Moon Young as he jumped and swung the crowbar in his hand to attack Park Han Joon. Just die, damn it! shouted Beck Moon Young. The crowbar hit Park Han Joon's head, so blood spurted out of Park Han Joon's head. Park Han Joon received a crowbar blow to his head. His body finally collapsed and was on his knees, but he tried to hold it with his hands. Ha! Finally, you kneel in front of me! I'm the winner now! shouted Beck Moon Young while laughing happily seeing him. I managed to beat Park Han Joon. You all saw it, right? I won against him. Beck Moon Young shouted and stepped on Park Han Joon's head with his foot until Park Han Joon's head hit the floor. Meanwhile, outside the building, the fire made by the Nexus members shouted at Beck Moon Young to hurry up because they didn't have much time left. The fire had grown and had enveloped the building. You told me to stop. Do you remember what this bastard said to me? He said I would be made to see the ground for the rest of my life, shouted Beck Moon Yoon, while holding a crowbar in his right hand, and his right foot stepped on Park Han Joon's head. Now you, you will continue to crawl, Park Han Joon, shouted Beck Moon Young. Beck Moon Young's colleagues who were still in the building and saw the fire surrounding them, panicked. Baek Moon Young's friend told the others to immediately leave the building because the fire was getting bigger. 
while Beck Moon Young's friend stopped Beck Moon Young from leaving the building immediately, and if he continued to attack Park Han Jun, Beck Moon Young could die because the fire had already burned down the building. Beck Moon Young asked to be let go. He wanted to continue attacking Park Han Jun. You see, now I'm the strongest in Korea, shouted Beck Moon Young. Yes, I know. Come on now, we have to get out of here, shouted his friend Beck Moon Young. You're nothing anymore, Park Han Jun, shouted Beck Moon Young. Park Han Jun is still lying helpless. It was all because of me from the start. If it wasn't for me, Park Han Jun wouldn't have faced trash like Beck Moon Young. Kim Dong Hyun thought blaming himself. Park Han Jun tried to get up to stand. Two years ago, it was all my fault. Kim Dong Hyun burst into tears when he saw Park Han Jun's condition. Sorry I'm late, Kim Dong Hyun, said Park Han Jun. The fire got bigger and started to consume all parts of the building. But Park Han Jun and Kim Dong Hyun managed to get out of the building and outside the building. The fire department and ambulance had arrived. A few days later, the police met him and Park Han Jun. At that time, he just knew that this had all been planned, to take revenge on students from other schools. Witnesses continued to give statements that we were the mastermind behind everything. Of course, the police weren't on our side either, and the conclusive evidence was that the burning building belonged to Kim Chian Su's family. They are demanding massive settlements through the affected law firms, and they continue to demand that from our parents. When everyone is tired because of that, it is difficult to punish them because they are still minors. The victim also does not want to prolong this problem because this also occurred as a result of student brawls. All I want is a public apology from the perpetrator, said Kim Chian Su. Park Han Jun, who had just finished showering and was drying his hair with a towel, heard his father calling someone to ask how he was, and there was a conversation between his father and someone on his father's phone. His father's friend asked if Park Han Jun's father was currently borrowing money here and there. His father's friend also said that he was the same because their company was having difficulties. I want to help, but I'm really sorry. Oh, it's okay. Why are you apologizing anyway? Park Han Jun, who heard his father's conversation, felt confused and sad when he heard it. You must be having trouble now because of your child, said his father's friend. Ah, no. Even if he doesn't want to do anything, I just... If like this, Han Juni won't fight, I have to do it. After all, this is what a father should do, answered Park Han Jun's father. Okay, I'll buy you a drink next time. I'll hang up first, said his father's friend, Park Han Jun. Park Han Jun's father ended the call. Park Han Jun's father opened the door and entered the house. While inside the house, he saw a white towel lying on the floor, and his father knew that it was Park Han Jun's towel. Park Han Jun's father also picked up the towel from the floor. Han Jun is probably fed up too, said his father, Park Han Jun. Park Han Jun walks on the sidewalk. Feeling annoyed, Park Han Jun punched a tree. Park Han Jun really felt angry with himself. We thought that nothing in this world could scare us. But it turns out that in front of money and power, there is nothing we can do. That's what our last fight was like, and it was a crushing defeat. And at that moment he realized, in this world, there are opponents who can never be defeated by strength alone. Park Han Jun was beaten badly by Kim Cheon Su without fighting back at all. Park Han Jun's face was battered and covered in wounds. Meanwhile, Kim Dong Hyun tried to get up from his hospital bed, but he couldn't because his legs hurt so much and he was so upset. Park Han Jun, who was being beaten by Kim Chian Su without responding. Kim Chian Su said whether Park Han Jun was not happy. But this is the reality. This is how the world works. This is the difference in our strengths. Never forget today, Park Han Jun. Never think again. You dare to rise once again, said Kim Chian Su. From the start, you were nobody. Live calmly like that for me and for your apology and resolution to the victim you already understand, said Kim Chian Su. Park Han Jun nodded his head. Park Han Jun's face was covered in blood and wounds. Kim Chian Su smiled and left, leaving Park Han Jun, who was helpless. Now let's see if you really repent, said Kim Chian Su. Kim Chian Su's subordinates, who were carrying bats, surrounded Park Han Jun and they started beating Park Han Jun together. That's what happened.
It happened two years ago, and that's all he knows about Baek Moon Young, said Kim Dong Hyun, who told Choi Seo Yan what happened two years ago. Because of that incident, when Park Han Joon came again at that time, the reason he rejected him was not because he didn't trust Park Han Joon, but he was afraid that he would burden Park Han Joon again. Kim Dong Hyun, who looked sad when he told everything to Choi Seo Yan, was surprised when Choi Seo Yan held his head and said, you had a lot of hard times, huh? Choi Seo Yan said that for now, Kim Dong Hyun doesn't need to worry anymore. They are here now. Choi Seo Yan said that they are also people with their own sad stories. Choi Seo Yan is still holding Kim Dong Hyun's head. Yes, said Kim Dong Hyun. It was already afternoon, in Chairman Oh Jun Woo's building. Oh Jun Woo, who watched the sunset sink while playing with his pen. Oh Jun Wu thought about his next strategy. Inchin was like a slave before. This game was all about money from the start. That's still not a habit of Nexus. But now without thinking, Beck Moon Young, said Oh Jun Wu. I think he also doesn't think Beck Moon Young will be able to beat us. What is he thinking? I think he's trying to buy time now, said Oh Jun Wu. Evening arrived. Park Han Jun was walking on the sidewalk on the side of the road. Suddenly there was the sound of car tires being driven fast. Park Han Joon was surprised. There were two medium-sized white and black cars that were driving fast and looked like they were trying to hit Park Han Joon. The white car was heading straight for Park Han Joon, and Park Han Joon avoided it by jumping to the right side, and Park Han Joon fell in the middle of the highway. Not far from Park Han Joon's position, a black car was already speeding and ready to hit Park Han Joon. Park Han Joon avoided it by rolling his body to the right of the road. Park Han Joon tried to stand up. The black car that was trying to hit Park Han Joon stopped. The car window rolled down. And from inside the car, a man's hand came out and threw a photo. Park Han Joon looked at the photo. And in the photo, it was Choi Seo Hyun who was talking. And Kim Dong Hyun at the gym. Baek Moon Young, thought Park Han Joon. At the Nexus headquarters building, Kim Chian Su asked Lee Moon Gil to help Baek Moon Young. And that kid, said Moon Gil Lee with a face of disdain towards Baek Moon Young. Kim Chen also said that Moon Gil Lee didn't need to fight. He just needed to provide people power for Baek Moon Young. Among the schools managed by Nexus, send some children to your school, use them, said Kim Chian Su. By showing a sad face, Lee Moon Gil said that he knew for himself. They were the best children in Nexus that he raised. Mungil Lee stood up from his seat and said that he couldn't allow them to be used as sticks for Baek Moon Young. Let me take care of Park Han Joon myself. Kim Chian Su, who was still sitting relaxed in a chair, said that he didn't not believe it, but we still had more important plans for the future. Nexus needs Lee Mun Gil to continue to take the next step. Now the time is bad, said Kim Chian Su. Lee Mun Gil remained standing in his position. The plans they had prepared for a long time were being shaken up a bit. Leave the problem of throwing trash to Beck, Moon Young said, Kim Chian Su. They should focus more on more important things. Moon Gil Lee was just silent listening to Kim Chian Su's words. I understand, said Moon Gil Lee. Thank you for understanding, Moon Gil Lee, said Kim Chian Su with a smiling face. Inside the gym building, Kim Dong Hyun was showering in the gym bathroom after he exercised. A handsome man wearing a jacket and hat came to the gym and saw Kim Dong Hyun, who was still showering in the bathroom. The man passed through the room where Kim Dong Hyun showered and headed for the locker where Kim Dong Hyun kept his things. The man tried to break the locker lock and managed to open it. In Kim Dong Hyun's locker, the man found Kim Dong Hyun's cell phone and he connected the flash disk to Kim Dong Hyun's cell phone, which contained files to hack pinned locations. Kim Dong Hyun finished showering and put on his clothes again, then walked out of the gym. While still in the gym parking area, suddenly a motorbike came from behind, and someone riding on the motorbike swung a bat at Kim Dong Hyun's head. Kim Dong Hyun, who realized the attack, managed to avoid it. Surprise attack, Kim Dong Hyun thought. And he was shocked from above. Someone threw a machine at him, and Kim Dong Hyun managed to avoid it again. Kim Dong Hyun also kicked the AC machine to aim it at the motorbike that attacked him, but the machine failed to hit the motorbike that attacked Kim Dong Hyun.
damn him even though he can still use it, shouted the Pira who attacked Kim dong Hyeon. The motorbike driver realized through his rearview mirror that there would be an attack on them. He immediately increased his speed and Kim dong Hyeon's kick attack failed to hit them. The man who was being shaken threw a piece of paper. Kim dong Hyeon took and looked at the paper. Kim dong Hyeon saw that the contents of the paper were a photo of Park Han Joon. Bake Moon Young, what are you planning this time? thought Kim dong Hyeon, and Kim dong Hyeon looked very annoyed. Baek Moon Young came to Lamun Gil's school with a lot of his subordinates. The school gate was opened. Moon Gil Lee went out of the gate, followed by his subordinates. Moon Gil Lee and Baek Moon Young also met. With a smiling face, Baek Moon Young smiled. Holding out his hand, Moon Gil Lee said he was happy to meet him and introduced himself. Baek Moon Young did not return the handshake with Moon Gil Lee and immediately stepped past Moon Gil Lee. Ah. You want to shake hands with me, said Baek Moon Young. Who are you? You just need to do what I tell you, said Baek Moon Young. You were killed by Park Han Joon, right? I don't have high expectations for you, because if I were there, I'm sure the result would be a slightly different. Hearing Baek Moon Young's words, Moon Gil Lee was very annoyed. Park Han Joon will be here soon. Prepare your heads, said Baek Moon Yoon in an arrogant manner. Kim Dong Hyeon who was still around the gym building, tried to call Park Han Joon. But Park Han Joon didn't get a call from Kim Dong Hyeon, and he felt worried because Park Han Joon didn't answer the phone. Park Han Joon, who saw Kim Dong Hyeon's photo, received a message from Kim Dong Hyeon's cell phone number. The message said Kim Dong Hyeon was caught again. Do you know what you should do? And there is a photo like Kim Dong Hyeon, who is tied up but his face cannot be seen clearly. This is where the message was sent, also the location point. Don't be too late, or this time you won't be able to use your legs anymore. Reading the message, Park Han Joon was very surprised. Then Park Han Joon ran very fast towards the location he received. Meanwhile, Kim Dong Hyeon received the same message, but at a different location than Park Han Joon. Kim Dong Hyeon went to the location given in the message, and he was directed to an abandoned school building, where he did not find anyone. Damn it, that was just a trick, Kim Dong Hyeon thought. Message from Park Han Joon. Photo of the person being held who looks like Park Han Joon, but his face cannot be seen clearly. Go to school XX or I will crush his head and legs this time, said the message Kim Dong Hyeon received. My cell phone also seems completely dead, thought Kim Dong Hyeon. If it continues like this, it will just be the same as what happened two years ago thought Kim Dong Hyeon with a very annoyed face. At night in Lee Mun Gil's school building. Kim Dong Hyeon has been sent far away, said Baek Moon Young, while lighting his cigarette. He's so easy, hey, said Baek Moon Yoon while laughing. Kim Cho and Su, what's so difficult about him? He even ordered his people but still failed, aren't you ashamed? said Baek Moon Yoon. Moon Gil Lee, who heard Baek Moon Yoon's ramblings, was very annoyed. He wanted to shut Baek Moon Young's mouth. Baek Moon Young's friend informed him. The front gate. Hearing that, Baek Moon Young immediately looked towards the front gate. Baek Moon Young bit his cigarette and put it out with his right hand. Then he said he was happy to see him like this. Welcome, said Baek Moon Young with a big smile. Park Han Joon saw Baek Moon Young's position on the top floor. Park Han Joon entered the school gate. Seeing that Park Han Joon had entered the school gate, Baek Moon Young called him and waved his hand as if he was mocking Park Han Joon. Come here quickly. Kim Dong Hyun is on the verge of death, you know, said Baek Moon Young while laughing. Park Han Joon also looked at Baek Moon Young with feelings full of hatred. In the schoolyard, dozens of people were waiting to arrest Park Han Joon. They also prepared to attack Park Han Joon. Suddenly someone asked to hold back the attack first. He said that he really admired Park Han Joon from the past. Fight with me first. I'm Go Hyun from Korean High School. Just finished mentioning the school he came from, Park Han Joon's fist was already lodged in his cheek. Forget the pleasantries, said Park Han Joon. Kill him, shouted Lee Mun Gil. The dozens of people who faced Park Han Joon in the schoolyard were all not Park Han Joon's opponents. They lost very easily. After defeating them, Park Han Joon began to enter the school building. That anger. Really use that Park Han Joon, ha ha ha, shouted Baek Moon Young. 
Beck Moon Young glanced at Lee Moon Gil's standing and said that he was the best person in Nexus. Was that just nonsense? Even Park Han Joon couldn't make them into warm up tools. Moon Gil Lee explained that those at the front were those he was still training. There weren't many opportunities to get strong. Being beaten by a monster like Park Han Joon was an invaluable experience, so he couldn't miss this. Then you don't need to worry either. Park Han Joon ran into the building, and in the second floor hallway, Park Han Joon saw two people wearing black judo belts. Park Han Joon also blocked them. Only two people, that's what you're thinking, said one of the two people. Even if you are Park Han Joon, you can't be arrogant here, said one of the judo people who will be Park Han Joon's opponent. They are both elite nexus. Move, I don't have time anymore, said Park Han Joon, and started attacking. Park Han Joon's fist aimed at the face of one of the elite nexus with long hair. This long-haired Nexus elite managed to avoid Park Han Joon's fist. Park Han Joon was surprised to see that he was able to avoid the blow. This long-haired elite Nexus managed to catch Park Han Joon's right arm, then slammed Park Han Joon's body. Your fists would indeed be useful in a normal fight, said the long-haired elite Nexus. Park Han Joon's body slammed hard onto the floor. Nexus Elite then lifted Park Han Joon by holding the collar of Park Han Joon's t-shirt, then threw Park Han Joon's body into the room's glass until the glass and window broke and fell out of place. Park Han Joon's body fell hard to the floor. Park Han Joon, who received an attack from the long-haired Elite Nexus, tried to get up. Indeed, the rumors have always been exaggerated. I don't know how you were before, but if it's like this and you still want to fight against the current Nexus... It's better to just throw away your intention, said the Nexus elite. You won't be able to win if you try to fight people like us, because the current Nexus is on a different level, said the long-haired Nexus elite. They were surprised to see that Park Han Joon had gotten up and was standing and preparing to attack them. With a still relaxed attitude, the long-haired Nexus elite said he didn't say he didn't want to fight him now. The short-haired elite Nexus attacked Park Han Joon, who came to attack. Short-haired Nexus managed to avoid Park Han Joon's fist and caught Park Han Joon's right hand, then locked Park Han Joon's right hand. The long-haired elite Nexus saw that the short-haired Nexus had succeeded in locking it, immediately attacked Park Han Joon too, and locked Park Han Joon's waist and neck from behind. Park Han Joon was surprised by what happened, because it was difficult for him to move his body. The key to Nexus branch managers is that they are elite Nexus fighters. Park Han Joon is still unable to move due to the locking technique on his neck and right hand. This Nexus elite also said that they couldn't possibly lose to someone without skill. It's been five seconds, just go to sleep, said the long-haired elite Nexus. Park Han Joon found it difficult to breathe due to the lock on his neck. Park Han Joon then acted by pushing his body to hit the wall. The elite Nexus also told him not to be stubborn. Park Han Joon wouldn't be able to let this go easily. Rear naked choke, a technique used by elite nexus with long hair. Back choke, bare hand choke. These three chokings have their own nicknames, namely lion killer. It is called a lion killer because this is the only technique that allows humans to kill lions with their bare hands. Park Han Joon's mouth was bleeding and he was having difficulty breathing. It's impossible to let this go, said the long haired nexus elite. Park Han Joon stood up and ran carrying the two of them and hitting their bodies against the wall. The Nexus elite with long hair was also injured. His face was injured due to being hit by Park Han Joon's head. Crazy. He slammed himself into the wall, thought the long-haired elite Nexus. Park Han Joon continued to hit his body against the wall. Lock him right, damn it, said the short-haired elite Nexus. Shut up. This is correct. Look at this guy's pupils are gone, said the long-haired Nexus elite. Park Han Joon slammed himself so that his and Nexus Elite's heads had long hair. The long-haired Nexus Elite suffered serious injuries. Damn it, you are a monster, he said. Nexus, who has short hair, used all his strength so that Park Han Joon's hands wouldn't be released from his locks. Give up, Park Han Joon, said the long-haired Elite Nexus. Park Han Joon repeated this again by slamming his body and hitting his head with great force. The long-haired elite Nexus's wounds got worse, and in the end he couldn't force Park Han Joon to lock again. This is impossible, thought the long-haired Nexus elite. 
Park Han Jun managed to remove the lock on his neck and the lock on his hand has not been released. Nexus Elite with short hair, very worried because Nexus Elite with long hair has been defeated. He also expended more energy so that the lock wouldn't come loose. Park Han Jun was ready to hit the Elite Nexus, which locked his right arm. The short-haired Elite Nexus had his head thrown on the floor by Park Han Jun and immediately fainted. Before the fight, Mun Gil Lee warned that they would not be able to win against Park Han Jun. One of the elites told Mun Gil Lee he was too quick to say that because he knew what kind of training they went through. Mun Gil Lee also explained that he knew they were very confident now. That also happened to me when I first met him, but it was still worth a try. You two also thought you wouldn't lose. You'll know that bastard is a monster. The long-haired Nexus elite accused Mun Gil Lee of not having confidence in their abilities and why he asked them to fight. Lee Mun Gil also explained that because they need to know, everyone will end up the same. We will definitely be defeated by Park Han Jun, but that doesn't mean we are weak, it's just that Park Han Jun is very strong. You have special abilities, use them well, and we will be able to defeat him slowly. Lee Mun Gil's face explained seriously and full of confidence. Lee Mun Gil directed that for this first fight, focus on draining Park Han Jun's stamina. Lock, press, choke or whatever, you two are good at that, right? And if Park Han Jun loses his stamina, then next he will go to our fastest fighter. Park Han Jun, who managed to defeat two judo players in the previous fight, climbed the stairs to get to the next upper level. Park Han Jun was already waiting for someone on the next floor. It is Nexus Elite 05 730296. Nexus Elite 05 730296 is the fastest fighter owned by Nexus. Nexus Elite 05 730296 asks Park Han Jun to come forward, face him. Park Han Jun looked at the Nexus Elite 05 730296. It was getting late. Choi Seo Hyun was carrying Kim Dong Hyun on his motorbike. No matter how fast we go, it will take at least an hour to get there, but before that, we have to meet someone, said Choi Seo Hyun. Kim Dong Hyun asked who they were meeting with. Kim Dong Hyun asked Choi Seo Hyun to be faster. Kim Dong Hyun was surprised when they arrived at the place where the person Choi Seo Hyun wanted to meet. They, said Kim Dong Hyun with a surprised facial expression. Those that Choi and Seo Hyun met were the Incheon gang. From the darkness, Nam In Su appears and says they are just in time. They have finished dealing with the person who hacked Kim Dong Hyun and Park Han Jun's cell phones. There were two people behind this hacker. Come on quickly, we have to go, said Nam In Su with a serious face. Choi Seo Hyun smiled sweetly. Nam In Su got on his sports motorbike and turned on the socket and they set off. There were eight motorbikes who departed from Gang Incheon. Wait a moment, Park Han Jun thought Kim Dong Hyun with an impatient face to arrive at Park Han Jun's location. Meanwhile, in the school building where Park Han Jun is fighting with Gang Nexus, Park Han Jun fights with Nexus Elite 05 730296. Park Han Jun attacked with his fists, but none of his fists hit the Nexus Elite 05 730296. Park Han Jun continues to attack non-stop to try to quickly finish the battle with Nexus Elite 05. 730296. Nexus Elite 05 730296 continues to avoid attacks from Park Han Jun with its speed. Park Han Jun launched so many attacks on the Nexus Elite 05 730296, but none of them could hit the Nexus Elite 05 730296. Nexus Elite 05 730296, who felt that none of Park Han Jun's attacks hit him, began to show his arrogance. Is this the person who is called the strongest in this country? You will never be able to beat me like this, says Nexus Elite 05, 730296. Lee Moon Gil told Nexus Elite 05, 730296 that there was another person who was as troublesome as Park Han Jun. His name was Kim Dong Hyun. Moon Gil Lee gave instructions to Nexus Elite 05, 730296. He must finish the fight quickly. In other words, your movements must be agile and deadly. All you need to do is just follow the flow. Don't let him get close to you. Park Han Jun is a reckless person. Try to buy as much time as you can. Are you telling me to fight like a rat? Said Nexus Elite 05. 730296. 
Lee Moon Gil explained, of course. But that's not because he doesn't believe in the abilities of Nexus Elite 05, 730296. But your opponent is Park Han Jun. Of course, if you think you can win against him, don't try to do anything strange. This is my order, said Lee Moon Gil. I was asked that way, but now this guy can't even dodge my fist at all, thought Nexus Elite 05, 730296. Park Han Jun also received repeated fists from Nexus Elite 05, 730296, and his face was injured and blood came out of Park Han Jun's mouth. Most martial arts have a pre-movement before attacking, but Nexus Elite 05, 730296's movements are different. He moves his fists first, followed by his waist and legs. Park Han Jun, who is used to pre-movement, was not aware of the attack from Nexus Elite 05, 730296, and in the end his fist always hit Park Han Jun. In other words, the Nexus Elite 05, 730296's punch will feel like a bullet. Park Han Jun was helpless to receive attacks from Nexus Elite 05, 730296, and when Park Han Jun attacked back, not a single fist could hit Nexus Elite 05, 730296. Park Han Jun continued to receive attacks from Nexus Elite 05, 730296 until he got the chance. There's a chance, thought Park Han Jun. Tch, what's so great about this bastard? Are those people's rumors not true? Said Nexus Elite 05, 730296 while kicking Park Han Jun's body. Park Han Jun endured the pain from receiving a kick in his stomach and responded to Nexus Elite 05, 730296's attack with a kick, but was unable to hit Nexus Elite 05, 730296. You're just a wild boar. I'm enough for someone like you, said Nexus Elite 05, 730296, while laughing happily because he felt like he was dominating the battle until he didn't realize he had been cornered against the wall, which limited his movement. Wall, think Nexus Elite 05, 730296. So, this is your plan. Push me to the wall to stop my movements, said Nexus Elite 05, 730296. While avoiding Park Han Jun's fist while bending his body, Nexus Elite 05, 730296 said that Park Han Jun really has a wild boar way of thinking. I can still attack even if there's no room for me, said Nexus Elite 05, 730296. Park Han Jun looked annoyed at the face of Nexus Elite 05, 730296, who was ready to attack Park Han Jun's stomach with a punch. You can withstand fists that are like bullets, then how about a cannon, said Nexus Elite 05. 730296 with a happy face and smiled broadly. Park Han Jun was shocked by the fist attack from Nexus Elite 05, 730296, and his body was thrown back quite a distance. Park Han Jun tried to hold it back and immediately moved forward again by throwing his fists so that the fighting distance between him and the Nexus Elite 05, 730296 remained close. Even after being hit like that, you're really stupid. If that's the case, you need to be beaten one more time, said Nexus Elite 05, 730296. A hard punch straight into Park Han Jun's stomach. Park Han Jun's body retreated backwards again as a result of receiving the punch in his stomach. This is the famous one inch pook, said Nexus Elite 05, 730296, with a smile on his face. Park Han Jun, who heard the chatter from Nexus Elite 05, 730296, smiled slightly and showed a serious face. Park Han Jun is back again to attack Nexus Elite 05, 730296. It's been hit twice and he can still move, thought Nexus Elite 05, 730296. Go ahead, asshole. Let's see how long you can hold this die here, Park Han Jun, shouted Nexus Elite 05, 730296. Nexus Elite 05, 730296 also punched Park Han Jun's body repeatedly, very quickly and strongly. Park Han Jun also blocked with his body the attack from Nexus Elite 05, 730296, until he had the opportunity to catch the hand of Nexus Elite 05, 730296. Nexus Elite 05, 
730296 was shocked and panicked when his right hand was caught by Park Han Jun. You talk a lot of shit, said Park Han Jun, then punched the Nexus Elite 05, 730296 in the face until it hit the wall. Someone reported to Bake Moon Young and Lee Moon Gil. Hearing the report, Moon Gil Lee thought, it was over quicker than I expected. They definitely didn't listen to him and started attacking as they pleased. That's natural, but if we can't hold him back anymore after this, he will definitely have a famous impact on the floor after this. With his current condition, if he were to fight on the third and fourth floors now, even Park Han Jun would have a hard time. Hyung Nim, someone shouted. With a panicked face, he announced that the third floor had been lost. Mun Gil Lee was very surprised to hear that, this fast, shouldn't the second floor drain his stamina? Wait a moment. If the second and third floors are already lost, don't tell me the fourth floor will also lose, thought Lee Mun Gil. The fourth floor has been lost, shouted someone reporting. Even though Park Han Jun won, why am I the happy one, said Beck Moon Young. Beck Moon Young also turned to Lee Mun Gil with a mocking face, saying, What's wrong with your arrogant face starting to change now? You're laughing now, said Moon Gil Lee, surprised by Beck Moon Young's behavior. Beck Moon Young said that did he not understand the situation they were in now. Lee Mun Gil looked very annoyed with what Beck Moon Young did, and he said that if this continues, then Park Han Jun will be here soon. However, Beck Moon Young did not respond to what Lee said. Beck Moon Young smiled when he heard that, and said and opposed and approached Lee Moon Gil. Then he asked what if that was going to happen. He then pressed his forehead against Lee Moon Gil's forehead and said that he should remember because from the start, it was all his plan. Then he brought the Nexus Elite 05, 730296, who were preparing to kill Park Han Jun. He said to Lee that he would kill Park Han Jun here, then told him to sit and watch their fight. Then someone among them announced that Park Han Jun had arrived on the floor where they were. Hearing this made Bick smile like he had hit the jackpot and was ready to destroy Park Han Jun. Now, Park Han Jun, who is filled with anger and revenge, is walking towards them. One of them was waiting behind Hyun, then ambushed him using a knife from behind. However, Park Han Jun managed to avoid the attack, and he beat the man very easily until his teeth fell out. The man seemed to be lying helpless, while now Park Han Jun was walking again towards the place where both Moon Young and Lee Moon Gil were. When he got there, several people were waiting, especially Beck Moon Young, who was waiting for him and prepared to kill him. Park Han Jun looks very angry and annoyed. The Nexus Elite 05 730296 are ready to attack Park Han Jun with several of their weapons. Then Bake Moon Young suddenly said that it had been quite a long time since they had met again between Park Han Jun and Bake Moon Young. Then Park Han Jun asked with a face full of hatred and anger and resentment. He asked where Kim Dong Yeon was. Bake Moon Young, who covered his face and looked very dismissive of Park Han Jun, said that Park Han Jun was an idiot. And Bake Moon Young said that Kim Dong Yeon wasn't there from the start. Park Han Jun really took the bait while laughing with a very scary facial distortion. Then he blasphemed Park Han Jun again by saying that Han Jun had the brains of a gorilla. Then suddenly a net was thrown at Park Han Jun from above until it caught him. Then, Bek Moon Young told them to beat him up now. They are now starting with Park Han Jun. They kicked towards and even hit Park Han Jun who was caught in the net they spread towards his body. However, Park Han Jun seems unable to hold it in and he is now very angry. Kim dong Yeon then said to ask Choi Seo-hyun to throw it forward. Now they are getting ready with the Nexus Elite 05-730296 who are waiting for them at the front, and then the Nexus Elite 05-730296 are starting to panic because they have already arrived there. Then, with Stoppy on his motorbike, Choi Seo-hyun threw Kim dong Yeon at them, who immediately attacked with his knees towards the faces of the Nexus Elite 05. 730296 then started to finish off the Nexus Elite 05. 730296 one by one, and when one of the Nexus Elite 05, 730296 attacked Kim dong Yeon, Na min Su hit the Nexus Elite 05. 730296 man in the face using his motorbike tire. 
Park Han Jun's appearance destroyed his face instantly where the motorbike tire even spun and produced smoke in the face of the Nexus Elite member. 05-730296 it. Then Nam In Su, who was on his motorbike, said to Kim Dong Yeon to leave immediately and they would take care of the rest there. Then, Kim Dong Yeon immediately left there to catch up with Park Han Jun on the roof. Meanwhile, above, Park Han Jun is being beaten by those trapped in the net. Where, when Beck Moon Young looked down, Gang Incheon was eliminating the Nexus Elite 05 730296 easily, and he said that they were all bastards while looking at Kim Dong Yeon, who was running towards where they were on the top floor, namely the rooftop. The Incheon gang, led by Nam In Su, started beating them one by one, wildly using their motorbikes. They all started beating the Nexus Elite 05, 730296 mercilessly, and even brought several weapons and electric batons to help Park Han Jun and Kim Dong Hyun. Then Nexus Elite 05, 730296 told them that the Incheon gang was a traitor. However, Nam In Su said that they were indeed enemies of the Nexus Elite 05, 730296, and beat them continuously. This made it easier for Dong Hyun to quickly reach where Park Han Jun was. As he continued running to get to the roof floor, one of the very large Nexus Elite 05 730296 with a wound on his face laughed and said that they were just a bunch of flies. Hearing that, Nam In Su and Kim Dong Hyun headed towards the big man, and Kim Dong Hyun immediately kicked him in the face until his teeth fell out and continued his action by destroying the other Nexus Elite. 05 730296, assisted by Nam In Su, who was carrying his big motorbike. Then, when Nam In Su was distracted, someone came right in front of her and hit him by kicking him in the face, but he managed to ward off the kick. It turned out to be Lee Mun Gil, and he said that he didn't think it would turn out like this, then said hello and said that he was happy to see Nam In Su. But suddenly, Kim Dong Yeon immediately attacked Lee Mun Gil so quickly and nimbly. And after repelling the attack from Kim Dong Yeon, Lee Mun Gil once said to Kim Dong Yeon that he had no problem with him, and told Kim Ding Yeon to go and save Park Han Jun, and said that they had no reason to fight. Hearing this made Kim Dong Yeon quite surprised how he could say something like that. It turned out that Lee Mun Gil came there only to catch the traitors who abandoned them, namely Nam In Su and the Incheon Gang. Nam In Su, who looked very angry, then took off his jacket and told Kim Dong Yeon to go and save Park Han Jun on the roof, then said that he would take care of them. Hearing this, Kim Dong Yeon got ready and left them. And now Nam In Su is faced with Lee Mun Gil, where Nam In Su prepares by taking off his two motorbike gloves one by one. Then Lee Mun Gil said that he had been holding back since Beck Moon Young came, and now he could make Nam In Su an outlet for his anger, and then told Nam In Su to come forward and attack him. Nam In Su is now preparing to destroy Lee Mun Gil. They started fighting where Nam In Su started punching Lee Mun Gil in the face, while Lee Mun Gil also attacked Nam In Su using his knee, but they avoided each other's attacks. Seeing what happened and the chaos below, Beck Moon Young was very shocked and couldn't believe that Nam In Soon and Gang Incheon dared to betray him. Then he said that even so, nothing would change while laughing and looking at the Nexus Elite 05, 730296, who were beating Park Hanju in their net trap. The Nexus Elite 05, 730296, continued to beat Park Hanju, who was in their net trap. Because he was annoyed at being betrayed by Incheon, Beck Moon Young then approached Park Han Jun and told the other Nexus elites that they should beat him properly. Then he took a baseball bat to beat Park Han Jun. However, when he prepared to beat him with the baseball bat in his hand, Park Han Jun managed to get out of the net trap and then attacked Beck Moon Young by punching him in the face until he bled and his teeth fell out instantly. Then Park Han Jun managed to beat Beck Moon Young but the Nexus Elite 05 730296 immediately caught him and detained him. Meanwhile, Baek Moon Young now looks very painful due to the attack from Park Han Jun, who punched him in the face, and then he said how Park Han Jun could be so brave to fight and beat him. Then, in anger, he cursed Park Han Jun with the basic word defective, 
then took out a screwdriver from his pocket and headed towards Park Han Jun to attack him while bleeding from his mouth after receiving a deadly fist attack from Park Han Jun, which even knocked out his teeth. However, when he quickly headed towards Park Han Jun to attack him using a screwdriver, Kim Dong Yeon now got there and kicked Baek Moon Yong in the face with a jump and made Baek Moon Yong bounce due to the attack. Park Han Jun was then shocked when he looked behind him. Kim Dong Yeon was there to help him. Then Kim Dong Yong said to Park Han Jun that he seemed to have trouble with people like this, and it seemed like Park Han Jun was starting to get old. Hearing this, Park Han Jun answered that he was just playing with them while waiting for Kim Dong Yeon to come and continued that he just wanted to end this now by starting to attack the Nexus Elite 05-7302961 by 1, assisted by Kim Dong Yeon. They attacked all the elites blindly, seeing the two of them beating up the Nexus Elite 05-730296 and even daring to fight Baek Moon Yong and making his face battered. Baek Moon Yong said that he would never forgive them. Then Baek Moon Yong took off his jacket and took the rope that was on the roof wall, then ran and took it towards Kim Dong Yeon. He started attacking Kim Dong Yeon until they both fell from the roof. It turned out that the rope he was using was to hold him up so he wouldn't fall down from the fourth floor while he pushed Kim Dong Yeon, who said that he would kill Kim Dong Yeon this way. Then, when Baek Moon Yong started to let go of Kim Dong Yeon, Kim Dong Yeon then hung on Baek Moon Yong's body, which was tied to a rope. Then Baek Moon Yong kept trying to knock Kim Dong Yeon down and said that he shouldn't have bothered him until now and kept kicking him in the face. However, Kim Dong Yeon continued to hold on until they were now hanging from the rope, and then both Moon Yong, who lost his balance, hit the wall, while Kim Dong Yeon, who was holding onto his feet, hit the window glass and broke it and went into the room. Now Moon Yong is hanging by a rope that ties her up and she can't go anywhere. Then when he looked up, suddenly the rope that tied him was pulled. It turned out it was Park Han Jun who pulled the rope back to the fourth floor. Then when he managed to pull him back to the roof, Park Han Jun with a very angry face said that now it was Baek Moon Yong's turn to die because he had defeated all the Nexus Elite 05 730296 on the roof. Moon Young continued to resist the pull and told him to stop. However, Park Han Jun couldn't let this happen, so he pulled forcefully until Beck Moon Young flew due to the very strong pull of Park Han Jun's rope. Then, when Beck Moon Young was drawn towards Park Han Jun, he was immediately hit with a hard fist towards Beck Moon Young's face until his nose was broken by the attack and he was thrown very far. When he fell and bounced, Park Han Jun immediately pulled him back and hit him again right on his left cheek so that his teeth fell out and blood came out of his nose. Like playing with a yo-yo, Baek Moon Young was thrown back by Park Han Jun's attack. Park Han Jun was pulled again to be attacked again using his fists a third time. But when he hit his face, Kim Dong Yeon suddenly came there. This made Baek Moon Young surprised how he was still alive. It turns out he didn't realize that Kim Dong Yeon survived after he hit the glass and entered and climbed to the fourth floor again. Kim Dong Yeon then approached them and said to Park Han Jun that he knew that Park Han Jun was angry. But what could he do? Adding that he had a lot of bad memories with that person. Then Park Han Jun left him and said that he would give him five minutes to finish off Baek Moon Yeong. Full of revenge and anger, Kim Dong Yeon approached Baek Moon Yong and told Park Han Jun that the five minutes given were enough for him to kill and finish off Baek Moon Yong. Now he was in front of Baek Moon Yong and said that they didn't have something to finish, and told him to stand up. Hearing Kim Dong Yeon's way of speaking, which seemed to underestimate him, Baek Moon Yong became emotional and angry and said that now Kim Dong Yeon had become arrogant. Then immediately, Baek Moon Yong launched his attack by punching from below but the attack was blocked by Kim dong Yeon. Don't stop there! Baek moon Yong continued to attack by heading continuously and said that how could Kim dong Hyun think that his life was a tragedy of the main character while continuing to head towards Kim dong Hyun, who continued to brush off his attacks. Baek moon Yong was emotional and very upset. Then he thought, how could Kim dong Hyun think that this fight was a place for revenge and think that Baek moon Yong was the villain? However, Kim dong Hyun continued to withstand the attack, 
Until finally, when Baek Moon-yong was very upset and out of control and lost his way, Kim Dong-yeon immediately attacked him from below and attacked him by punching him in the face until blood came out of Baek Moon-yong's mouth. It didn't stop there. When Baek Moon-yong was hit by a fist attack, Kim Dong-hyun immediately turned around and kicked him in the face with his foot, saying that he was fed up with hearing his chatter. Seeing his face, which was now very battered, Kim Dong-hyun said that Baek Moon-yong was just a coward. Then suddenly, Park Han Joon came and attacked Baek Moon-yong's face again, while Kim dong Hyun was dealing with him. Then Kim dong hyun hyun got angry and said to Park Han Joon, how could he do that even though the time wasn't finished for five minutes? Park Han Joon said that he couldn't stand the bastard anymore, then they said that this time they had to share to attack him. When Kim dong Yeon and Park Han Joon approached Baek Moon-yong to finish him off, Baek Moon-yong looked so scared that he stepped back and avoided them, then said to wait first and don't attack him. However, the two of them ignored this as they continued to beat Baek Moon-yong blindly and made him bounce until he fell far towards the wall on the roof. Park Han Joon, who looked very angry and out of control, kicked his lying face again until he was dragged away. Then suddenly Baek Moon-yong grabbed Kim dong Hyun's feet and knelt down to ask for forgiveness from them. Now his face is irregular and very battered by Park Han Joon and Kim dong Hyun with repeated attacks from the two of them. Baek Moon-yong then begged Kim dong Hyun and said that he would not fight him anymore and he would leave there now, then asked to forgive him just this once. Hearing this, the two of them seemed like they couldn't just let Baek Moon-yong go. Then Park Han Joon looked back and took a crowbar and gave it to Kim dong Hyun, then said that this person would not stop with words. Kim dong Hyun then took the crowbar and took it towards Baek Moon-yong. Baek Moon-yong looked very depressed and frustrated and kept asking for forgiveness from them and saying that he would regret it and he wouldn't do that again. However, Kim dong Hyun, who was filled with uncontrollable anger, and he directed his attack using the crowbar towards Baek Moon-yong. However, he survived. It turned out that the crowbar attack was only directed at his groin until it didn't hit him but destroyed the floor nearby. Then, with a look full of anger, Kim dong Hyun, who looked at Baek Moon-yong, who was battered and devastated on his face, said that he was very pathetic. Then Kim dong Hyun left him and said to Park Han Joon that he didn't want to be someone like Baek Moon-yong and ended the fight. But it didn't stop with Park Han Joon. He then attacked Baek Moon-yong, who was dying again by breaking his leg using his strong stomp. Baek Moon-yong screamed in pain because his leg was broken by Park Han Joon. Even Park Han Joon said that he hated to do this. Screams could be heard from below as Lee Moon Gil and Na Min Su fought against each other. And when they looked up, the sound came from Baek Moon-yong, who had been tied up by the two of them and hanging from the wall from the roof floor, down with blood pouring from his face and his leg looking broken on one side. Realizing this, Lee Mun Gil said that it seemed like the fight was over, so they stopped there and ended the fight by surrendering and raising both their hands as a sign of surrender. Na Min Su, who looked very upset and was also battered from his fight against Lee Mun Gil, then asked the Inchin gang to come back and leave. Now that dawn is starting to break, their match is quite tiring. Then Kim Dong Hyun and Park Han Joon, who were standing on the roof floor, looked down. Then Kim Dong Hyun asked Park Han Joon who was next after Baek Moon Yong. Then Park Han Joon answered with a vengeful answer that his next target was Kim Cheon Su. So what will Park Han Joon do to Kim Cheon Su next? It was a very sunny afternoon in a capital city hospital. Inside one of the hospital rooms, a man sitting on a wheelchair was staring out the window. His entire face was covered in bandages. Some parts of his body were also wearing casts due to broken bones. The man looked in a very poor condition. On the other side, there was a group of well-built men huddled together as if they were waiting for someone. The look on their faces was sinister. Some of the other men were also armed. Not long after, the person they had been waiting for finally arrived. Park Han Joon walked dashingly and casually towards the group of men. Seeing Han Joon's arrival, some of the men looked worried and scared. The chairman immediately reminded his men not to be afraid of Park Han Joon because they were much more numerous. But the men were still scared because their opponent was Park Han Joon.
The man's whole body was trembling with fear. In his eyes, Park Han Jun was a monster to him. However, the group leader was surprised to see such an exaggerated response from his men. When the man turned around to look at Park Han Jun, Park Han Jun suddenly attacked him. Park Han Jun kicked the gang leader in the face so hard that he was bleeding. After that, Park Han Jun also attacked his men simultaneously. Although there were more of them, Park Han Jun could easily defeat them all in a tall skyscraper. There was a woman sitting and relaxing while playing with her cell phone. She saw a message from Park Han Jun, who had successfully completed his mission at Dongsan High School. The woman was amazed at Park Han Jun's greatness. Then after that, she also received notifications from Nam in -soo and Kim dong Yan, who had finished. There was a man sitting at his desk. The woman immediately went up to him and asked if he was listening to her. But the man told her to just sit in the chair over there. The man felt he couldn't focus on getting this done. But suddenly the man widened his eyes while screaming hysterically and immediately got up from his seat. He had found what he was looking for. Seeing the action of the man made the woman beside him shocked. She didn't know what he meant. The man told her that he had found what Kim Cheonsu was looking for. The Pascal was the number one best app on Play Store in just three hours of its release. Over the past week, the connection continued. As a result, the company's stock price had increased drastically by six times. But the woman still didn't understand what that meant. The man said that this was all Nexus's doing. There were several articles discussing the Pascal that everyone was talking about. In the afternoon in a tall building, there were three men who were talking about something. One of the men who had shoulder-length red hair told his colleagues that Park Han Jun's gang had taken over their schools. Among the children, there began rumors that Nexus was afraid of Park Han Jun. Now everyone thinks that it's better for them to avoid war. He thinks that if it continues like this, it will be difficult to control the children. That man couldn't continue to stay silent like this. He asked Kim Chiansu to give him an order. Kim Chiansu was silent for a moment, thinking about it while bowing his head. Then he asked Lion how much time they had left. Lion replied that there was only a week left. Lion explained casually while drinking a glass of alcohol. He said that in one week, all their plans would be completed. Then Kim Chiansu got up from his seat and told Moongil to avoid the war for one week. After that, Kim Chiansu will take care of it. He thinks they are too big to be shaken by ordinary children. If they can hold it off for a while longer, then they will have a hundred billion won in their hands. Kim Chiansu was sure that there must be a way. With great confidence, Moon Gil will handle it. On the other side, Park Han Jun, Nam Insu, and Kim Dong Hyun were seen sitting and listening to the woman. They were having a meeting to discuss something. The woman was holding a clipboard in her hand. Then she ordered Kim Dong Hyun to take care of Dong Tak High School. The woman looked at the profile of someone named Bai Kyun Choi. She thought there was nothing special about this person because he only studied MMA. The woman assured him that this was just an ordinary attack, so it would be quick to solve it. After that, the woman immediately closed their meeting. The woman seemed to smile broadly at them. Because the discussion was over, the three men immediately walked out of the room. When Kim dong Hyun looked back at the woman, he saw that she looked gloomy. A few moments later, in a parking lot, there was someone preparing to leave on a green ninja motorcycle. Suddenly, Kim dong Hyun called the woman named Seo Hyun Choi from behind. He asked Seo Hyun why she told him to go to dong Taik High School. Seo Hyun was silent for a moment. Then Seo Hyun said that she didn't expect that among the monster people there was also a man like him. Then Seo Hyun took off her helmet and immediately gave it to Kim dong Hyun. The woman offered to come with her to get some fresh air. It was a beautiful afternoon with twilight decorating the sky. Seo Hyun and Kim dong Hyun were sitting on a beach chair. They were enjoying the beautiful afternoon while listening to the waves that soothed their souls. Then Seo Hyun looked up at the sky and started telling Kim dong Hyun that two years ago, she was an early member of Nexus. Seo Hyun's backstory. It's late afternoon in one of the houses in the village. There are Seo Hyun and her younger brother who are peeking at her crying mother from behind the door. The younger brother asks Seo Hyun what happened to their mother and asks where their father is. Seo Hyun tried to hold back her tears. Then she emphasized to her younger brother that they no longer had a father. 
Hearing this made her younger brother cry hysterically. Seo Hyun reminded her brother not to call the animal their father. Seo Hyun seemed to really hate her father. The two siblings cried hysterically because of their family's condition. They were both too young to go through that situation. Their father had an affair with another woman and left the family. After that, the mother worked hard to raise Seo Hyun and her brother. But their family didn't show any hope of changing for the better. Seo Hyun hated that house so much. The day Seo Hyun left for school, she seemed to be in a hurry and didn't say goodbye to her mother. Then she immediately slammed the door to make her mother surprised. Her mother thought that Seo Hyun was in her teenage years. A man standing behind his mother noticed Seo Hyun's attitude just now. The man felt like there was something wrong with Seo Hyun. Seo Hyun started joining together with children who were the same as her. It was nothing but to get the feeling of being recognized, the feeling of being with others, and the feeling of protecting each other. That was what Seo Hyun loved about the Nexus. At one point, Seo Hyun was secured at the police station because she was causing trouble with Nexus. Seo Hyun's homeroom teacher had to come to pick her up at the police station. Her homeroom teacher approached Seo Hyun with a sharp gaze, and he told Seo Hyun to follow him. Seo Hyun walked after her homeroom teacher from behind. The atmosphere became tense. Seo Hyun boldly told her homeroom teacher not to lecture her because she was planning to quit school anyway. As soon as the homeroom teacher stopped walking, he showed an attitude as if he didn't care if Seo Hyun wanted to quit or not, because he didn't want to deal with Seo Hyun's complicated life. The homeroom teacher mentioned Seo Hyun, who said she wanted to quit school, but was still studying until now. Hearing that, Seo Hyun immediately widened her eyes. Seo Hyun was embarrassed about it. The homeroom teacher was sure that Seo Hyun could get a perfect score if she studied well, because he saw Seo Hyun's math exam results that got 80. But Seo Hyun admitted that she was fed up with studying. But deep inside the homeroom teacher's heart, he was convinced that Seo Hyun was actually a diligent person. Then the homeroom teacher gave Seo Hyun his backpack, which contained some textbooks. The homeroom teacher reminded Seo Hyun not to lie to herself. If Seo Hyun wanted to study, then just do it. He told Seo Hyun to go to school until she got expelled and stopped making trouble again. Then the homeroom teacher left Seo Hyun and left a mark on Seo Hyun's heart. Seo Hyun was silent while tightly hugging the backpack that her homeroom teacher gave her. At night under the bridge, the Nexus members were gathered there. They all seemed to be having fun, but not Seo Hyun. She was seen alone sitting on a chair with her head down. Suddenly, there was a commotion from a group of men who were bullying the middle school boys. There was a man with blonde hair slapping the two junior high school students for giving a small amount of money. The faces of the two junior high school students looked battered because they were beaten by the man. Not only that, the man also committed a heinous act by giving them his urine. Seeing that made Seo Yun unable to hold back her emotions. Then she went straight to the man. Seo Hyun immediately threw her helmet at the man very fast. The helmet landed right on the head of the man who was doing his cruel act. As a result, the man fell face down on the ground. That made the group of men angry. Then his partner immediately grabbed Seo Hyun's hair very strongly. They wouldn't let Seo Hyun just like that. Then the man slapped Seo Hyun's face so hard that blood came out of her mouth. Not long after came a man who beat the group of men with a bat. The man finished off the gang in a sadistic manner. He easily defeated them. Seo Hyun widened her eyes at the man's arrival. She wondered why he was here. Then the blonde-haired man immediately went into action to attack the figure of the man who had dared to deal with Nexus. But very easily, the man knocked down his opponent, then slammed the face of the man who was a member of Nexus to the floor very strongly. Seeing this, Seo Hyun panicked and shouted for the man named Baekhyun. Not only that, Baekhyun smashed the man's face with the helmet in his hand. Instantly, everyone who saw the sadistic incident froze. Likewise, with Seo Hyun who saw the incident before her eyes. The floor was covered in blood. He was the new branch manager in Gangdong named Choi Baekhyun. Choi Baekhyun, he is the younger brother of Seo Hyun who is very different from her. Baekhyun has always been an obedient and good child. But one day there was a group of people who disturbed Baekhyun. But Baekhyun still remained patient and did not fight them. It made the group of men feel bored because Baekhyun had no resistance. 
Finally, the group of bullies mentioned his older sister. Hearing this, Baekhyun's emotions were immediately provoked. Then he began to brutally attack the bullies. Baekhyun released all his anger. Baekhyun was fed up with all of this. His family left him, and his school wouldn't let him live a normal life. Baekhyun thought that he had no one left, so he had to become stronger. Baekhyun continued to attack the bullies blindly. Sadistically, Baekhyun beat them all. Then Baekhyun threatened them not to mess with him again, because he would not hesitate to kill them all. The next day, a school-wide rumor spread that Choi Baekhyun had fought four people at once. Baekhyun sat in his classroom and heard his friends gossiping about him. Everyone seemed to have no idea that Choi Baekhyun was actually a thug. Not long after came a group of men who approached Choi Baekhyun. One of the men had greeted Baekhyun who had beaten their friends. Then, unexpectedly, the man invited Baekhyun to join Nexus. But immediately Baekhyun beat them all very sadistically. That's how Baekhyun joined Nexus. Until finally Choi Baekhyun became the most feared person. But one day, when Baekhyun was about to come to meet a group of men who opposed him, he suddenly realized that he had been framed. His friend told Baekhyun to run away from this place. There were dozens of people who came to beat him up. They jointly attacked Baekhyun with weapons. But that didn't make Baekhyun feel the slightest fear. Baekhyun wouldn't run away anymore now. The fight went on for a very long time until nighttime. Because there were so many of them, they were no match for Baekhyun. The fight was so exhausting for Baekhyun that he had reached his limit. Baekhyun was seen lying on the floor with his head being stepped on by his opponent. His body felt immobilized. At that moment, Baekhyun realized that this was as far as he could go. Just as his opponent was about to deliver the final blow to Baekhyun, a man suddenly appeared to save Baekhyun at just the right time. He stood in the midst of the lights shining down on him and walked up to Baekhyun like a savior angel. He was Kim Chiansu. Then Kim Chiansu stood before Baekhyun's enemies to defend Baekhyun. Kim Chiansu had heard about Baekhyun before. Then Chiansu looked at Baekhyun while smiling at him. Kim Chiansu told Baekhyun to call him Hyung from now on. Baekhyun hated looking at people's backs. The backs of his father and brother who abandoned their families and the backs of people who looked down on him. All those miserable people's backs. But on that day, Baekhyun saw the back of a figure who was different from all of them. It was at that moment that Bakian promised himself that he would follow that person, under the bridge where the Nexus gathering was. Bakian sat together with his older sister, Seo Yun. Seo Yun seemed to bow her head. Then she asked her younger brother why he joined Nexus. Bakian was silent. Then Bakian got up from his seat and said sternly to Seo Yun that she didn't need to know about it. Bakian said that Chion Su asked him to be the branch manager here. Bakian only did what Chion Su asked. Then Bakian warned his sister not to get in Chion Su's way. Bakian even threatened Seo Yun that he would kill her if she interfered with Chion Su, no matter if she was family or not. Bakian looked at Seo Yun with a very sharp gaze. He seemed to mean what he said. It was nighttime at a billiards place. Bakian sat in front of his men while holding a billiard stick. Bakyan was talking about the bastards who dared to oppose the Nexus. He blamed the teachers at the school who couldn't cooperate with the Nexus. Bakyan said that the real reason the teachers wouldn't cooperate with the Nexus was because they underestimated the Nexus. This made Bakyan furious and told them all his men to take revenge. However, one of them did not accept Bakyan's attitude as if he felt like a boss. According to him, Bakyan is younger than him so Bekian does not deserve to order them. Bekian glanced at the man with a cynical look. Then, without fear, the man challenged Bakian. This provoked Bakian's emotions. Then Bakian hit the man with a billiard stick so hard that the billiard stick broke. The end of the billiard stick pierced the man's body, causing a lot of blood to spurt. The other members could only watch the incident without being able to do anything. They were too scared to stop Bakian's action. At night in an apartment, there is a woman who is one of the teachers at the school. She had just arrived in front of her apartment after a long day at work. The woman looked tired. What a surprise she was when she entered her apartment. She saw all the furniture in her apartment that had been destroyed. It was Choi Bakyan who began to harass the teachers. Bakyan was very cunning and vengeful. 
Bakyan would not forgive those who were even just close to the teachers. They bullied every student who was seen with the teachers. Until finally the teachers began to resign. But there was one teacher who was still there. All the teachers had left, except for that one teacher. He was Seo Hyun's homeroom teacher. The man could not understand the teachers who chose to resign from their jobs just because they were afraid of the children. According to him, if there is a problem, it should be solved. Moreover, as a teacher, the man felt responsible for the children. He is worried that other children who are victims could die, so at least someone should take care of them. Eventually, the teacher became the next target of the nexus. Seo Hyun, who realized this, was worried about her homeroom teacher. In the pouring rain, Seo Hyun searched and contacted her homeroom teacher, but Seo Hyun got no reply at all. Seo Hyun was shocked to see the teacher lying in the middle of the road because he was hit by a white sedan that was sent by the Nexus. He crossed a line that he should never have crossed. At the hospital, Seo Hyun kept crying seeing her homeroom teacher's condition. Seo Hyun deeply regretted being part of the Nexus. From that day on, Seo Hyun decided to take responsibility by destroying the Nexus. That's the short story of Seo Hyun and her brother Choi Baek Hyun. Seo Hyun said that she couldn't fix everyone. So, whether Baek Hyun was her brother or not, Seo Hyun asked Kim Dong Hyun to finish him off. Kim Dong Hyun was silent for a moment. Then he said that he would try to fix this. The next day at a restaurant, there was Park Han Joon who was finishing off his target. It didn't take long for Park Han Joon to knock out his opponent. Then Park Han Joon announced that Bong Chian High School had lost. Meanwhile, on the other side, Nam In Su also seemed to have completed his mission. He reported that Huaryong High School had also lost, but the two of them had not heard from Kim Dong Hyun. Nam In Su thought that he was a little late. Meanwhile, elsewhere, Kim Dong Hyun was seen arriving at a building, which was the location of the target. Kim Dong Hyun told his two friends that the distance to the location was far. Then Kim Dong Hyun bragged, saying that his fight would be the fastest. However, when Kim Dong Hyun entered the billiard room, he was surprised to find no one there. Cho Hyun was seen riding her motorcycle with full power on the road. Suddenly, a shabbily dressed woman appeared and called Cho Hyun to ask her for help. Seeing that, Cho Hyun immediately stopped and asked the woman what happened to her. The woman immediately smiled slyly. It turned out that she was just tricking Seo Hyun and setting her up. At the same time, several people surrounded Seo Hyun. One of the men pulled Seo Hyun's shoulders and forced her to follow them. Suddenly, Seo Hyun immediately hit the man's face with the helmet in her hand. Seeing this, the short haired woman who was behind immediately grabbed Seo Hyun's hair. Seo Hyun then elbowed the woman hard in the face. However, Suddenly, one of them hit Seo Hyun's back with a bat, causing Seo Hyun's body to fall down. Seo Hyun couldn't do anything else. Now they were going to take Seo Hyun away. In an apartment that was in a narrow alley, that's where they locked Seo Hyun up. Seo Hyun kept banging on the door while cursing Choi Baek Hyun. Not long after came Baek Hyun, who approached one of the apartment rooms where Seo Hyun was locked up in. His men who were on guard immediately bent down to see Baek Hyun's arrival. Hearing Seo Hyun scream like that, Baek Hyun asked his men how long she had been doing this. His men replied that Seo Hyun had been rebelling like that for two hours. Then Baek Hyun kicked the door very strongly. From behind the door, Baek Hyun reminded Seo Hyun to stay calm and not to mess up in five days. Baek Hyun threatened Seo Hyun that if she made trouble one more time and disturbed Cheon Su, then Baek Hyun could ensure that Seo Hyun would go home with her body intact. But Seo Hyun seemed unafraid of the threat. Seo Hyun took out her cell phone and then lay down casually on the bed. She would happily obey Baek Yeon's orders to stay there. But in return, Baek Yeon wouldn't be able to go home okay either. In the afternoon at a tall building, there was Kyon Su who was looking at the view from up there. Then came Moon Gil and told Kyon Su that Choi Seo Hyun had been secured. Since Park Han Joon's gang was a loyal gang, Moon Gil was confident that they could get the time they needed. Hearing the news, a smile was etched on Kim Chiansu's lips. This was all going according to his wishes. Chiansu reminded Moon Gil to keep up the good work for a little while longer because they were already at the end of their plan. The next day, they all gathered to discuss the issue of Seo Hyun being kidnapped. 
they all looked gloomy because of it. The man in front of them said that they should do things carefully. The fear was that if this continued, Kim Cheonsu's wealth would grow to the point that they wouldn't be able to stop it. Even if this was risky, they would have to attack the Nexus anyway. Then Naminsu started to speak up. Naminsu said that Kim Cheonsu's stock manipulation would not be solved just by attacking the Nexus. Moreover, his stock was also at a high level. That made Naminsu feel pessimistic and thought that this was already their defeat. The man was silent for a moment. Then he suddenly smiled slyly. The man said one thing for sure that when they worked in a dirty way, they always won. He reminded them not to worry anymore as the game was still on. The man explained that through manipulating the stock, the game company's stock increased eightfold. But Nexus was still trying to buy time. That meant their plan wasn't complete. Kim Chionsu's last plan was short selling. But Park Han Jun still did not understand the meaning of the man's explanation. Then Park Han Jun asked him to use the language they understood. Essentially, they borrow stock and then cash it out. When they want to pay again, they buy back their shares and pay back the borrower with shares. They are betting on the price of the shares falling. Because if the share price is higher when they want to pay it back than when they borrowed it, it will be a big profit from the borrower's point of view. The man told me that Kim Chiansu was fighting in short selling to maximize his income by lowering the price of the shares. According to the information the man got, the remaining time for the Nexus to return was five days. Then to lower the stock price, until then, he would need the influence of the Nexus. The man told the three of them to stop him. But what was more important to Kim Dong-hyun was that they had to save Choi Seo-hyun first. Then the man told him that he had installed a GPS location on her earlier so that they could go rescue her any time. Hearing that made Kim Dong-hyun emotional. He was annoyed that the man only said it now. Seeing Kim Dong-hyun's overreaction, the man suspected that Dong-hyun liked Choi Seo-hyun. Suddenly, Kim dong hyun panicked and realized his overreaction. Kim dong hyun denied it. While walking out of the room, Kim dong hyun said that if someone was kidnapped, then they should save him. The man ignored Kim dong hyun After all, if Kim dong hyun was excited, that was good. Then the man told Park han Jun and nam in -soo to act immediately if they understood, because they didn't have much time left. Lightly, Park han Jun admitted that he didn't understand yet. But one thing was for sure, they just needed to beat them up. Then the two of them came out of the room excited and enthusiastic to fight against the enemy. Seeing them excited, the man smiled broadly. They just needed to go and fight, while the money was the man's problem. Moments later, they finally reached the Nexus headquarters in a narrow alley where Seo Hyun was locked up. Kim Dong Yeon immediately broke down the door with force while calling Bak Yeon to come out. There were a number of men inside who were guarding the place. They all immediately got into position to attack Kim dong Yan and Park han Joon. Park han Joon told Kim dong Yan to come forward while he would open the way. Park han Joon immediately attacked the men brutally. The two of them worked well together. There was a fierce battle in that place. One of his men reported to Baekhyun that Park han Joon and Kim dong Yan were here. Baekhyun didn't expect them to know his whereabouts. Then from behind the door, Seo Hyun teased and fooled Baekhyun. Seo Hyun told him that her colleagues had put a tracking device on him. Seo Hyun told Bai Kyun to admit defeat. Suddenly, the sunlight from outside highlighted Seo Hyun's face inside the room. The door slowly opened, and Bai Kyun appeared from behind the door. Bai Kyun warned Seo Hyun that she was the one who would be finished now. Bai Kyun's face looked very sinister, and the look in his eyes was filled with vengeance. Suddenly, Bai Kyun came. Bakyan told Seo Hyun that this time Seo Hyun would be finished. In another corner, Kim Dong Yan was fighting against his enemy. Then Kim Dong Yan was very surprised to see Seo Hyun had been trapped by Baekhyun. Baekhyun ordered Kim Dong Yan not to move. Baekhyun wanted Kim Dong Yan to realize what Kim Dong Yan had done. Baekhyun told Kim Dong Yan that it was his last chance. But Kim Dong Yan was very calm in response to Baekhyun's threat. Instantly, Seo Hyun slammed Bai Kyun abruptly. It seemed like Seo Hyun had prepared to do that while being choked by Bai Kyun. Then Kim Dong Yan quickly attacked Bai Kyun, who was in the middle. Bai Kyun was very surprised, 
and said that Xiao Yun's behavior was very silent. He did not expect Xiao Yun to do that. Bakian looked troubled. He had to find a way to clean up what Qian Su had ordered. Bakian attacked Kim Dong Yan quickly using the mirrors around him. Kim Dong Yan felt that Bakian was very cunning and only used dirty tricks to attack his enemy. It seemed that Bakian did not accept himself being said to be cunning by Kim Dong Yan. Then quickly, Bakian attacked Kim Dong Yan with his punch while saying that it was his strength. Bakian's punches were so powerful that they broke the wall, but unfortunately, Kim Dong Yan was able to avoid them. Bakian continued to attack Kim Dong Yan relentlessly, but Kim Dong Yan looked very calm and always avoided Bakian's punches. Kim Dong Yan began to get annoyed with Bakian, who always attacked him. Then Kim Dong Yan held Bakian's punches with just the soles of his feet. It seems that Kim Dong Yan thought that Chian Su had taken advantage of Bakian. Hearing Kim Dong Yan's statement made Bakian very angry. He thought Kim Dong Yan had dared to insult Chian Su. Kim Dong Yan was very upset because his words could not awaken Bakian. Then Kim Dong Yan said that he would finish Bakian first. Kim Dong Yan was seen attacking Bakian blindly. Kim Dong Yan's punches and kicks always hit Bakian's body, leaving Bakian with wounds all over his body. Then Kim Dong Yan said that Bakian started all that to make a living. But it seems that the current situation is not wanted by Bakian. Kim Dong Yan told Bakian that Chiansu didn't care about Bakian at all. Chiansu had ordered Bakian to buy time by kidnapping Bakian's own sister. Kim Dong Yan couldn't believe what had made Bakian follow all of Chiansu's orders. Bakian looked very upset at Kim Dong Yan. Bakian thought that Kim Dong Yan didn't understand anything about all that. Bakian attacked Kim Dong Yan with his punches angrily but it seemed that Kim Dong Hyun easily overthrew Baek Hyun and said that Baek Hyun was wrong. In desperation, Baek Hyun remembered his past. He had to become stronger to survive. In that process, Baek Hyun met Cheon Su, and in his life, Kyon Su had shown a way out for Baek Hyun. Baek Hyun knew that it wasn't the right path for him, but that didn't matter, because Baek Hyun had vowed to follow Cheon Su. Bekian had only known darkness his whole life, for Bekian Chensu was the man who became the light of his life, and all this Bekian did for Kiansu. Kim Dong Hyun and Seo Hyun were seen leaving Bekian, but Bekian held them back and said that all of this had just begun. Kim Dong Hyun and Seo Hyun didn't seem to respond to Bekian. Bekian was furious and attacked them both, but again Kim Dong Hyun easily knocked Bekian down. Kim Dong Yan told Bakian that it was enough and nothing would change. Bakian was very upset, but he was still optimistic about completing his task. Instantly, Kim Dong Yan attacked Bakian using his knee and hit Bakian in the face. Seo Soon was speechless as she saw Bakian being beaten to a pulp by Kim Dong Yan. With wounds all over his body, Bakian didn't seem desperate and would still continue to fight for everything for Cheon Su. Seo Hyun instantly remembered her past. When Baekhyun was a child, Baekhyun asked Seo Hyun why mom was like that and where their father was. Seo Hyun looked sad when she remembered her past with Baekhyun. Kim Dong Hyun continued to attack Baekhyun. It seemed that Baekhyun was bleeding profusely and had no more strength. But Baekhyun was very stubborn. Seeing his condition like that, he continued to want to fight and complete his task. Seo Hyun began to approach Baekhyun. Immediately, Seo Hyun slapped Baekhyun's face very hard. Seo Hyun was very sad and cried when she slapped Baekhyun. Seo Hyun told Baekhyun if everything was enough. Seo Hyun was seen lamenting in front of Baekhyun. Seo Hyun said that because of the nexus, someone was almost forced to walk with a limp all their life, and someone who lost all their wealth. Then others lost friends who were considered like family. Seo Hyun told Baekhyun that if all that happened because of the nexus, it was clear that they were only using Baekhyun temporarily, and after that, they would throw Baekhyun away. Seo Hyun wanted to apologize to Baekhyun for leaving him, and Seo Hyun wanted Baekhyun to end it all. Baekhyun was seen yelling at Seo Hyun after Seo Hyun explained what had actually happened. On the other hand, Kim Dong Yan was very upset to see Baekhyun yelling at his sister Seo Hyun. Kim Dong Hyun said that Seo Yun had done many things, and Kim Dong Hyun was also very surprised why Baekhyun never gave up 
and didn't care how many wounds Baekhyun got. Kim Donghyun was seen extending his hand to shake hands with Baekhyun. Then Seo Hyun told Baekhyun that Baekhyun wasn't too late, and Baekhyun could start all over again. Baekhyun seemed silent and contemplated his past. Then, as soon as Baekhyun attacked Kim Donghyun, Baekhyun said that they wouldn't be able to change Baekhyun's mind. Baekhyun never seemed to betray Chiansu in the slightest. No matter how hard the wounds Baekhyun received, he would continue to fight for his duty. Kim Donghyun was seen getting hit in the face. Seo Hyun looked worried about Kim Donghyun after getting hit by Baekhyun. Then Kim Donghyun told Seo Hyun not to worry, and Kim Donghyun was sure that Baekhyun would fail. Kim Donghyun added that everything would be more difficult for Baekhyun. Kim Donghyun thought that Baekhyun would feel like he lost everything for the second time. Elsewhere in the office, the company's shares are being discussed. It appears that the company's stock has dropped by five ticks. The company is trying to stabilize the stock price, with 30 minutes left before closing. Lyon said that the stock had fallen faster than it had been prevented, so the ants must be panicking. Chiansu looked very satisfied and happy with the result. When Chiansu and Lyon were about to leave the room, Chiansu's partner was suddenly surprised by the 6% increase in shares. Chiansu's colleague said that the increase in shares was minus 14%. Suddenly, the volume of share purchases rose dramatically. If there was that much share purchase, it could be said that a third party had intervened. Elsewhere, Jun Wu is very happy to see the stock rise. Jun Wu says that they will be a mess if the stocks go up. Seen in another office, Qiansu's colleagues are panicking as the stock price continues to rise. Using the Nexus, viral sales are still in progress, and even now bad articles have spread on social media. The share price went from a low to a very upward trend, as the share price is now 18% positive. It is known that the closing time for buying shares is about to close, but with that much selling pressure, the share price continues to rise. The current increase in the stock feels unreasonable. Then suddenly Baekhyun appeared. Baekhyun seemed to be held back by Kiansu's colleagues. Baekhyun was seen yelling at Kiansu. It seemed that Baekhyun was very angry. When Baekhyun wanted to say something to Kiansu, Kiansu immediately slapped Baekhyun so hard that Baekhyun bled from his mouth. I don't know what happened. Chiansu continued to attack Bakyan until Bakyan was helpless again. Chiansu told Bakyan that if Bakyan liked Chiansu that much, then Bakyan should have died while fighting. Chiansu added that if Bakyan had died, then it would have given Chiansu a lot of favorable time. Chiansu thought Bakyan was a useless bastard. It seemed that Chiansu's fist had blood flowing. Then Chiansu said that he seemed unable to avoid staining his clean hands with blood again. Chiansu then ordered his partner to gather all the branch managers. Chiansu told his colleagues that he would end all their relationships with those bastards. The next day, they were pleasantly surprised to see news everywhere about the Pascal Gaming Company that was the talk of the town. The company's name had skyrocketed in a short period of time. The man didn't expect them to spend so much money on news like this. The stock continued to rise by 19%. Oh Jun Wu, who was in his office, smiled with satisfaction at the news. He was sure that if the situation was like this, then Kiansu would not be able to do anything. On the other hand, at a Nexus headquarters, there were many people lined up in front of the building. In front of him was Kim Chiansu and greeted them all. Some of them are the best people in the Nexus. There was the chairman of the Gyeongsang branch, Baek Dongcheon, the chairman of the Jola branch, Jo Cheongyu, Gangwon branch president, Kim Jihyuk, Chungcheon branch chairman, Lee Moongil. Then, the last is Kim Chiansu, who is the number one person in Nexus. Kim Chiansu gave a speech to raise the spirits of his men. Chiansu reminded them of the incident two years ago, when they were able to win a national award that no one could get. With that, they were also able to earn a lot of money. Chiansu was sure that they were all aware of Park Hanjun's actions that threatened their glory. Then Chiansu came down from the podium. Chiansu walked closer to them as he said that he couldn't let that happen, as a nexus with high self-esteem. Chiansu provokes them all to attack Park Han Jun's lair and make him kneel before him. Chiansu told them to make Park Han Jun feel bad for crossing the line. Instantly, they all cheered in the name of nexus. Chiansu's short speech managed to get them all fired up. 
At the same time, a car was seen speeding towards the Nexus headquarters until it crashed into the fence. The car headed towards all of them, who were gathered in the front yard without any brakes. Suddenly, they all immediately moved out of the way. Then the car stopped right in front of Kim Chionsu. After a while, they finally got out of the car. They were Park Han Jun and his colleagues. Everyone stared at them with piercing gazes. Oh Jun Wu returned their stares and called them all trash. Then Jun Wu greeted Kim Chionsu, who was in front of him. It's been a long time since they met in person like this. Jun Wu had said the last time they met that he would make sure Chionsu wouldn't be able to keep that expression. Smiling sarcastically, Jun Wu was sure that Chionsu couldn't stand it now. Chiansu looked at Jun Wu with a sharp gaze. He didn't expect that Jun Wu would walk here on his own two feet. Now Kim Chiansu is thinking that Jun Wu is actually not that crazy. Jun Wu then challenges Chiansu to solve their current problem with three against three. But Chiansu seemed reluctant to oblige. He's not the least bit interested in child's play. Seeing Kim Chunsu's response, Oh Jun Wu called him a coward. He was curious who was actually stronger. To prove that, they had to bet. Jun Wu said that if they won, he would be willing to give them money and also not bother them anymore. But if they lost, Jun Wu asked them to give him all the money they had. Not only that, Jun Wu also asked the Nexus to disband forever. He didn't think it was a bad match. With a dismissive expression on his face, Jun Wu said if he didn't accept the offer, it meant he was scared. You could see the panic and worry on all of their faces but not Kim Chiansu. He felt provoked by Jun Wu's words. Chiansu said that it wasn't bad. But Chianku added one more thing to his offer. Chiansu wanted Park Han Jun if they won. He planned to separate all of his bones and make them into spears. That way, Chiansu would be very happy with his bet. Jun Wu has agreed to a counter. Jun Wu said if one side falls, then he loses. Jun Wu has chosen his partner to start the fight while Chiansu's side contains Chiansu, Tiny, and Gangwon branch leader Ji Hyuk. It looks like they are getting ready to start the fight. There was a look on the face of a man eager to start a game where everything was at stake. There was a very crowded situation in the middle of the field. In the upper stands, there were two men who were watching the events ahead. One of the men seemed upset that Kim Chionso chose a player from Gangwon's representative. This offended him because he felt humiliated. But the man next to him admitted that the boy was stronger than them. The man would know later how strong the boy was. Kim Ji-hyuk seemed to take off his suit. Then Kim Ji-hyuk rolled up his sleeves as he advanced to the center of the field. Kim Ji-hyuk decided to go first. Then from the other side, Nam In-su would advance in the first round. Seeing that made Kim Ji-hyuk a little surprised. Kim Ji-hyuk thought Nam In-su would have a hard time because of their weight difference. But Nam In-su didn't mind that because he didn't think weight would affect him. What affects is the way he fights. Instantly, Nam In-su gave a surprise attack to Kim Ji-hyuk. Everyone who saw the incident looked dumbfounded. Jun Wu was amazed by Nam In-su's above-average speed. Nam In-su delivered a relentless attack to Nam In-su. Getting the attack, Kim Ji-hyuk admitted that his opponent's strength was quite good. But immediately, Kim Ji-hyuk immediately counterattacked him. Kim Ji-hyuk hit Nam In-su's stomach so hard that his body fell backwards. It was a very hard punch. Compared to the weight difference between them, the damage Kim Ji-hyuk dealt was truly incredible. This was getting interesting for Kim Ji-hyuk. Instantly, Kim Ji-hyuk took off both shoes he was wearing. Seeing that made everyone look dumbfounded. Lee Moongil seemed to laugh widely at this very interesting incident. Just the beginning like this, they are already very serious. Thanks to them, this spectacle became very interesting. Kim ji Yuk took the stance to prepare for the attack. Jin Woo tried to remind Nam in Su that the fight would end when one of them fell. Nam in Su also knew this. When Nam in Su gave an attack to Kim ji Yuk, suddenly Kim ji Yuk moved quickly past him. Nam in Su's eyes widened. He didn't think Kim ji Yuk could do it. Instantly, Kim ji Yuk attacked from behind. Kim ji Yuk really enjoyed this and he used his energy properly. With a thigh pull, Kim ji Yuk then slammed Nam in Su's body very hard. Nam in Su's body was seen lying on the ground. Seo Hyun shouted at him and told Nam in Su to get up. She thought it wasn't over yet. But suddenly, Kim ji Yuk attacked again. 
Kim Ji-hyuk lifted Nam In-soo's body and then immediately slammed him forward. Previously, Nam In-soo and Jin-woo had talked about this. Jin-woo said that Nam In-soo only has a 5% chance of winning if he fights Kim Ji-hyuk, who is a representative of Gangwon. Kim Ji-hyuk is the third generation of the third strongest man in the world. Kim Ji-hyuk is a truly powerful person. Rumor has it that Kim Ji-hyuk once pulled a huge tree up by its roots with just his two hands. According to Jin-woo, the problem is not talent or weight, but Kim Ji-hyuk is stronger than Nam In-soo. But Nam In-soo felt confident and wouldn't give up even if he only had a 1% chance of winning. Jin-woo also didn't say that Nam In-soo should give up. Considering how much money Jin-woo had given Nam In-soo, Jin-woo asked Nam In-soo not to give up. Jin-woo also told him to think about what Nam In-soo should do with the 5%. Jin-woo believed there were many ways for a normal human to defeat a bull. Back to the fight. Instantly, Nam In-soo slammed into Jin-hyuk's body, sending him flying backwards. Nam In-soo emphasized that this was not the end of his defeat. Now, Nam In-soo knew why Jin-woo said that his chance of winning was only 5%. If he got knocked down one more time, then it would really be over. That motivated Nam In-soo to get up. Instantly, everyone looked dumbfounded at the scene. There was a smile on the corner of Jin-woo's lips. Jin-woo thought that Nam In-soo had figured out how to catch a bull like he said. With a very fast movement, Kim Ji-hyuk immediately attacked Nam In-soo. Seeing that made Nam In-soo a little panicked. Kim Ji-hyuk did it while running so that Nam In-soo couldn't see him clearly. But Nam In-soo wouldn't just stand still. He will also directly attack him. Nam In-soo attacked, using the out boxing consecutive attack skill. But Kim Ji-hyuk seemed to be able to withstand the attack. For him, Nam In-soo's boxing attack would not do much damage to him. But suddenly, without realizing it, Nam In-soo gave a punch from below. It didn't stop there, Nam In-soo attacked him again by using his sharp moves. Lee Moongil was seen panicking and shouting at Kim Ji-yuk to avoid the attack, while Jin-woo seemed to be smiling broadly enjoying the fight. Nam In-soo's very fast movements made Kim Ji-hyuk unable to avoid his attacks. Finally, Nam In-soo's fist hit Kim Ji-hyuk's face. Kim Ji-hyuk tried to stop the attack from Nam In-soo, as expected of Kim Ji-hyuk the bullman. Kim Ji-hyuk said the trick used by Nam In-soo was a cheap trick. Instantly, Nam In-soo moved quickly to attack Kim Ji-hyuk. Again, Kim Ji-hyuk hit his fist right into ji yuls face. Kim Ji-hyuk tried to deflect the attack with all his might. He wouldn't fall in the same hole. But honestly, Nam In-soo didn't even think it would work a third time. Instantly, Nam In-soo attacked with a vengeance. Suddenly, Kim Ji-hyuk's colleagues were stunned to see Kim Ji-hyuk cornered. Lee Moongil kept thinking positively. According to him, this was just like boxing before. Lee Moongil thought that if Nam Insu didn't make one effective attack, then he wouldn't be able to beat Kim Ji Hyuk. In fact, it would benefit Kim Ji Hyuk if he continued to do this. No matter how many punches Nam Insu took, he was pushed back by Kim Ji Hyuk's powerful attack. The strange thing, according to Lee Moongil, was that it was impossible for them not to know about it. But there was a sly smile on Jin Woo's face. Instantly, Lee Moon Gil realized something bad. Lee Moon Gil immediately shouted to remind Kim Ji Yuk to stop. But it was too late for Kim Ji Yuk to avoid the deadly attack. Jin Woo smiled widely at Nam In Su's excellent technique. He thought it was a perfect knee kick. There was a lot of blood coming out of Kim Ji Yuk's mouth from Nam In Su's sudden knee kick. The punch Nam Insu had given him earlier was only for this one attack. Lee Moon Gil's expression looked very panicked. Instantly, Kim Ji Yuk locked Nam Insu's legs from behind him. Suddenly, Nam Insu became very panicked, even though Nam Insu was sure he had targeted his chin. He thought Kim Ji Hyuk's brain should have been shaken, no matter how much of a monster the man was. The grip of Kim Ji Hyuk's hands seemed very strong, holding Nam Insu's body, and then he slammed him to the floor hard. Nam In-soo's head hit the floor and the floor cracked instantly. Seo Hyun panicked and shouted for Nam In-soo. Seeing that made Park Han Joon unable to stay silent. Han Joon couldn't wait to take over the fight. But Kim dong Yeon held him back, reminding him that it wasn't over yet. Finally, Han Joon also held himself back. There was a fierce battle going on between the two of them. Kim Ji-hyuk attacked him blindly. His emotions seemed fiery. But instantly Nam In-soo got back up. 
Everyone was astonished, even though Nam Insu had fallen to the ground three times. You could see the man's expression shuddering in horror. They saw something strange from Man Insu. He seemed to be going crazy. Nam Insu seemed to go crazy attacking Kim Ji Yuk. He attacked him so sadistically that Kim Ji Yuk's skin was cut by his elbow. Not stopping there, Nam Insu attacked him again vigorously. The men widened their eyes at the scene before them. They saw Nam Insu's eyes become strange and his fighting style turn wild. This was exactly what they had seen. Nam Insu's body moved so much that the man was in a state where his instincts overrode his common sense. It could be seen clearly, Nam Insu was like a beast that only had his instincts. The man standing behind asked Lee Moongil if there was a chance for Kim Ji Yuk to win. Lee Moongil said it was possible as long as there was great determination and tremendous experience needed. Kim Ji Hyuk saw that his patterns and endurance were different from before, more than anything else. Nam Insu tore Kim Ji Hyuk's skin, even though Kim Ji Hyuk had only been hit a little. Kim Ji Hyuk realized that the current situation was so dangerous for him that he had to risk everything. Their fight became even more intense. The two of them fought against each other. Nam Insu seemed to hit Kim Ji Hyuk's face very strongly. Then instantly, Kim Ji Hyuk locked Nam Insu's body from behind and jumped up. Everyone looked dumbfounded while raising their heads to see the two men floating above. Instantly, both of their bodies hit the ground. You could see the steaming origin that covered the visibility. The condition of the two of them looked very poor. Nam Insu thought that he was going to die. Nam Insu had trouble even standing up. However, Nam Insu, who had defeated Kim Ji Hyuk, had a feeling that he had surpassed the Nexus. But then Lee Moongil appeared in the center of the battle area. Everyone seemed excited to watch the fight. The real fight would start now. They knew that Lee Moongil was one of the founders of Nexus and the strongest person in this place. Suddenly, Lee Moongil approached Nam Insu and immediately delivered a fist strike right to his face. Lee Moongil rudely told him to rest because he thought Nam Insu might die if he fought again. Instantly, Nam Insu's body was thrown far back. This was Lee Moongil's reply to Nam Insu showing him a good fight. Then Kim Lee Moongil walked towards Kim Dong Yun while waving his fingers to tell his opponent to come closer. Kim Dong Yun immediately walked dashingly to the center of the fighting area. There was a sharp look in his eyes. Without further ado, Lee Lee Moongil immediately ran to attack Kim Dong Yun very quickly. The second battle had begun now with everything at stake. Lee Moongil was seen using an unusual technique. With this technique, he was able to push Kim dong Yun's body to the back. Kim dong Yun looked very surprised and assumed that the martial art he was using was Chinese. Junwoo had already guessed that Lee Moongil would start. Meanwhile, Seo Hyun looked very panicked seeing Lee Moongil using Chinese martial arts. She didn't expect Lee Moongil to use it in an ordinary fight like this. Junwoo knew that it was indeed a Chinese martial art. It was quite famous even though it was rare that anyone could learn it. However, not all traditional martial arts were weak. But Seo Hyun was very curious as to how Lee Lee Moongil could know such a martial art. That was because Lee Moongil was the heir of the most influential family in the world of martial arts and crime organizations. Lee Moongil said that Kim Dong Hyun should have shown more interest than Nam In Su. But he didn't expect that Kim Dong Yun was even weaker like this. Lee Moon Gil easily attacked Kim Dong Yun in just one attack. That made Kim Dong Yun furious and angry. Instantly, Kim Dong Yun tried to counterattack him. Receiving that attack, Lee Moon Gil judged that the strength of his kick exceeded his physique. There was a sardonic smile on Lee Moon Gil's lips as Kim Dong Yun finally showed something interesting. The two of them fought each other fiercely. Instantly, Kim Dong Yun delivered another kicking attack. Since Lee Moon Gil surpassed Kim Dong Yun in technique and talent, Kim Dong Yun's choice was to hit the same spot again and again. Then Lee Moon Gil immediately caught his ankle. Lee Moon Gil could be seen staring intently at him. According to Lee Moon Gil, his attack was too obvious. Lee Moon Gil immediately counterattacked and smashed Kim Dong Yun's face from below. Lee Moon Gil asserted that Kim Dong Yun's usual attack would not work on him. Then Lee Moongil also attacked Kim Dong Yun's collarbone. Suddenly, Kim Dong Yun winced in pain. 
Kim Dong-yeon could feel that both his collarbones were crushed. Considering his reputation as Kim Dong-yeon, this was a little disappointing for Lee Moongil. Lee Moongil then prepared to use his deadliest move. Lee Moongil's teammates were all smiling and thinking that Lee Moongil was going to win this fight. Meanwhile, Seo Hyun looked very panicked while hysterically screaming Kim Dong Yun's name. There was a lot of blood coming out of Kim Dong Yun's mouth due to the fatal attack from his enemy. Kim Dong Yun remembers his past. In his childhood, Kim Dong Yun was always bullied by his friends. Maybe it was because of his small physique, and wherever Kim Dong Yun went, he was always bullied. But one day there was a fight between the kids who bullied him and Park Han Jun, and Kim Dong Yun could see the absolute power. At that time, Kim Dong Yun asked Park Han Jun what he had to do to become that strong. With a flat face, Park Han Jun only said that every time he was hit, he would hit them back. Since then, Kim Dong Yun worked hard to change after that. Kim Dong Yun thought that it might just be the words of that fool Park Han Jun, but because of those words, Kim Dong Yun could do it too. But Kim Dong Yun soon realized that if he didn't have any talent, or maybe a big physique that he couldn't be Park Han Jun. Sometimes people around Kim Dong Yun said that Kim Dong Yun was determined, but honestly, Kim Dong Yun never intended to be like that. It's just because Kim Dong Yun feels that he's not a genius. This was all Kim Dong Yun could do. Since Kim Dong Yun was not a genius, then Kim Dong Yun would only progress even more stupidly until the time when his efforts became his talent. Instantly, Kim Dong Yun got back up to take his turn. Lee Moongil fell to his knees as a result of his leg taking a hit from Kim Dong Yun just now. Lee Moongil guessed that the reason why Kim Dong Yun had done the same thing from earlier was for this. Lee Moongil's leg was broken so he couldn't move. At that moment, Kim Dong Yun immediately attacked him repeatedly. Kim Dong Yun was seen attacking him sadistically. Then Kim Dong Yun grabbed Lee Moongil's hair while saying demeaning words to him. After that, Kim Dong Yun again attacked Lee Moongil mercilessly. Kim Dong Yun smashed his opponent's face into his knee. Everyone looked dumbfounded at the incident. It looked like a very sadistic attack that made them shudder in horror. Meanwhile, Seo Hyun was satisfied and praised Kim Dong Yun's good work. But Lee Moongil didn't just sit there. Lee Moongil also immediately counterattacked him. Lee Moongil mocked Kim Dong Yun for just giving random attacks without such talent. Lee Moongil felt very confident and was sure that he wouldn't lose to someone like him. Kim Dong Yun was disgusted by his boasting and immediately attacked with his feet. Kim Dong Yun attacked him with a lot of force. After that, Kim Dong Yun attacked with his full strength. Lee Moongil's colleagues looked panicked at Lee Moongil's condition. Blood was pouring down Lee Moongil's face. His condition made Lee Moongil feel pitiful. Lee Moongil was reminded of his past. Lee Moongil was born as the son of a martial arts family. Lee Moongil had been trained as an heir like hell. But there was something else that made Lee Moongil sad. His family felt that Lee Moongil was weak and had no talent to carry on the airship. They felt this was the end of their family history. His family even said Lee Moongil was the stupidest person in their family. For Lee Moongil, who has no talent, the position is too much. Lee Moongil realized that he was a family problem. So Lee Moongil will try his hardest. If a talented person tries once, then Lee Moongil tries 10,000 times. Lee Moongil continued to train himself relentlessly. That way, Lee Moongil thought he could get recognition from his family. But his efforts were only natural. The family decided to adopt another boy as the heir. Knowing this made Lee Moongil feel very disappointed. Lee Moongil went to his father to explain all this. The father told Lee Moongil that the family needed a talent, and Lee Moongil didn't have one. According to the father, this was his destiny for living wrongly, so Lee Moongil was forced to give up his position. Lee Moongil had also rebelled, even though he had tried very hard all this time. Lee Moongil didn't want to give up like that and asked his father to give her a chance too. Finally, his father gave Lee Moongil one more chance to show his abilities. If Lee Moongil could defeat his father's adopted son, then Lee Moongil won and could become his father's successor. Lee Moongil was determined to win the fight, but Lee Moongil received a crushing defeat at that time. He was helpless. It made him very emotional, and he didn't want to admit it. That's how Lee Moongil left his home and family. 
From then on, Lee Moongill instilled in himself the determination to become stronger. The talent they often talked about would prove more than that. Until one day, Lee Moongill met Kim Chiansu. Lee Moongill faced the second wall in his life. That night, Kim Chiansu and Lee Moongill had their first encounter. Kim Chiansu seemed to easily attack Lee Moongill. Lee Moongill didn't expect there to be other monsters like this. It made Lee Moongill wonder if hard work couldn't beat talent. But Lee Moongill would not give up so easily. Lee Moongill once again tried to attack Kim Chiansu by lunging at his head. The attack made a slight scratch on Kiansu's face, but Kiansu immediately counterattacked him. It's been a long time since anyone could hurt his face. Kim Chiansu thought that Lee Moongill was a pretty cool person. While giving his smile, Kiansu said to Lee Moongill that he needed a strong friend like him. Hearing that stunned Lee Moongill. This was the first time Lee Moongill had someone who was stronger and said he was strong. From then on, Lee Moongill followed Kim Chiansu. After a long time and hard work, little by little, Lee Moongill became stronger. Back to the current battle where Lee Moongill is fighting Kim Dong Yun. Lee Moongill didn't expect it and wondered how Kim Dong Yun could stop him. Lee Moongill continued to attack his opponent, and Kim Dong Yun did the same. There was a very fierce battle between the two of them. Everyone looked dumbfounded at the two of them going crazy. Regardless of who won or lost, they were both very dangerous. Seeing the incident made Sho Hyun panic and advised Jun Woo to stop Kim Dong Yun. Sho Hyun was worried that Kim Do Yun would get hurt again. But Park Ha Jun told her not to bother. It was Kim Dong Hyun and Lee Moon Gil. No one could stop them. Seo Hyun looked upset because she couldn't do anything. The fight was still going strong. The atmosphere in the center of the fighting area was very tense. The two men fought each other relentlessly. Kim Dong Hyun felt like his whole body was in pain. But since his opponent was a strong person, Kim Dong Hyun would not hold back. That persistence and malice, this is proof that it takes hard work to be strong. They both have a strong determination to win this fight. That's because they consider themselves the best. Everyone looked very serious watching the ongoing battle. Kim Dong Yun and Lee Moon Gil were both seen giving deadly attacks. Finally, the two men fell to each other and seemed unable to continue the fight. The man glanced at the remaining fighters. Then Kian Su approached Lee Moon Gil and praised his good work. Kian Su said that Lee Moon Gil had been strong enough so far. Meanwhile, Park Han Jun approached Kim Dong Yun. Han Jun will finish this fight. Now, Park Han Jun and Kim Chian Su are facing each other and throwing glares at each other. It seems that the situation has become very tense. Kim Chian Su is facing Park Han Jun. Kim Chian Su said that he would forgive Park Han Jun. He asked Park Han Jun to kneel before him, just like Park Han Jun did two years ago. On the other hand, Chian Su's colleagues laughed at him as if giving Han Jun an insult. Seo Hyun looked furious. She looked very angry at Kim Chian Su. Seo Hyun thinks Kim Chian Su is a crazy bastard. Then Kim Chian Su said that he honestly didn't understand. He thought that Park Han Jun currently had a lot of money and also good friends. So with all this, Park Han Jun could return to a normal life. But Kim Chian Su doesn't understand why Park Han Jun is so obsessed with the Nexus. Then Park Han Jun expressed his reasons. He explained that all of this was because of the Nexus. Park Han Jun experienced humiliation, anger, hatred. Park Han Jun said that over time those emotions did not leave him, and it made him even angrier. After listening to Park Han Jun's explanation, Kim Chian Su thought that Park Han Jun would release all of his anger. Immediately, Park Han Jun attacked Kim Chian Su quickly. He looked very vengeful. Kim Chian Su looked very calm. He thought Park Han Jun was very stupid. The fight between the two of them began. Kim Chian Su's friends were looking forward to this fight. As Park Han Jun and Kim Chian Su exchanged punches, they looked very serious. Kim Chian Su was very good at dodging Park Han Jun's punches and kicks. He was very calm. They are both very fast. No one is caught off guard. They counterattacked each other, but it seemed that Kim Chian Su was faster than Park Han Jun. When Kim Chian Su felt himself quick, he seemed to have a bad feeling. Instantly, Kim Chian Su hit Park Han Jun's face so hard that Park Han Jun's nose was bleeding. Kim Chian Su's punches and kicks always hit Park Han Jun's body. Park Han Jun looked very distressed. 
In another corner, Seo Hyun was shocked and surprised to see Park Han Jun being cornered. Seo Hyun thought this was impossible, but she came to think that the rumors were true. It is known that people who have fought Kim Chian Su have said the same thing, that Kim Chian Su feels like he already knows his opponent's movements. Everyone thinks that Kim Chian Su can see the future. It's a ridiculous thing. Some people think it's just a hoax, but in reality, the rumors are true. Kim Kian Su is really great. In the fight, Park Han Jun was constantly attacked by Kim Chian Su. Park Han Jun looks helpless against Kim Chian Su. On the other hand, Jun Wu thought about the truth of the rumors. In his mind, he wondered if Kim Chian Su could really see the future. If not for that, Jun Wu thought that it was highly unlikely that Kim Chian Su could defeat Park Han Jun. Park Han Jun and Kim Chian Su stopped fighting. Kim Chian Su thinks that Park Han Jun's strength is quite great. He says that Park Han Jun's strength is enough to rival the Nexus. But Kim Chian Su emphasized that Park Han Jun would not be able to defeat him with the adaptability and strength that Park Han Jun has now. Kim Chian Su explains why he said that. He thinks Park Han Jun can't beat him because he can see all of Park Han Jun's moves. Elsewhere, a man with glasses was seen traveling in a car. Suddenly, he got a call from someone. When the man in glasses picked up the phone, the person who called him said that the current situation had become very annoying. Then the man on the phone asked the man in glasses about the current situation. He guessed that the man in glasses had a lot going on at the moment. His friend asked how about Kim Chion Su. Then the man in glasses replied that it was being processed. The man in glasses said that even if no one liked Kim Chion Su, he thought he would give Kim Kian Su one more chance to see if Kim Kian Su was worthy of working with him or not. The rain came down hard in the battle between Park Han Jun and Kim Kian Su. They were seen fighting again, punches and kicks being thrown by both of them. They both seemed unwilling to lose to each other. Park Han Jun's punches continued to be avoided by Kim Kian Su. Kim Kian Su could always read Park Han Jun's movements. Not only Park Han Jun's movements, but whoever it is, Kim Chian Su can predict his attacks. Park Han Jun was instantly knocked away, bleeding profusely from his mouth as he received a kick from Kim Chian Su that hit him hard in the stomach. Kim Chian Su moved very quickly. He was suddenly in front of Park Han Jun and ready to kick him. It seemed that Park Han Jun could not do anything. He just surrendered and received a very heavy kick from Kim Chian Su, which hit him right in the face. Park Han Jun's condition was tragic. He was bleeding profusely from his mouth. Kim Chian Su knows that Kim Park Han Jun's friends think Park Han Jun is a really special person. But according to Kim Chian Su, Park Han Jun is just an ordinary person. Park Han Jun couldn't say anything. He looked very sad. Seen on the other side, Park Han Jun's friend tried to raise Park Han Jun not to give up in this fight. The man apologized to Park Han Jun because he was too tired to help him. The red-haired man had high hopes for Park Han Jun to win the fight against Kim Chian Su. Suddenly, Park Han Jun shouted, his spirits high. All of Kim Chian Su's friends were shocked to see Park Han Jun's perseverance. Then Park Han Jun got up and ran towards Kim Chian Su to fight again. Park Han Jun emphasized to Kim Chian Su that this would not end well because he was very angry. Park Han Jun was very confident and said that if today was not Kim Chian Su's lucky day, he would defeat Kim Chiansu. Kim Chiansu was a little surprised. He thought that Park Han Jun's aura had changed. Then Park Han Jun quickly attacked Kim Chiansu. Kim Chiansu was a little surprised at Park Han Jun's speed, but he could still read his movements. Park Han Jun's movements continued to grow very fast. Kim Chiansu tried to read Kim Chiansu's movements after a left hand punch, then a left leg kick, but it was impossible for Kim Chiansu. Park Han Jun's movements became very fast. His movements changed just because he shouted once. Kim Chian Su didn't expect Park Han Jun's movements to be like that. Park Han Jun managed to hit Kim Chian Su's body. Everyone who saw was shocked and did not expect it. Park Han Jun's punch hit Kim Chian Su hard in the stomach, followed by a kick to Kim Chian Su's face. Kim Chian Su was still in disbelief. He thought that all his moves were obvious but he couldn't respond to Park Han Jun's attack. Kim Chian Su thought Park Han Jun's movements were faster than before. In his mind, Kim Chian Su thought how could Park Han Jun be that strong? On the other hand, Seo Hyun saw that Park Han Jun was making a comeback. 
But it seems that Seo Hyun also can't believe how Park Han Joon can be like this. Then Jun Woo thinks that Park Han Joon has been holding him back, defeating Kim Chian Su without killing him. Jun Woo added that right now Park Han Joon has decided not to hold back anymore and will subvert Kim Chian Su. Although Park Han Joon's father ran a gym, there was a simple reason for his father not to teach Park Han Joon martial arts. In his past, Park Han Joon's father was visited by a talent scout, but Park Han Joon's father rejected the scout. Then the scout greatly regretted the rejection of Park Han Joon's father. He said that Park Han Joon's talent was extraordinary. Then the talent seeker asked Park Han Joon's father one thing. He asked if it was true that Park Han Joon's father did not teach martial arts to his son. The scout wanted to know why Park Han Joon's father didn't teach Park Han Joon martial arts. Park Han Joon's father tried to explain why, saying that he had studied martial arts for a long time. According to Park Han Joon's father, life as a fighter is sometimes scary. Park Han Joon's father added that he is also a human being, so sometimes when fighting with others there are moments when his mentality becomes weak. So at that time, Sometimes Park Han Joon's father saw dozens of ways to kill his opponent. That is the reason Park Han Joon's father did not teach martial arts to Park Han Joon. His father considered that if Park Han Joon was born with such a strong body, when Park Han Joon made a mistake, it could make Park Han Joon regret for life. His father thinks that Park Han Joon is a very special person. After finding out everything, Seo Hyun was very surprised and did not expect that Park Han Joon had reached that level. Xiao Hyun didn't expect it, because Park Han Joon had never studied martial arts. Then Jun Wu told Xiao Hyun that Park Han Joon's ability was absurd. Although Park Han Joon did not study martial arts, he continued to become stronger through hands-on experience. Park Han Joon is a monster who was able to evolve on his own. In the fight, Kim Chian Su looked very helpless in front of Park Han Joon. Kim Chian Su couldn't believe Park Han Joon's strength. Then Park Han Joon said if Kim Chian Su could predict his opponent's attack, then he wanted to know if Kim Chian Su could predict his next attack. Whether it's in game or in combat, everything has always been easy for Kim Chian Su to do since he was a child. Kim Chian Su could see the next move of the opponent in front of him. It was probably for that reason why everyone bowed to Kim Chian Su. That doesn't seem too bad. But there was something that Kim Chian Su could not overcome. Now a huge amount of money is absolute power. Sometimes when Kim Chian Su sees the news, no matter how strange and bad the problem is, money can always solve everything. Kim Chian Su wasn't angry about it, but he was envious. Kim Chian Su really wanted to be that kind of person. In the end, Kim Chian Su was given a chance, and Kian Su built the nexus to get close to them. He felt no regret or guilt. According to him, this is a world where people die and fight for money and power. He had to get money and power at all costs because Kim Chian Su wanted to surpass them. They worked hard together little by little. Kian Su felt that he was getting closer to his dream. However, Park Han Joon came to attack and resuscitated him. You can see Kim Chian Su grinning. Kian Su wondered why he felt happy in this situation. Jun Wu, who saw his expression, also looked confused and wondered why Kian Su was smiling. There couldn't be anyone Kian Su would want to cross other than money and power. His plans were ruined, but Kian Su was laughing like that. Kian Su didn't understand what had happened to him. The atmosphere suddenly changed. Instantly, Kim Chian Su launched an attack on Han Jun. Seeing that made everyone very enthusiastic. They were happy to see Kim Chian Su, who took turns replying and attacking first. Kim Chian Su didn't need to take it anymore because he could see it clearly. Not only the way he attacked, but also the gap in Han Jun. Kim Chian Su quickly delivered a hard punch under Han Jun's chin. Kian Su now seemed to have Han Jun cornered. The Nexus members were excited to see him. They had guessed that Chian Su was better than Park Han Jun. But Lee Moongil reminded his colleagues that it was still too early to be happy. According to him, Park Han Jun and Kian Su have just started the real battle. This proves that both of them are very strong. Lee Moongil then looked at the two men fighting and said that no one is dominant now. Just one carelessness will determine the outcome of this fight. You can see Kim Chian Su and Park Han Joon still having a fierce battle in the pouring rain. Kian Su looked very excited because he could see everything. It was something he didn't expect. 
He thought this was so much fun that he wanted to risk everything when he was crazy. Chian Su wanted to beat him up and win this fight. The two of them fought each other relentlessly. It looked like a wild animal fight. But suddenly, in the middle of their fight, a man came and told them to stop the fight. Suddenly, all eyes turned to the man coming towards them. The man was wearing a black suit and a black umbrella. Jun Wu was seen staring at the man. The man with the glasses told Kim Chian Su to stop the fight and consider it over now. But Kian Su refused firmly. Kian Su assured the man that if he won, then everything would work out. But for the man, Qian Su had already failed since making the whole situation like this. Once again, the bespectacled man insists that they will end it here. Park Hanjun interrupted him and threatened him to leave. Hanjun gave him a sharp look and threatened to beat the man up. But instantly Kim Qian Su brushed off Hanjun's hand and said that Nexus would be disbanded starting today. Suddenly everyone was shocked to hear that. Especially with Jun Wu, he thought that it was just nonsense. Jun Wu didn't accept that it would end up like this. The bespectacled man thought that Jun Wu would be happy with the Nexus's defeat. He asked Jun Wu if his revenge was satisfied. But Jun Wu was silent as he stared intently at the man. The rain poured down heavily on the place. Everyone still couldn't believe that the Nexus had been disbanded. Kian Su looked downcast and asked the man if there was no second chance given to him. The man told Kian Su to think carefully about what Kian Su could do in this situation. No one knows if there might be an opportunity that he never thought would arise. Then the man left the place. Kian Su looked rooted to the spot with his head bowed. He looked like a very desperate man. Instantly, Kian Su threw himself down. Everyone looked dumbfounded at Kian Su's attitude. Then Kian Su admitted his defeat in front of them all. Jun Wu walked straight to Kian Su and told him to stand up. Jun Wu looked crazy while hitting Kian Su's body to get him to wake up. Then Jun Wu pulled Kim Kian Su's shirt collar. Jun Wu didn't accept that he had come this far, and Kian Su had given up just because of the man's words. Jun Wu forced him to fight again and told him to kneel in front of them instead of that bastard. But Kian Su just fell silent and didn't put up the slightest resistance. Park Hanjun, Kim Dong Yun, and Nam In Su did nothing and remained silent. With that, the man seemed to be laughing at their anger. Nexus and Kim Chian Su were finished, but none of them wanted to end up like that. Daytime in a tall building, Jun Wu said that short selling requires the use of an agency, and the man in sunglasses that day proved that there is something behind the Nexus. Meanwhile, the four of them seemed to be sitting limply on the sofa in Jun Wu's office. Jun Wu still didn't see it as over. He doesn't think this is a victory, and this war will start again one day. Jun Wu will try to uncover all of this. They return to their normal lives temporarily, as if they wonder why they are fighting with such a nexus. They went through the day with boredom and discomfort. It didn't feel like a month had passed. It's nighttime at a convenience store kiosk. There is a man at the cash register who is busy doing his job. In front of him is a girl flirting with him. The girl asked him if he would confess his feelings today. Confidently, the man said that he would do it today. Right at the same time, a visitor suddenly walked in. It was Seo Hyun who was the woman favored by the man at the cash register. Instantly, the man covered his face because he was embarrassed. The man wondered to himself why he always made strange expressions when he saw women. His heart always felt like it wanted to explode. But the cashier man tried to calm himself down. He had studied hard for this moment. He noticed that Seo Hyun always took the same food every day. He had seen this on YouTube and thought that she must be attracted to him. Then Seo Hyun walked to the cashier and got closer to the man. The man's whole body was sweating profusely because he was nervous about facing the woman he liked. Then he told Seo Hyun that the price was 1,501. In his mind, the man hesitated and wondered if it would be polite to approach her now. The man kept his head down. Instantly, the man at the cash register handed her a onigiri and advised her to eat it with ramen. The man gave it to her as a gift. But Seo Hyun was silent while looking at the man strangely. Seeing Seo Hyun's expression like that made the man confused and wondered if he was too aggressive. The man's face looked too serious. Even though he had practiced many times in the bathroom, 
he was still shaking like this. Seo Hyun unexpectedly smiled widely as she thanked him. Suddenly, the man became very surprised and widened his eyes. The man at the cash registers just realized that this is what love is all about. Not long after, there was a group of motorcycle gang men who came in front of the convenience store. Then a big man went inside. The fat man was looking for Seo Hyun who was inside. Then, with a slightly high tone of voice, the fat man immediately asked Seo Hyun to leave and reminded her not to wander around as she pleased. But Seo Hyun seemed reluctant to come with them. There was a dispute between Seo Hyun and the fat man in front of the cashier. Seeing this made the cashier man feel angry at the fat man for having the audacity to insult the woman he liked. The cashier suspected that there might be circumstances that he couldn't talk about, such as being threatened by gangsters or something like that. The fat man finally gave Seo Hyun time to eat her ramen for a while, while they would wait for her outside. Then the fat man casually ate the triangular onigiri that the cashier gave to Seo Hyun. The man at the counter was sure that the fat man must be a bad person. Then the fat man walked out while reminding Seo Hyun to catch up quickly. You could see the furious look on Seo Hyun's face. It crossed Seo Hyun's mind to run away from there. Then secretly, Seo Hyun asked the man at the cash register if there was a back door in this place. The man looked pityingly at Seo Hyun and felt that Seo Hyun must have had a hard time all this time. The man pointed to the back door and told her that Seo Hyun could go through that door. The man at the cash register reminded Seo Hyun to take good care of herself. Seeing the man's strange behavior made Seo Hyun confused but she ignored him and left the place quickly. After that, the cashier walked towards the exit and closed the shop temporarily. Unexpectedly, the man at the cash register approached the fat thug who was standing there. The man prepared himself to fight the fat thug who had eaten his triangular onigiri. He was going to make the fat man spit it out, a big man who was shocked and did not expect because he was followed by a shop cashier at night. Qian Zhong Yun asked the big man to make a good choice because he had stolen from his shop. Qian Zhong Yun immediately prepared to fight with the big man. Qian Zhong Yun said whether the big man wanted to regurgitate the stolen third sushi or pay for it. If not, then Qian Zhong Yun will beat him up. Threats continue to be made to the big man because Qian Zhong Yun will attack. At night, the atmosphere outside is quite quiet and there are not many people passing by doing activities like during the day. Seeing the atmosphere at a luxury restaurant, Insu was calling someone and heard shocking news. The news informed that there was a madman who had kidnapped Choi Seo Hyun. When Insu was eating meat at the restaurant and wanted to bite it until he had no appetite anymore, Insu immediately threw his food and discouraged eating meat. Insu will immediately leave for the place where the kidnapping occurred. Insu, who wants to eat this meat, becomes distracted. The glass on his table fell down because he heard shocking information like this. Whatever the person who has committed the kidnapping must be fought one by one. The atmosphere in the city is very beautiful, a metropolitan feel with towering buildings. The big man headed towards Cheon Jong Hyun. Without thinking, he immediately beat Cheon Jong Hyun using his hands. The big man punched Cheon Jong Hyun hard in the head. But Cheon Jong Yun immediately kicked the man using only his legs. The kick directly hit the big man's body. Then Cheon Jong Yun's leg hit the neck hard. The fight between the two of them was very precarious, especially when it happened at night. The big man endured the pain and struggled to avoid Cheon Jong Yun's attacks. A few minutes later, Cheon Jong Yun tonight has managed to finish off the people who tried to fight him. For Cheon Jong Yun, love is like a mental disorder, and he has proven it. Jian Zhang Yun had realized that he was committing madness for love. The big man's body lying weakly on the floor did not expect Jian Zhang Yun to do this to him. The big man questioned where monsters with human form came from so that they could create chaos like this. In his view, today's children are strange and very brutal towards their elders. Plus, the nexus had disappeared from schools all over the country, which was like a forest without a tiger. With the nexus gone, the other predators thought that they were the king of the jungle. Then, they began to show their fangs fiercely. In the process, new, powerful people and organizations emerged. Most people would call them the second disaster. This will have a bad effect on human survival. Keon Jong-hyun realized someone was coming after he finished off these plotters. 
Kim Dong-hyun attacked and forced Cheon Jong-hyun to tell where Choi Seo-hyun was. Cheon Jong-hyun immediately dodged the attack that was aimed at him. In Cheon Jong-hyun's observation, he thought that the Kim Dong-hyun who came was a big boss man. This incident made Cheon Jong-hyun remember the bad treatment when he was in his mini-market earlier. In Cheon Jong-hyun's mind that could not be lost was the image of a bad boss. They usually treated women in a disrespectful manner. Cheon Jong-hyun was very angry when he remembered bad things. Cheon Jong-hyun immediately shouted and asked Kim Dong-hyun not to disturb his goddess. For Cheon Jong-hyun, love is power. Then there was no one who could make everything disappear. The big man who was still conscious asked Kim Dong-hyun to be careful because Cheon Jong-hyun was a kickboxer. If he wasn't careful, he would get hit by a fatal blow. Without waiting any longer, the emotional Cheon Jong-hyun immediately kicked him with his feet. Cheon Jong-hyun's kick was very strong and painful. Kim Dong-hyun's eyes were very sharp towards Cheon Jong-hyun who deliberately kicked him in this way. After getting attacked, Kim Dong-hyun did not fall down at all and was still standing despite the pain. Kim Dong-hyun saw that Cheon Jong-hyun was indeed very strong, and more and more people seemed to be popping up in various places. His strength could not be doubted, and he confirmed whether Kim Dong-hyun was an adult or not. Cheon Jong-hyun did not expect that he would meet someone like this in Korea. Cheon Jong-hyun will still be careful to fight this human. If anything unwanted happens, then Cheon Jong-hyun cannot control his own strength. The attack between Kim Dong-hyun and Cheon Jong-hyun took place fiercely at night. They will not stop it before one of them loses. Kim Dong-hyun will do everything he can to brutally attack Cheon Jong-hyun. This great battle is still ongoing. Cheon Jong-hyun in fighting always relies on his feet to attack the opponent. Kim Dong-hyun continued to observe every movement made by this Cheon Jong-hyun. In addition, Kim Dong-hyun will remain careful so that this does not cause himself to be injured. When in the middle of the fight, Cheon Jong-hyun gave a punch to Kim Dong-hyun that made him feel the pain again so deeply. In addition, Cheon Jong-hyun will attack again brutally with the power he has. Kim Dong-hyun's life will be threatened if this cannot be avoided by him. Cheon Jong-hyun hopes that Kim Dong-hyun will die on the spot and not bother him anymore. Cheon Jong-hyun's attack was successful in hitting Kim Dong-hyun until his body was powerless to fight back. Repeated attacks continue to be carried out by Cheon Jong-hyun without stopping in order to feel how powerful this power is. Kim Dong-hyun felt unacceptable and was very angry with Cheon Jong-hyun for doing this attack to him. The big man who could not move and was lying on the floor asked what Kim Dong-hyun and Cheon Jong-hyun were doing until it was very tense. Cheon Jong-hyun continued to kick Kim Dong-hyun until he was satisfied. Unexpectedly came Choi Seo-hyun when they were fighting. Seeing Choi Seo-hyun who came, Kim Dong-hyun and Cheon Jong-hyun were very surprised and did not expect it because it disappeared suddenly. Then suddenly, Choi Seo-hyun was immediately present in the middle of a fierce battle at night. Cheon Jong-hyun immediately saw Choi Seo-hyun and called her, likewise with Kim Dong-hyun, who immediately called Choi Seo-hyun. Since a while ago, Kim Dong-hyun has been worried about where she went so that it makes him think. After this fight, the atmosphere has started to cool down. Cheon Jong-hyun apologized and bowed his head to them for what he had done. Cheon Jong-hyun did all this because he thought that they were kidnappers, but it turned out to be a misunderstanding. For this, Cheon Jong-hyun really felt so guilty that he never stopped bowing his head in front of Kim Dong-hyun and the big man in Choi Seo-hyun. Choi Seo-hyun was very disappointed with this incident, let alone that this could be discussed properly, even though everyone had a mouth and no one was mute at all. Choi Seo-hyun was very angry at everyone. Choi Seo-hyun felt that she was never listened to, so a fight broke out. Choi Seo-hyun kicked the big man's body because she was very emotional. The big man explained that Cheon Jong-hyun suddenly came and ambushed him until this terrible thing happened. Choi Seo-hyun didn't blame Cheon Jong-hyun. It was only natural that big men and Kim Dong-hyun were suspected because they deserved to be treated like this. Meanwhile, Cheon Jong-hyun continued to apologize repeatedly. After the incident, Choi Seo-hyun, big man and Kim Dong-hyun walked back to a place. The atmosphere at night is still quite crowded. When they were walking, Kim Dong-yun suddenly saw that Cheon Jong-yun was following behind. Mucus water came out of Cheon Jong-yun's nose, 
He was feeling the pain that had been bothering him too much. It seemed like this pain was due to the fight that took place earlier. Even Qian Zhongyun thought it was caused by Kim Dongyun. But Qian Zhongyun didn't believe it at all if it was really the result of Kim Dongyun's attack. It really hurts. Qian Zhongyun can't bear to feel this for too long. Zhang Hun vowed never to meet someone like Kim Dongyun. But Qian Zhongyun had already loved Miss Choi Seoyun, who made him fall in love. Until then, no one knew. Qian Zhongyun never thought that the girl he met at the convenience store would see him like this. On the other hand, in a room there was a meeting held at night. There was O Junwu, who entered his feet into a room to meet with his team who were still sleeping. O Junwu first looked at them all one by one. Then he said he had found the person who had been the target all this time. O Junwu's face was very happy, because it would be easier to launch the action. O Junwu asked them to wake up because there was work for today. Park Hanjun then asked O Junwu who would be the next target this time. It was a sunny afternoon in a building. Further, O Junwu would tell that the Nexus people had hackers. It's likely that people from the Nexus are behind all of this. O Junwu is absolutely sure about this. So, according to Park Hanjun's view, that Kim Chion Su is just a subordinate of Nexus. Then, if Park Hanjun's team continues to defeat them all, then Kim Chion Su will appear again. This is what makes Park Hanjun very anxious. Hearing Park Hanjun's opinion, O Jun Wu said maybe that view was correct. But the problem is money. As everyone knows, to win, they need money and power. If there are no two of them, it will be difficult to win. The people behind Kim Chian Su are the fourth generation Che Bol of Xiang San Group. Furthermore, O Jun Wu also added that the one involved was Lion. Choi Seo Hyun and Kim Dong Hyun also listened well to the conversation between O Jun Wu and Park Han Jun. In addition, the eldest son who was involved was named Li Dong Ho. Choi Seo Hyun was immediately shocked and immediately mentioned about the Xiang San Group. Choi Seo Hyun also doesn't know why the person who owns everything in this world created the Nexus. Choi Seo Hyun also doesn't know the exact details until now. Likewise, with O Jun Wu, who doesn't know anything about these details. But one thing is clear that the purpose of the Nexus is not just about money, but there are other things. Park Hanjin. Since the conversation was still bowing his head and had not yet found the right solution, if later you want to fight the Xiong San group, then it is not easy to do because it requires the right strategy and prepare carefully. At night, Ji Ho is seen with his team and discussing important matters. Ji Ho imagined that soon he and his team would be on top of the country. Literally, they would all be on top of everything like a high peak. This is just like their parents. There should be no competitors of any kind, but not in aspects such as money and power. This is very important. But Lion felt that he did not give his younger brother the chance he deserved, until something happened that made him embarrass himself. But still, he is a member of their family. Lion will apologize for everything that happened. Jiho is just silent while digesting all this well. Even though they have different mothers, they will still be heirs. That's why these siblings are so different from each other. Jiho immediately recognized that Lion clearly did not have the qualities of a leader. So, it is unlikely that Jiho will mandate him to become a leader. With an attitude like that, it will not be able to move the community well. Then the one who should do this is Jiho. Lim Sang is quite shocked and thinks that Jiho is no different from Lion, so Lim Sang will take action to handle it. She knows a sure way and can work well. Lion thinks Lim Sang's thinking is very interesting indeed. Since the beginning of this, it has been known that the Nexus will fail and prepare something. But Ji Ho doesn't believe it and says it can't be true. But Lim Sang still hopes that it can happen and is true. Lion didn't want to care about this anymore and discussed something else. Now Lion just needs to tidy up the order of them all before becoming an adult. This means that the battle to be fought is one-on-one. -on -one. Among these, they are as the next generation. So now must be able to really prepare well. He asked who would be the leader among these they. A leader must have money as well as power. He can't wait to decide right now. Ji Ho heard Li Dong Ho's words really impatient and confident in the matter of choosing a leader. Lim Sang will also agree if Li Dong Ho follows her. The next day, Yang Gubin, who had been in prison, 
was finally released. Yang Gubin has been detained in Huanhui Juvenile Prison. Some people held in prison did not expect Yang Gubin to come out like this. Then they all in prison felt unfair for the release of Yang Gubin. One of the men who shouted for Yang Gubin, he asked not to be forgotten after being released from this prison. Many people in prison said a few words for Yang Gubin who was released today. Yang Gubin was arrested for attempted murder. One of the people that Yang Gubin saw with a sharp stare, then pulled his shirt until Yang Gubin said that this person was crazy. Maybe Yang Gubin had problems with him in the past, so he was very emotional. Yang Gubin felt unwilling to meet this person again at any time. Yang Gubin also assured that he would never return to this terrible prison again. Yang Gubin called himself an ambiguous person and had a strong background. This man was immediately tortured by Yang Gubin until his head was bleeding. Two policemen just stood by and watched the action carried out by the Yang Gubin. After that, the Yang Gubin continued walking. The people in the prison cell immediately praised the Yang Gubin for being cool and would go out like that to people who were considered troubling. Finally, Yang Gubin was able to breathe fresh air again and see the outside world. The prisoners' clothes used by the Yang Gubin have been replaced using ordinary clothes. The outside air breathed by the Yang Gubin was indeed very good. It had been a long time since the Yang Gubin had breathed fresh air like this. Then a short-haired woman came and saw the Yang Gubin out for a very long time. Then she told Yang Gubin that the boss's lady, Lim Sang, was waiting for him to arrive after being released from prison. Lim Sang, who was sitting in front of the prison, immediately greeted Yang Gubin with a sweet smile. Lim Sang is the successor of the loan company. Lim Sang immediately urged Yang Gubin to go home and meet the others. This time it was Yang Gubin who would drive the car. Now Yang Gubin and Lim Sang were on their way home. Yang Gubin discusses the formation of an organization to replace the Nexus. But there is a main target that must be targeted first. Then Yang Gubin heard the news that a Park Han Jun was helpless. Lim Sang explains that schools across the country are more chaotic than ever before, to the point that many people are talking about a second disaster. The reason this happened was because of the power play between the new organizations. A new powerful whale appeared and tried to take over from the Nexus position. Fights continued to occur and even took many lives sadistically. According to Lim Sang, dealing with people like that was certainly to build an organization. So it is likely that the obstacles will take too much time. So it is important to know about the fastest way to create an organization. For a moment, Yang Yubin listened silently to Lim Sang's explanation about creating a new organization. Yang Yubin just found out that the plan was what Lim Sang and the others wanted. The mastermind behind the destruction of the protective nexus and the creator of this chaos was Park Han Jun. Yang Gubin observed that if someone stronger than Park Han Jun appeared, then the current chaos should be resolved properly. Lim Sang agreed with Yang Gubin's words. Previously, Lim Sang had also prepared a special stage for Yang Gubin. Lim Sang wanted Yang Gubin to be as wild as she wanted. Then, Yang Gubin shouldn't worry about the end result no matter what. Now Yang Gubin has started to understand what he should do after being released from prison. But before Yang Gubin started the action, there were a few things he had to deal with now. Yang Gubin and Lim Song were still traveling by car. After the afternoon, Dong Hua was arguing with someone and decided to go out. When he opened the door, he heard someone saying that he was very angry. Dong Hua immediately glanced at the person who said that, and it turned out to be Yang Gubin. This afternoon, Yang Gubin immediately asked how Dong Hua was doing because he hadn't met for a long time. Dong Hua was very surprised after he actually saw that the one who spoke earlier was Yang Gubin. Dong Hua became curious about when Yang Gubin got out of this prison. Dong Hua immediately hugged Yang Gubin because he hadn't seen him for a long time. They both decided to talk somewhere in the afternoon. There was a place where Dong Hua and Yang Gubin stood facing the setting sun. Yang Yubin didn't know why Dong Hua was still here now. He should have left home. Yang Yubin didn't want to hear that Dong Hua's reason for still having an interest in that disgusting family. Dong Hua immediately smiled at Yang Yubin's conjecture about him. According to Yang Yubin, anyone would be able to see that Dong Hua still had feelings for them. Then Yang Yubin threw his bag down. There was a lot of money in it. Dong Hua was so shocked. 
Yang Jubin tells him that there is a big thing that comes up if they both handle this. Then the guarantee of future life will be as good as anyone else. Now Yang Jubin asks Donghua to pack up just enough and go out together. Yang Jubin has chosen to be part of the Donghua family. But Donghua is still silent about Yang Jubin's behavior now. There were memories of the past. It had been many years of friendship between Yang Jubin and Donghua. At that time, they were both running. Yang Jubin told Donghua to follow him, but Donghua was very upset because Yang Jubin had stolen someone's money. Yang Jubin ran so fast that Donghua couldn't help it. When he saw Donghua lying in the middle of the road, he panicked and called him. Donghua screamed and asked Yang Jubin to quickly hide. Quickly, Yang Jubin ran and hid while carrying his bag. Silently, Yang Jubin peeked. A man came and asked where the person carrying the bag went. Donghua, who was so panicked, asked the man about the stolen bag. Donghua pretended to have dropped his bag on the way so he didn't know. Donghua really apologized for this. The face of the man whose bag was stolen was very scary indeed, but he did not accept because Donghua would never be able to deceive him by lying. Now this man wants to see how long Donghua will last when his body is trampled repeatedly. Donghua, who is still a teenager, can only endure the pain. This man continued to force Donghua to tell him where the other child had gone with his bag. Yang Yubin was still peeking behind the wall. Donghua, who saw Yang Yubin from a distance, asked him not to worry because the man's kick was very soft. As blood poured out of Donghua's body, Yang Yubin became even more anxious. At noon, after the terrible incident, Yang Yubin apologized to Donghua for not helping him. So Yang Yubin will take responsibility. Starting today, she has no family other than Donghua. Yang Yubin will consider Donghua as his only family. Then Yang Yubin will live to take care of Donghua, who is currently in pain. Donghua immediately put his hand towards Yang Yubin like someone who would punch. According to Donghua, this was not Yang Yubin's fault at all. Donghua stated that all of this was done together, so this is his responsibility too. Until whenever Donghua will be happy to hear this from the mouth of Yang Yubin, who will consider himself as family. The incident in the past is what Yang Yubin has not forgotten until now that Donghua is part of his family. Then, Oh Jun Wu was seen busy in his office while checking the papers on the table. Oh Jun Wu says that Lion and Li Dong Ho seem to have more than just this. Lion and Li Dong Ho are not cockroach animals laying eggs in such a lot. Park Han Jun heard that statement from Oh Jun Wu's mouth. Park Han Jun's face in Oh Jun Wu's eyes was very serious, like someone who had something wrong. Park Han Jun spoke up and talked about the fight last month. If Park Han Jun continued to fight with Kim Jian Su that day, Park Han Jun wanted to know if Oh Jun Wu thought he would win. According to Oh Jun Wu, it was obvious that Park Han Jun would always win in any fight. Oh Jun Wu was confused as to why Park Han Jun was asking such a question. Park Han Jun didn't think he would lose, but the fight made him insecure about winning. If Kim Jian Su came with more preparation, then Park Han Jun would say something weak like that with his body. Oh Jun Wu felt it was better to be safe and needed a more certain way. At night, Kim Chian Su was with Lion by the pool. This time, when they were together, Kim Chian Su would ask Lion something. The question is hypothetical. If Kim Chian Su didn't stop Lion at that time, would he be able to beat someone like Park Han Jin? Lion immediately shut up because he got that kind of question from someone like Kim Chian Su. According to Lion, it was Kim Chian Su's area of expertise to be able to defeat him. So, Lion didn't really know, but this time for the next fight, Lion wanted Kim Chian Su to win against Park Han Jun. In the future, there would be no chance if Kim Chian Su lost against Park Han Jun. Lion took off his glasses to really make sure that Kim Chian Su should be able to do his best. Now, Kim Chian Su has understood it after getting support and motivation from Lion. At night, in an alley, Dong Hua was chasing two people who ran very fast. They were both very confused about what was going on, so that Dong Hua could be in this place. Besides Dong Hua, they both saw a Yang Yubin. From an unexpected direction, the Yang Yubin came and hit them both hard. One of his colleagues was frightened to see the Yang Yubin already in front, a meeting that was never expected. Dong Hua and Yang Yubin surrounded from the front and back, and the two of them could not run anywhere. 
Yang Gubin was angry because this man had really underestimated him. Yang Gubin had heard talk that he would rot in prison for life. In addition, this man said that if he fought, then Yang Gubin would lose. On this night's occasion, Yang Gubin asked if those words had made this person feel happy. Yang Gubin was not happy about his name being sold around. This person looked helpless and panicked when Yang Gubin found out what he said. He immediately kowtowed in front of Yang Gubin for all that had happened to make him hurt. With guilt, he apologized to Yang Gubin for thinking himself crazy. He asked Yang Gubin if he could give this apology just once. Yang Gubin is still silent and watching the man who has belittled him. For Yang Gubin, there is no apology at all, so this man must receive punishment for what he did. Yang Gubin emphasized that he was not a good person who could forgive just like that. Then Yang Gubin asked this person to show if he really sincerely apologized. In addition, Yang Gubin will not make this person continue to hide for the rest of his life. Hearing that, this person immediately felt furious and very panicked. His eyes looked towards the lying brick and slowly picked it up. With a sense of high emotion, he immediately took the bat and was about to hit it towards the Yang Gubin while expressing his gratitude. But the Yang Gubin did not stand still and attacked in a sadistic manner. This person's body was bleeding from the Yang Gubin's attack after giving punishment to the person who underestimated him. Yang Gubin and Dong Hua continued walking towards a place at night. Then Lim Sang came suddenly. She said she was sure she had told Yang Gubin not to make trouble before the work started. But tonight, Yang Gubin had already started to dare to magic someone. Surely it showed that the Yang Gubin had not learned good manners. Maybe it's just that Yang Gubin has a hard time understanding other people's words, so he can't accept them. Yang Gubin was still silent when he heard those words from Lim Sang. In Yang Gubin's opinion, this was not a difficult situation to deal with. So, Yang Gubin had his own plan to tidy up. There was something important that Yang Gubin wanted to ask about money. Yang Gubin had spent a lot of money just to take care of the children. So, this time, he needed some money. Yang Gubin's life has been so wasteful that it is difficult to manage finances. Yang Gubin's words are harsh when it comes to money. Lim Sang has brought two backpacks in front of Yang Gubin. Tonight, Lim Sang can give Yang Gubin as much money as he wants. But there are conditions that must be met first. From now on, Yang Gubin must do the work ordered by Lim Sang. If once again the Yang Gubin moved without the Lim Sang's permission, then this would be a fatal act. Then Yang Gubin would realize that there was something worse than his rough life. Lim Sang hopes Yang Gubin understands what he's talking about. One of the backpack threads is immediately carried by Yang Gubin and explains that there is a possibility of yes or no when doing all this. But it seems that the trust between Yang Gubin and Lim Sang will be even stronger. In the morning of the next day, O oh Jun Wu will tell something about the strange movements that were found to be two. One is in Myeongdong. This place used to be a place of conflict between fierce forces, but suddenly became calm. O oh Jun Wu doesn't know why that happened. Then there was around Gang Seo. Schools that were previously not familiar began to form alliances with each other. If the situation is like this, then something happens when both parties feel the emergence of a dominant or superior force. Choi Seo Hyun felt that one of them came from an orphanage while the other was a transfer student. Choi Seo Hyun knew this because she read on a paper that informed her about it. The nature of the they will also lead to negative prejudice. In the information that she read, Choi Seo Hyun was very surprised to see a man cashier that she met. After that, Choi Seo Hyun decided to look for Cheon Jong Hyun, who worked as a cashier in Gang Seo. Choi Seo Hyun's face was very furious to see the cashier for showing bad things when they first met. In the afternoon, showed Cheon Jong Hyun, who returned to work as usual as a cashier. After the last fighting incident, he kept thinking about Choi Seo Hyun. Until now, she has been plunged into sadness after the fight with Kim Dong-hyun that night. Kim Dong-hyun's face is still clearly remembered by Cheon Jong-hyun and will never be forgotten. Choi Seo-hyun also never came to this convenience store again to shop for food or drinks, even though Kion Jong-hyun was looking forward to it. People like Cheon Jong-hyun who use violence are definitely not liked. 
Zhou Yun realized that he had indeed committed a brutal act. Qian Zhongyun clasped one of his hands and felt that his heart was fragile. From the entrance of the convenience store, the bell rang, and there must be customers coming. Qian Zhongyun, who was still sad, immediately said welcome. Qian Zhongyun's eyes immediately looked towards the door, and it turned out that the one who came was Choi Seohyun, the woman of his heart. Choi Seohyun entered and immediately became rude to Qian Zhongyun. Choi Seohyun also knew the identity of Qian Zhongyun, who was a 19-year-old man. After the nexus disappeared, Qian Zhongyun immediately moved schools from Thailand to Korea. Only a few days after changing schools, Qian Zhongyun had managed to dominate the school in Gangseo. Choi Seohyun immediately asked who Qian Zhongyun could actually do all that. Choi Seohyun's eyes were very sharp towards the Qian Zhongyun. Qian Zhongyun explained that he didn't know anything about school enrollment. When Qian Zhongyun arrived in Korea, he just kept quiet. But the people around him did not want to be silent. More importantly, if Choi Seohyun thinks like that, then Qian Zhongyun feels hurt. Choi Seohyun was getting annoyed and asked Qian Zhongyun not to joke because this was a serious matter. Choi Seohyun conveyed the purpose of coming here because she had information about Qian Zhongyun. Then a Gangseo alliance man came and got angry because Qian Zhongyun had dared to touch his own friend. The Gangseo alliance came in quite a large number. Quickly, Choi Seohyun immediately took cover behind Cheon Zhonghyun's body. Casually, Cheon Zhonghyun felt that this time there was a misunderstanding again. So now Cheon Zhonghyun had to brave himself to fight the Gangseo Alliance. Cheon Zhonghyun will slowly walk out of the mini market because he sees a situation that does not allow him to tell a long story. Cheon Zhonghyun said that Choi Seohyun could eat the noodle ramen that she always eats when here. Choi Seohyun became confused about what Qian Zhongyun would do under these circumstances. Choi Seohyun felt suspicious of Qian Zhongyun and thought badly of him. Qian Zhongyun asked Choi Seohyun as his idol not to feel anxious about the Gangseo Alliance's arrival. Qian Zhongyun will return soon and finish the fight against the Gangseo Alliance. The atmosphere has entered the night. Qian Zhongyun fought with a Gangseo Alliance who came to his mini market. The attack continues. Qian Zhongyun punches only using his legs. Meanwhile, the Gangseo side will not give up and continue to attack brutally. A powerful punch also hit Qian Zhongyun's body. This fierce fight was still going on. When going to attack, suddenly Qian Zhongyun felt very heavy. But Qian Zhongyun still continued to try to attack ferociously. After that, Qian Zhongyun shut up and said that this fight lasted for three minutes. With a creepy face, Qian Zhongyun asked if the ramen noodles were cooked while glancing at the Gangseo Alliance. Members of the Gangseo Alliance were already unconscious and lying in front of the mini market yard. Choi Seohyun came and saw all this with her own eyes that the Alliance members were losing. Choi Seohyun still wants to ask who Qian Zhongyun really is because he can do all these great attacks to the opponents who bother him. Qian Zhongyun will invite Choi Seohyun to sit down and talk about this further. According to Qian Zhonghyun, there is something that seems similar if you want to explain it. Qian Zhonghyun finally wanted to explain the background about himself to Choi Seohyun. First of all, Qian Zhonghyun is a good student. Suddenly, Qian Zhonghyun immediately shouted when he said it, Maybe there are things that make him have regrets in this life. Choi Seohyun is still watching Qian Zhonghyun who is talking. Originally, Qian Zhonghyun lived in Thailand because his father's job was there then recently moved to a Korean school. But the school gave a bad impression because it bullied Qian Zhongyun. The children in his class were very sadistic in treating others. Qian Zhongyun felt more and more uncomfortable because of the bullying he experienced. Qian Zhongyun doesn't want to fight at school and wants to keep his good name. Qian Zhongyun's friends continue to make him feel furious to do inappropriate things. The bullies in class every day always bothered Qian Zhongyun. Therefore, it makes Qian Zhongyun's patience run thin. If his friends are silenced, they will continue to bully him. Qian Zhongyun did not want this to happen and took action to fight back. They often poured drinks over Qian Zhongyun's head and many other severe things. Qian Zhongyun ventured to fight back to beat all his friends. The first attack was carried out by Qian Zhongyun using a fierce punch. Qian Zhongyun feels no pity at all and will continue to attack until he is satisfied. Friends who were fought by Qian Zhonghyun were seriously injured as a result of getting the deadly blow. 
When Qian Zhongyun was in the country of Thailand, he had learned Thai loading from one of his father's company employees. So, in terms of fighting, Qian Zhongyun is pretty good at it. That's why Qian Zhongyun can give attacks to friends who have bullied him. This Muay Thai movement is well utilized by Qian Zhongyun so that he can be protected. Then when Qian Zhongyun has started to fight one by one, the person who is bullying. So that's why Qian Zhongyun started getting into a lot of trouble. So the origin of him until now, many opponents started from school. Qian Zhongyun never thought that there would be many enemies and had to be ready to fight those who came alone. Thinking about it, Qian Zhongyun immediately held his head and felt very stressed. Choi Xiaohyun was surprised to see Qian Zhongyun behave like that. Fights continue to happen to Qian Zhongyun. At that time, there was an incident where he was chased by several people to fight him. Qian Zhongyun had been involved in a brawl that he considered very strange. Students from neighboring schools heard the news about the strength possessed by Qian Zhongyun when fighting. Then students from other schools came to challenge him. Qian Zhongyun also did not know why the more he fought, the less problems could be solved. Qian Zhongyun has already fallen into this kind of school life. His days are always filled with problems and fights. They have given Qian Zhongyun strange titles such as words not worth mentioning. An example is like a mad dog from hell. Qian Zhongyun, who heard it, was very upset. Even if the incident was reminded again, Qian Zhongyun felt stressed. Qian Zhongyun became emotional himself telling Choi Xiaohyun about his life background. After school around, all the delinquents with diarrhea started attacking Qian Zhongyun. They came and challenged Qian Zhongyun like a person who would get a trophy if he defeated them. Until now, there were several opponents who came to Qian Zhongyun to defeat him. Choi Xiaohyun could see for herself that the Gang Seo Alliance came to him to fight. Qian Zhongyun doesn't know how to deal with all of this so that it can subside. Choi Xiaohyun could only remain silent after listening to the story that happened to Qian Zhongyun. After that, Choi Xiaohyun spoke and asked Qian Zhongyun not to immediately think that she would believe his story. Qian Zhongyun himself didn't know why the situation had become like this. Even from the look on Choi Xiaohyun's face, he didn't like this. Suddenly, Qian Zhongyun saw the Gang Seo Alliance members who came and bowed their heads to him. Seeing all this, Qian Zhongyun felt very surprised and didn't expect it to happen. Qian Zhongyun doesn't feel proud of all this at all. He wants Choi Xiaohyun to see for herself that this is indeed strange. Whatever came to Qian Zhongyun was indeed very confusing. First, everything was about boxing. Then now, Qian Zhongyun didn't know what would happen to him again. Qian Zhongyun wanted to get better, but there were always things that made him feel very surprised. One of the Alliance members explained the purpose of their arrival here. They came because they wanted to be together with strong people, including male instructors. So that's what makes them intend to come and then simultaneously bow their heads to Qian Zhongyun. Furthermore, the man who spoke liked Qian Zhongyun, who had great strength. Even more surprising, they asked Qian Zhongyun to become the chairman of the Gangseo District Alliance. Qian Zhongyun never thought that he would become the alliance chairman of the Gangseo district. After hearing that with both ears, Qian Zhongyun looked at one of the men who offered himself to be the chairman. Qian Zhongyun's gaze indicated whether this offer was really meant for him or not. With that convincing look, 19-year-old Qian Zhongyun felt inappropriate. This young age doesn't have much experience to be a chairman. One of the men said that being chairman doesn't matter what age. Even though Qian Zhongyun's age is still 19, knows it won't be a problem for the Gangseo Alliance. They really asked for help this time so that Qian Zhongyun could give permission to follow him. They, as the Gangseo District Alliance, really needs a great person like Qian Zhongyun. When he heard that request, Qian Zhongyun immediately got up from his seat. They continued to say that Qian Zhongyun deserved to be the chairman because he was the strongest among the others. But Qian Zhongyun denied that. He was not strong at all and did not want to be exalted. Qian Zhongyun was getting furious and asked them all not to give him strange names. Qian Zhongyun had been traumatized enough by this and did not want it to happen again. Suddenly, Choi Xiaohyun laughed when she heard Qian Zhongyun speak. Qian Zhongyun immediately fell silent and didn't know what Choi Xiaohyun found funny. At first, Choi Xiaohyun thought that her colleagues were the stupidest in the world. 
but it seemed that there were even more stupid. Choi Seo-hyun asked Cheon Jong-hyun to be able to forget about it because it was not that important. Choi Seo-hyun just felt that this kind of incident was very funny. The misunderstanding between Choi Seo-hyun and Cheon Jong-hyun was over because it had been answered. But there was something that Cheon Jong-hyun should know. He didn't look like an ordinary punk and had something different from others. Choi Seo-hyun herself saw that Cheon Jong-hyun really knew how to fight well. Kion Jong-hyun could only silently listen to Choi Seo-hyun talking. He didn't expect that Choi Seo-hyun would give such a response. Choi Seo-hyun had already decided to invite Cheon Jong-hyun to join her team. Choi Seo-hyun will not hesitate in choosing Cheon Jong-hyun because she has seen for herself the way he fights. Choi Seo-hyun happily gave her cell phone to ask Cheon Jong-hyun to enter his cell phone number. The hourly salary that Cheon Jong-hyun would get would be quite high so it wouldn't be too bad for Qian Zhongyun to accept this cooperation offer. Her team and Qian Zhongyun would benefit from each other. Qian Zhongyun still did not expect and was surprised. The thing that made Cheon Zhongyun surprised was that Choi Seohyun easily wanted to ask for his cell phone number. Moreover, Choi Seohyun is the woman who first made Qian Zhongyun fall in love. Qian Zhongyun's mind immediately fantasized something beautiful. Even Qian Zhongyun's heart is currently flowering. Qian Zhongyun bowed his head and then thanked her for giving him an opportunity like this. Qian Zhongyun felt very grateful to have been given an offer to exchange cell phone numbers. Qian Zhongyun promised that he would be loyal for the rest of his life to always love women like Choi Xiaohyun. This action taken by Qian Zhongyun was witnessed by members of the Gang Seo Alliance. Qian Zhongyun no longer felt ashamed of anything because Choi Seohyun was loved with all his heart. All members of the Gang Seo Alliance were very surprised to see the action. Qian Zhongyun repeatedly said that he would be loyal to Choi Seohyun until whenever. Meanwhile, Choi Seohyun could only smile at Qian Zhongyun's behavior. At night today, Choi Seohyun has successfully acquired the Gang Seo District Alliance, thanks to Qian Zhongyun. Then there was Park Hanjun's father who was on the side of the road, then there was a little boy who said that today was a very good job. This little boy next time will not be picky in terms of food, and then will become as strong as Park Hanjin's father. But for Park Hanjin's father, listening to mom's words is also very important to become a stronger person. The little boy seemed to be in a hurry and got into the car. As the car started to move, the little boy also said that Park Hanjin's father should also listen to his mother well at all times. They both waved goodbye to each other. Park Hanjun's father could only laugh because the little boy was very adorable to him. Then he looked back. It turned out that there was Park Hanjun who came. Park Hanjun's arrival really shocked his father. His father made sure that the one who came was really Park Hanjun and not someone else. Park Hanjun just kept quiet without saying anything to his father. When he saw Park Hanjun not responding to anything, his father immediately worried and asked if this time there was something wrong. Suddenly, Park Han Jun called his father and said that he wanted to be stronger than before. Park Han Jun's eyes glanced at his father and assured that it was very desirable. Park Han Jun's father looked at his son before he had guessed that this day would definitely come. Then Park Han Jun expressed his intention to become a strong man.